Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Friday night, which you know what that means, another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I'm here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you are gracing us with your presence, welcome, happy to have you here. The way this works is super simple. On your screen, you will see a chat box. On that chat box, you will see an area where you can enter your question, concern, comment of the day. I work through them in the order they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I do not, but either way, we have an awesome time talking about lawn care. As always, guys, we are live on YouTube, of course, is our primary platform, Facebook, Instagram, the Twitter. So you guys can consume the content any way you like. Whichever way is best for you, you can absolutely uh, you can absolutely consume it. So it should be a fun night tonight, guys. So the Mother Nature's been playing tricks on us, right? It was getting warm, then it got cool again, and hopefully we should get some warm weather here, uh, you know, after this cold snap goes away. Um, some cool announcements, a cool announcement from Real Rollers. So you guys can get a sneak peek. So here, you're gonna hear about it first here tonight. Again, here's the thing, I don't wanna like oversell it too much. It's a cool new tool. It's one of those things that when you see it, you're gonna be, you know, why didn't I think about that? It's a really good, it's a really good idea that they came up with. I got to check it out. And, uh, you know, to quote Lee, I get to be the TMZ of uh, Real Rollers in the sense that, you know, we get to show you guys some cool stuff that you're not gonna get to see um, anywhere else before. So that and other things that they're gonna be launching this year. So it's a very, very, very cool. Let's see who we have in the live stream this evening. We got Jermaine Battles. Uh, we got Jason Harris. So let's start with Jermaine. Jermaine has a good question. It's an excellent one to start out the season with. He says, does the lawn have to be dry before I apply a granular fertilizer? So it typically is for me, Jermaine. So when whenever I am applying um, uh, a granular fertilizer, I tend to do it in the morning. So it's not completely dry. It's not, you know, like, uh, like, like midday sun dry. But I will, um, I, I'll typically apply it in the morning. I'll mow like the day before, and then I'll apply it the, the following morning. Or sometimes, depending on my schedule, I'll mow, and then an hour later, I'll, I'll, um, I'll apply my, my fertilizer. 
So, I mean, it's not definitely wet after as if it would be from rainfall, but to say that it's completely dry, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. So I, I'm trying to think, I don't ever apply fertilizer. I don't think I've ever applied fertilizer right after rain. So if the lawn is like soaked, I wouldn't, I've never done that before. Uh, but but as far as it being like slightly damp from dew in the morning, like you know, I'll go out and I'll I'll, um, I'll apply my fertilizer and then I'll water it in after the fact. So so yeah, so hopefully that that helps. I mean, it doesn't have to be completely dry, but I would not like water your lawn, then apply fertilizer and just let it sit on the leaf. You'd want really want to water it in because the chances that if you if you do that, if you apply granular fertilizer to a wet lawn. Uh, what can happen is you can you can get a bit of burn. You can burn you can burn the leaves if you um if you if you do that. So ideally, you'd want to apply it and then water it in. So say you're you're it rained and then you're going to go apply fertilizer to your lawn that's completely wet. I guess as long as you were to run irrigation right afterwards, you'd be fine. But again, in my case, it's it's usually in the morning uh, when it's got there's some dew on the lawn and I'll run irrigation afterwards or after I'm done mowing and then I'll run an irrigation cycle. So hope that helps. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good one. I, I don't typically run, and again, I don't typically do it right after um, a, a heavy rain shower. So good one. It's a good one to start the season off uh, tonight. So we got a question also, guys, tonight here in from Instagram. And if you guys are enjoying the show, I know we're only a few minutes in, but I think Real Rollers is going to be hanging out. We're going to have some other folks in here tonight. Yeah, to, to, to Lee's point, happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm wearing my green, my green stripe action shirt. So I'm not Irish, but, you know, hey, you guys, you guys still got to represent. Okay, so we got a question here on the Instagram from Deep Lutes Lawn Care. He says, your opinion of certainty herbicides. When you talk about her certainty herbicide, I think you're referring to this. I love it. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of certainty. I, you know, as far as, you know, a, a great post-emergent option for taking care of sedges, kalinga, and poa in warm season turf, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this product. I mean, I, I like it so much that I've done a video about mixing certainty along with, I think it's sidekick celsius mixing these two together it makes a great combination for warm season turf that knocks out uh, a lot of the weeds that you're going to come across in your lawn so i'm a huge fan of certainty it's um you know it kills a lot of hard to kill weeds and much like celsius uh, you can put you can spray it over a broad temperature range without adverse effects to your your grass so i mean it's, it's the, the one negative i'd say but it but um put a negative with it is this time of year when temperatures are cooler and this is true for both these products it te they tend to be a little bit slower to work but the upside of that is that in the summer, if you've got, when you've got um, sedges in your lawn, you can spray this with, with little chance of damaging your lawn, discoloring it, uh, if you're applying it, obviously, at the correct rates. Um, so for that reason, huge fan of this. Really, really love certainty. I like this more than I do uh, sedge hammer. Sedge hammer I would use on in cool season turf, because you can't use this in cool season turf. But for warm season turf, this is, um, this is the bee's knees, in my opinion. I like this product. We put it together in a kit on the golf course lawn store. That's how much we, we like and uh, and believe in it. So great question. Great question. So you know, that's a nice one. Good one to start out with. And then you said you bought the, the 12 0 24 Country Club from me. Thank you. I really, really do appreciate that. So guys, that's one of the th topics we're going to talk about tonight. Um, you know, I got an email from a viewer saying, hey, can you take a few minutes to talk about fertilizer? We're getting into the season here soon. Where you're going to begin fertilizing your lawn. What fertilizer should you choose? How do you decide on the right fertilizer? What are some some decisions that go into into that process? So we can spend some time here talking about that a little bit. I got a soil test result that a viewer sent in that I formatted up really nicely, so you guys can take a look at it, and we can um, you know so we can we can dig into that. So as far as the the age old question, the you know the question that everyone has as far as which fertilizer should I apply on my lawn? What's the right one for my lawn? The best way, the best way to know which fertilizer is the correct one or the best fit for your lawn, for your soil type, is by doing a soil test, by getting an analysis by, by pulling cores, right? The reason why is, the way I always put it to you is this way, right? If you were to go to, say you weren't feeling well, right? You were to go to the doctor's office and you went to the doctor's office and you sat down in the lobby, you filled out the paperwork, you know, you gave me your insurance card and everything and you're sitting in the lobby waiting to be seen. And before you got, even got a chance to go in and see the doctor or see the nurse or see anyone, you know, uh, a nurse walks out with a, with a prescription and says, uh, yeah, here, take this, go to your local, your CVS, Walgreens pharmacy, fill this, follow the instructions, and, uh, you know, you and call us back if you have any issues. You take the prescription, you look at them like they're crazy. You'd be like, you guys don't even know what's wrong with me. I told you I wasn't feeling well, but I didn't, you know, what, what's this? You haven't, you haven't done blood work, you haven't taken a pulse, you haven't done anything. And a lot of people choose their fertilizer that way. Literally, they go out and they'll just say, you know, they'll go to the big box stores or even online and they'll just say, eh, I like the color of that bag, we'll go with that one. And really, the best way to decide is by taking a soil sample. It's kind of like with, with you, if you were to go to the doctor, 
the best way for the doctor to tell you what's wrong with you or to diagnose um, an issue you might be having is by doing blood work. By doing blood work, we're doing other studies. Based on what comes back, a treatment plan comes out of that. Same thing, that's what this is. This is the blood work for your lawn, blood work for your soil. So soil test kits, they're not expensive uh, and it's really one of the best investments you can make in, in choosing the right product and putting together the right program for your lawn. So once you have your soil test your, um, results, you, you take your samples, you send them out, they come back, what can you expect? So it just happens to be that a, a viewer, uh, Oliver, sent me his soil test samples from, uh, like show you guys what you can expect to get from, from my soil. Um, this, it was earlier today. Earlier today he sent that to me and I said, yeah, I'll, I'll review it on the show tonight. I, gave, I already told him what I was gonna, what I was gonna recommend, but I'm gonna show you guys what you can expect to see. So when you send out your soil samples, since I've convinced you guys on all the merits of soil testing, you will get something, and sorry for you guys, Instagram, you're not here. If you guys wanna watch, jump over to YouTube or Facebook or Twitter, and you guys will be able to see what I'm about to show on the screen. So after you send out your cores, you'll get a sample, you get something that looks kind of like this. Now this is, um, I've formatted this so it fits in all nicely on the screen. And what you're gonna have is a nice beautiful graph on the left-hand side that shows your nutrient levels, your, your macros, your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and then on, and then your, your micros on the uh, on the left side, on the right side of the graph, and then your, your pH, which is really, really one of the most important aspects of, of figuring out, um, or, or, or as, as far as figuring out um, a, th a treatment plan for your lawn. Because the thing to, the thing to keep in mind is pH, I'm off on the screen now, is that pH affects your nutrient uptake. So as far as your, your um, you know, if you're, if you're applying, uh, like say a micronutrient or, or like an, an iron product or whatever, right? If your pH is outside of the Goldilocks zone, so he's just in, he's, he's just over, he's, you know, I really wouldn't do a whole lot for this, for this particular soil. But if you're much higher than that, you're like seven, five, seven, six, you know, you're getting to more alkaline, a lot of the, um, the micronutrients become unavailable. So you're applying a fertilizer with nitrogen and all this, all these great um, nutrients in it, and you're not really going to be able to take advantage of it because they're, they're not going to be available for your, to, to your to the to the plant. So based on this, you can look at his results here. So his pH is a little bit high, just outside the Goldilocks zone. Nitrogen is low. Phosphorus looks good, and then his potassium uh, is also low, as is his sulfur and his micros. So. As far as an option for this, you got a couple of different things you could do. You could use Humic Max on this, like a 1608 product that has, um, you know, 16% nitrogen, 8% uh, potassium. You could do a, um, if you were just starting out the season, you could also go with, uh, let me come back over here. You could also go with a, um, with a, let me stop sharing here, with like a, a higher, a higher potassium um, um, fertilizer um, option. So something like, I'll show you here. Something like this, so something like uh, the stress. I'm a big fan of starting out with uh, with a higher potash uh, uh, fertilizer to begin the season. This is what I'm going to be using on my lawn. Uh, more than likely, it's looking like it's going to be the end of this month, perhaps the first week of April, based on the way um, it's greening up with the soil temps. But this is a great option because, based on his soil test results, which we looked here really quick, remember he was lacking um, he was lacking nitrogen and he was lacking potassium, right? Those are the big things. His phosphorus is a little bit low, but I mean, or is on the lower end of optimal, but we'll, we'll let that, let that slide, right? So he needs N, he needs K, and he needs some micros. So based on that, if we look at the makeup of this, of this, uh, this product, you can see you have nitrogen. Well, let me just go with, with the label. You got nitrogen, 12% nitrogen, 24% potassium. And then as far as your micronutrients, you've got a little bit of iron, a little manganese, a little bit of sulfur, all of all things that his um you know as far as sulfur is it's another um, nutrient that his soil needs based on the test results. You can see here his sulfur is also low, so we can we can this fertilizer will address that. And then now as far as the micros, so like uh, the the zinc, the manganese, and the copper, right? With if we if we look at those. That is one thing that that this is not going to fit. So for the heavy lifting, the um, you know the the granular will will work, but then for his micros, using something like Nutrizolve, which has all of his micronutrients, has the the copper, the, the molybdenum, the zinc, everything that he needs. Uh, this combined with that fertilizer makes for a, a good combination for his lawn. You know what I mean? So this I would do something. I would use Nutrizolve either with um, the the, the stress, the 12024, or with Humic Max, the 1608. Either one of these two options are what I would go with. The, the, the complete, you could do that if you wanted. I mean, it, your, your phosphorus levels are okay. They're on the lower end of okay, but really I would, I would opt for either one of these any, either one of these fertilizer options. So that's an example of what you, you'd be able to do once you got, you get your soil test done, you get your results, 
to be able to go out and take that, you know, that, that chart and be able to say, based on what I've got here, now I can choose the correct fertilizer, the best fit for my particular soil. So Oliver, thank you for sending that in. Um, I, I guess told you I would show it on the show and I did. So, um, so hopefully that helps. I and mean, it's kind of a repeat, a repeat of what you've already seen. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the folks on the show have not seen it as yet. And what you guys will notice is in, in the chat, if you're on YouTube anyway, um, there's a pinned comment up there. It says golfforcelon.store forward slash the good stuff. That will take you to the Lebanon Turf Fertilizer Collection that we carry. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check it out. All right. Next up is Mr. Jason Harrison. He says, got the Sun Joe last week. Going to do some light raking this weekend if the weather allows. I like it. I like it, Jason. That's a good plan. That's a good plan. I mean, you know, with um, with this this cool snap we had, we had a little bit of a setback as far as the green up, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, if you want to do some light turf raking, I mean, the key word that I like there is light. So when you're setting up the Sun Joe, I, I've not used one of those myself. Make sure you're not setting it up so aggressively that the that the fingers, the tines are getting down. Um, I hope it's a spring springloaded. The little spring loaded fingers are not getting down into the soil. You want it. You want it to be just above the surface. You want it to be very very gentle so you're not doing um, you know unnecessary damage, adding unnecessary stress to the uh, to to the turf. So I, I like your plan. By all means, uh, go forward and check it out. And if you uh, you know need anything else, let me know. Let me know how it works out. Sounds like something to do this weekend, now, now that all this rain is finally coming to an end, right? Next up is John Rob Will says, what's up everyone? What's going on, John Rob and Will? Hopefully you are doing, you're doing well. You're doing well. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. And then we got Real Rollers in the house and I says, evening, rainy and cold. Man, you're not kidding. So this is right before the show started. I went out and shot a little video here to show you guys. This is what the back lawn looks like right now. You can still see some green out there, but I took a little bit of a hit due to all the cold weather. And as you can see, it's still raining. I mean, it's, it's slowing down a little bit, but it rained a whole bunch uh, today. Pretty much all day it's been raining. So that will stop this evening. And then tomorrow we'll be able to get out and play in the lawn a little bit. Play in the lawn a little bit. It's the middle of the month, so I'm not going to get to do my granular just yet. But what I will get to do is do my, uh, my carbon kit application. So I'll do uh, the Release Zero Carbon Kit, maybe a little Nutrizolve in there as well, and I'll spray uh, the, the lawn with that. But I'm not going to do granular just yet because the lawn isn't quite greened up enough uh, for, for that. So it's going to be the end of this month before I'm, I'm able to get out there and put my, my 12 0 24 down. Such is life, right? Such is life. I got a, a picture here from a viewer. David uh, sent in a, a picture saying he's getting all stocked up for the season. So I told him I would show it on the show, and uh, this is, you know, he can't put it down yet, but this is what he's going to be working with this season. So you see my man has got his country club, he's got his Essential G, pretty much he went to the golf course lawn store and bought everything. He's got his liquid fertilizers, I see, looks like some Turfplex in there, the, the carbon kit is uh, Prodiamine, um, and more Essential G, gas for his uh, for his equipment, biospectrum, he's got, he got it all, he got it all, man. He's all, he's all set for the season, which is smart, you know what I mean, because... You know, as you guys saw last week, we got the fer some of the liquid fertilizers back in stock, like Turfplex, Nutrizolve, and those. And Turfplex is already sold out. Nutrizolve only has a little bit left, and there's another shipment coming in, but it's not going to be here until sometime next week. So, David is smart, and that he's ahead of the game. He got all his uh, his supplies, so he's good to go. He's ahead of the curve. So, if there's any issues with uh, with inventory, he can you know he's not gonna he's not gonna be behind on his lawn care application. So good, good job, David. Very smart. Way to go, way to go. All right, next up we got Jermaine uh, Patrick in the house. He says, happy Friday. Question, how do you get started in lawn care? Did you work for a golf course at one time? I did not. So I am largely self-taught and I have uh, several friends in industry that took me under their wing, showed me a lot of stuff, spoke to me a lot of stuff, answered a lot of my questions over many years, over nine years, eight or nine years at this point. And uh, yeah, so I learned a lot standing on the shoulders of giants and just um, have a lot of interest in lawn care, as you guys can tell. And uh, yeah, and that uh, that has brought me to where I am today. So if you look at a lot of my content from years and years ago, uh, you can see how the both my knowledge and also the channels has progressed along along the way. But yeah, largely self-taught and with uh, with help from people that uh, that said, you know what, this one has potential. They took some time and and talked to me a lot about about uh, the industry, about um, you know, applications about products, about um, different different treatment plans and that type of thing. And I get to share a lot of that with you guys, which is which is a great time. All right, next up is uh, Jermaine. I think your your comment got scrambled, Jermaine. So hello, hey, hopefully you're doing well. 
And then next up is Alex uh, Ristano, Ristano, uh, Ristano. He says, um, I'm trying to be patient before I start killing the common Bermuda. Grade and seed with Monaco. Cool, so you're gonna be doing a renovation. I like it, sounds like a, sounds like a fun project. I'm in North Carolina, so another two weeks and I should be good to start the Kill Fertilize uh, All program. Um, so it, it depends on temperatures. It depends on how things go, um, Alex. I would not I would not think that, you're, that the soil temps are gonna be where they need to be to seed, um, to do Bermuda grass seed until late April, early May. We, it might get hot sooner than that, but I mean, late April, early May is when I'm thinking you're gonna be able to do your seed. So if you're gonna, do, if you're gonna plan your kill off when the lawn's out of dormancy, because um, if you're using like fusillate and glyphosate, that combination, you want the lawn to be, to be actively growing. It works better versus a spraying a dormant lawn. And so if I, I would say, if you can do three weeks prior to when you plan to do your seeding projects, if you wanna wait for the first week, maybe second week of April, do your kill off then, and then by the time it's all, it's it's dead and gone, you'll be into the first week of May. By then, temperatures should be where they need to be for you to do your um, your seeding project. You don't want to go too early. You want to make sure that soil temps are where they, um, you know, where they uh, where they need to be. And and um, I, I really late April, early May is when I would um, is when I would plan to do that. When I did Arden fifteen, if the label, if I remember the label correctly, it was uh, it wanted a soil temp of sixty five degrees is what it called for. So it's soil temp of sixty five degrees, trending warmer. So in your area, whenever soil temps are sixty five degrees, trending warmer, then you know the average anyway. That's when you know you're in the window to do your Bermuda your Bermuda grass uh, seeding project. So I would not think that's going to be until late April. Again, early May, late April, early May is what I would, uh, would would plan for. All right, we got a super chat here. Let me get it down, get it up here on the screen here really quick for Mr. Vashon Brooks. Thank you so much, uh, Vashon. Super chat, proceed. He says, the 14714 came and Nutrizolve is on the way. Thanks for the advice. Question, do pet tr pest treatments da uh, do any damage to beneficial soil organisms? I wanting to, wanting to pre-treat for insects, but I don't want to do any harm. Great question, Vashon. So first of all, thank you so much for the super chat. And uh, thanks also for the support as far as the fertilizer at Nutrizolve. So as far as pest treatments, it depends on the insecticide that you use is, is the best answer to the question. There are some, you know, a lot, of, a lot of commonly used insecticides, while they're very effective at, at killing grubs, bill bugs, a lot of the, the lawn damaging insects that we don't want in our lawn, they also have a negative effect on pollinators like bees and also on like nature's natural aerators, earthworms, right? So the, Insecticide that I am a fan of, the one I switched to, this will be the third year that I've been using it, um, is one called a Celeprint. It's a, it's, a, it's a great product, Syngenta makes it, we sell it on the golf course lawn store. I'm a fan of this for a couple of reasons. One, it, it covers a, a broad spectrum of lawn damaging insects. So grubs, uh, you know, bluegrass weevils, bill bugs, uh, any kind of, um, of turf caterpillar, so sod web worms, uh, army worms, like, you know, those are always fun. It, uh, a celebrated will take care of all of those and and it doesn't harm invertebrates like earthworms and doesn't harm pollinators like bees. So as far as the insecticide, if you're concerned about the environment to apply, uh, you can't really go wrong with a celeprin. So as far as where you can find that, if you go to the golf course salon store, you go to shop and then go to the fungicide insecticide section, uh, there you'll see it front and center. So it comes in a granular, comes in a liquid. I am a fan of the liquid mainly because uh, you can have more control over the application rates. Um, you can, if you decide you're going to mix other products along with it, so say you're applying some kind of a soil-based product, you want to put some biospectrum down as well too, you can do that. So as long as you have a backpack sprayer, um, the liquid option is the way that I would go. It's also a little bit cheaper, right? Because you're not paying quite as much money for, for shipping. As far as the rate, now we look at the label for a seller print, you're going to see a bunch of different uh, rates. It's going to range anywhere from 0 0.05 um, fluid ounces per thousand up to like 0.43 fluid ounces per thousand, depending on what you're treating. So the really, really low rates for an active army worm infestation, all the way up to uh, like 0 0.40, right? So which rate do you use? The rate that I like that that makes good use of the product, meaning you're not applying more of it than you need, than you need to, but also provides good control over a broad range of insects is the 0 0.20 rate. So if you look here on the Nicely included measuring container. You see it goes from 0.1 all the way up to 0.5. What you're gonna to wanna to go with is 0.2 mixed with a gallon of water and sprayed over 1,000 square feet. Like that rate is a good catch-all rate. I've had really good success with that. So I've been recommending to, to um, people in the academy as well as other folks that have gotten it, uh, bought this product and they've had great results with it. So a celeprint is what I would go with as far as lawn damaging insects goes. Now, if you're looking for something that's even 
um, even less aggressive, even, even less toxic. But it's it's really more for, it's not necessarily for grubs, it's more for like um, noceums, mosquitoes, gnats, ticks, uh, roaches. Um, a, an excellent product, um, and one I can actually show you guys some slides for is um, is the Miramichi Green Pest Control. So you want, so a Celeprin, as far as more syn a synthetic product goes, this is about as gentle as it gets. Very good, great product, very effective, safe for the environment. And as far as a product that is non-toxic, so that is trending more towards the organic side, now you've got the uh, the Miramichi Green Pest Control. And again, this treats, it takes more stuff on here. You got mosquitoes, ants, noceums, roaches, no one likes roaches, ticks, aphids, white flies, fleas, and chinch bugs. So the nice thing about this is that it's, again, it's non-toxic. Due to the way it works, um, insects cannot form a resistance to it. And, and unlike some other insecticides, you take something like, say, bifenthrin, right, which it's a good product. It's great for killing, for killing insects, but as far as being able to repel, not so much. This will both kill and repel, uh, which is why it's a, it's, a, it's a great product. I mean, this is one of the, literally one of the, um, as far as one of the few products that I get a ton of reviews about, or people reach out to me and say, hey, I, I, I applied this, and literally I could watch mosquitoes and mosquitoes fleeing and dying, and just getting tons of positive feedback. Uh, the, the pest control is um, from Miramichi is, is, is one of those. It's a great, it's an excellent, excellent product. Let me see if I can actually show you guys. I think I can, I think I can pull this up since you asked about pest control. Why not? I think I can make this happen. Let's see here. Now I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't plan. I didn't think this. So we, you know, this is the demo gods. Hopefully, will smile nicely on me. Let's see here. See if I can pull this off. So if I pull up preview, will that work? Yeah, cool. That works. All right. So this is. Um, I was able to, to get them to, to let me have a slide deck that they that they were showing. They, they mainly um, preserve this for their professional, um, the professional uh, pr uh, customers. But I said, hey, listen, man. You know, the folks that, that watch the, uh, the the live stream, you know, we're pro. We, you know, we can we can we can get through data. So, what, it's one thing to say that a product is good, right, and that it it kills a bunch of stuff. But how do you really know? So. Turns out in 2017, they did a study. They had a Mississippi State do a study where they compared the Miramichi Green Pest Control against um, several other products. So they basically had a greenhouse um, with 2,000 square foot zones, and they compared they they put the the to the non toxic pest control up against um, you know several other synthetic products. So you see, you got. Um, I'll tell you here. You got um, Accentria, IC3, Hydro, Nature Shield, um, Cedar Side, of course the Pest Control, and then Bifenthrin, right? So uh, the the usual the usual cast. Uh, so if you look at what you're looking at here is you're looking at two different tests. First, you got a Repel test. So let me get my let me get my face off of here. I am in the way. I'll get this down. There you go. So you see, you got a Repel test. So as far as it it making the bugs not want to stick around it, and then you've got a Kill test. So repelling bugs and then killing bugs. So what they would do is they they would let twenty they put um, twenty five um, mosquitoes or insects into each of these test areas and you can see how each of them per performed I C three twenty of twenty five repelled Nature Shield eighteen of twenty five repelled the um, G C Cedar Side uh, sixteen of twenty five repelled and then the Pest Control the Miramichi Pest Control twenty two of twenty five so as far as the um, the more non toxic non synthetic um, options the Pest Control by far did the best Bifenthrin doesn't have any doesn't have any anything for that as far as um, repelling, right? So it's, it's mainly mainly a product for, for for killing. If you go to the kill test, so down here, right, the second second area, same kind of thing. Uh, the IC3 did killed eight of twenty five, um, and then and they also showed over several weeks, right? So when you when you do an application, what can you expect in week one, week two, week three? and week four, right? So as far as you, um, like, what kind of residual effects do you get from it? So you see the results of the, the IC3 product, the results of the Nature Shield product, only two of 25 killed, the the results of the GC Cedricide product, four of 25 killed, and then the Miramichi Green uh, Pest Control product, 19 of 25 killed for week one, week two, week three, and week four. So at, at, by week four, it drops down to 10 of 25 kills, so the, the effectiveness does drop off, but that is also true for bifenthrin, right? Bifenthrin is more effective for killing in the sense that you get 22 out of 25, um, but its effectiveness also drops off. So as far as being a synthetic, or, or sorry, a, a non-toxic, or a largely, um, you can't necessarily say organic, but a non-toxic product, it punches well above its weight when you compare it to a lot of the, so like bifenthrin, which is in many ways, you know, an industry standard for um, for uh, insecticides. So 
so I say all that to say, if you want to get rid of um, mosquitoes, to want to get rid of them and to keep them away, the pest control, the Marimichi Green pest control is a, a great, a great option. So I can show you that right um, here. Actually, let me go back to Safari. I got the wrong window. There we go. This is what I'm talking about. So this is is what you want to use if you want the the least the least um, offensive as far as um, a synthetic product that can that can do harm to the environment. Like this is this is the way to go. This is primarily though again for mosquitoes, spiders, white flies, this type of thing. A celeprin is a better choice for lawn damaging insects. So like army worms, grubs, you know, annual bluegrass weevils, because you'll apply a celeprin really late this month, uh, early, early April, and you're gonna get great results, you're gonna get great control over the season with that. So a single application of a celeprin is typically all you need to get a good result, um, you know, all season long. Whereas the Miramichi Green Pest Control, you're gonna be applying that every three weeks is what the recommend recommendation is. So get a, get a good example, good use cases. You got friends or family coming over for the weekend, a barbecue, pool party, whatever you're gonna be doing, and you spray this an hour before everyone's gonna show up and you're, and you're good to go. So hope that helps, Fashan. Great question. I like what you're thinking. I mean, it, it's it's gonna become more and more important, right? Because more and more people are, are concerned about you know, the chemicals we're using on our lawns and that we're putting in the environment and then the effect you can have on people, pets, and that type of thing. So, you know, we try and offer um, products that that do a great job. Obviously, they got to perform, right? That's thing one. But then also, if there's an option that is also, you know, safe for the environment as well, why not also um, talk about that? So the Miramichi Green Pest Control and Acelaprin, these are the, these are what, as far as what I use on my lawn, it's this for the lawn and, and um, for grubs, armyworm control, and then the um, the Miramichi Green uh, Pest Control for like around the patio, around the house, just to keep, you know, the uh, white flies, mosquitoes, keep them away from, um, from the property. So hope that helps. Thank you so much. And because you were the first, I saw there were some other super chats, but because you're the first, you, sir, are the show sponsor. Plus, plus was a great question. I really like that. It's a good, it's a, it's a different one, and I, I really appreciate the question, sir. So I'm gonna throw you up there right now. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Thanks so much. Really do appreciate the super chat. And if you need anything else, definitely let me know. All right, so I see there's some more super chats here. Give me one second, guys. I'm gonna get your super chats. Let me take another question because I want to let Vishan, I want him to, you know, to have his his moment on the screen for a while. So I see some of these super chats are, are higher than his, so I want to give him a, give him a, little, a little time. Let him breathe for a little bit. I see you up there, Louis, so I'm gonna get to you in one second. All right, and next up is Mr. Alexander Lee, the man, the myth, the legend. He says, up, up, and away, smash the like button. Thanks for that, Alex, I really do appreciate that. If you don't, um, if you don't mind, uh, please, uh, you, know, you know, definitely, definitely um, you know, hit the like button, as Alex is saying. Um, you know, it doesn't cost anything, it's a great way to support the channel, and I would really appreciate it. it sends good vibes to the, uh, to the algorithm, right, so. If you need, if you if you guys would do that, I would really, really appreciate it. We got 126 people in here right now, so hit the like button. It costs nothing. Can't can't be free, right? Next up is Mr. Joseph Roberts. He says, "Happy Friday, Ron. Everyone have a great weekend. Thanks so much, Joe. I really do appreciate that. And let me get down here and now get Luis's super chat. So Vashon, you've had your moment. Let me get down here and get to Luis. And guys, if you're interested in that study from Miramichi, I can I can see. I'll talk to them and see about if I can make a couple of the slides available." Um, on the store, I'll, I'll see how they feel about that. But I, I got the permission to show them to you guys live tonight. And you know, there's there's a lot more data in there as well as far as like the technical aspects of how the pro how the pest control works and how it how it repels and this kind of things. So if you guys are interested in that, I will um, I'll see about see about making that available to you. All right. So Luis is up next. He says, "Super chat received." Ron, the snow has finally melted. Yay for that! So we have a warm period on the way, high 40s to low 50s. Okay, I guess that's warm. It's warmer than snow. We'll, we'll, we'll say that, right? With some rain days. However, the following week may have a few snow showers. Uh, uh, apply pre-emergent with, with the rain day. Will snow showers affect, um, I didn't see the rest of it, but I guess you're saying, will the snow showers affect the pre-emergent? So <laughs> here's the thing. I mean, when you say snow showers, are you talking about like it's gonna rain, but there'll be some, there'll be some snow in the rain? Um, I would say this, Luis. If you're still, if you're still at the point where you're getting snow showers, it's unlikely that your average soil temps are going to be approaching the mid 50s as yet, right? So what I would say is, give it a little while longer. So you're gonna see over next over the following week you have some snow showers. Let's give it another week. Let's let's wait till that passes by, 
And if you want to do your pre-emergent then, then by all means go for it. The, the, the goal is to get it applied before the average soil temps are in the mid 50s. And it doesn't sound like that is true in your case. I, I apply mine once soil temps are high 40s, low 50s. I mean, I, I tend to get mine down a little bit early because I really don't want to have weeds in my lawn. But in your case, it looks like you still got a bit more um, a bit more inclement weather to have to deal with before you um, before you will get out there and put your, your pre-emergent down. I mean, it, could you could you do it? Um, if you're just going to get like some some wet and rainy, some cold and rainy weather, yes. But my point is that you why not just wait a week? Wait till all that's gone and then do your pre-emergent application. Then you don't have to really worry about it, right? You just have to worry. It'll just be rain and uh, the normal spring weather, and you'll and you're not going to you're not going to be late to where you're not going to get um, good control or, or good prevention as far as you know weeds growing in your lawn. So that's that's what I would recommend. If there's snow in the forecast, I, I I'd say let's just wait on the pre-emergent. Thank you so much for the super chat. And for that, um, hang on, I'm saying, I'm saying to text someone. Uh, and for that, your name is in lights. This is what's going to happen here next. Let me get you up here as the show sponsor. So Luis Aya Bahreno. Luis, you know, Luis, at some point, you're going to have to like record a short video and say, hey, Ron, stop butchering my name. Uh, it's pronounced this way, and that will have a reference then, right? Versus just trying to do it. I mean, I'm rolling the two R's, but I'm not sure if that's how it how it how it's said. At any rate, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate all the love and support. If you need anything else, definitely let me know. All right, next up, next up, we have Mr. Ahmad Damra. Ahmad Damra. He says. Hi, Henry. It's been in the 70s and 80s in Houston. Once I core aerate, fertilize, and sand leveled, it dropped to the 50s. It's okay, man. It'll go back up. It'll be it'll, here's here's the way to look at that. Hopefully, you got to do your leveling right when it was the, the weather was a little bit nicer. So maybe you got like a, a 50 or 60 degree day to do your leveling. Even though you get those little dips along the way, it's you're going, we're gonna be on a warming trend. So I I really wouldn't uh wouldn't worry about it. So you already got your core aeration, your top dressing, your fertilization, man, nice. You are ahead of the curve. You, I guess it does. Yeah, H Town. I mean, you're not that far from um, not that far from the Gulf. So I could I can imagine your weather is is a bit warmer than what we have here in the state of Georgia. But yeah, you'll be fine. I I really wouldn't sweat it. What will happen is it will likely slow down recovery by a little bit, but it's not going to be you know nothing to worry about. I mean, you got you got the uh, the top dressing done. So now it's just to wait for the recovery and just relax and mow your lawn and. Dominate, man. Have your neighbors uh, have your neighbors be like, "How is he pulling that off?" Right. That's all that's left at this point. Next up is Mr. Travis Winston. He says, "Happy Friday uh, to you, Ron, and the rest of the golf course lawn squad." What's going on, Travis? Thanks for hanging out and come stopping by to wish uh, greetings. It is St. Patrick's Day after all. I'm sure you all you guys are are drinking um, something a lot more fun than I'm drinking tonight. It is an Arnold Palmer, courtesy of Milo's. So some lemonade. A bit of that sweet tea, some go juice for uh, for the show tonight, right? Next up, we got Doug 350Z Twin Turbo. He says, "Hey Ron and everyone, what's going on, Doug? Thanks for uh, thanks for coming to hang out in live stream. I appreciate you." And then next up, we got Quincy Williams saying, "Hello, Ron. I appreciate you. Thanks so much, uh, Quincy. I really uh, I really do appreciate the kind words and uh, and support. Kind words and support." Okay, next up we have I'm looking here for the for our, our next good question. Um, we got no name in the house. He says, "Hey Ron and fellow lawn enthusiasts, I'm out of town. We'll probably miss the show. Boo on that. It's not good." He says, "I'll definitely catch the replay. Let's get those likes up." Uh, thanks for that, no name. I appreciate the um, the kind words and you just taking some time, even though you're out of town, to come and say hello. You know, guys, on the topic of insecticides, right? So you know, um, Vashon's um, question was a really good one. And to help with that, because we're trying to get ahead of the curve as far as I think about all the questions I've gotten over the years and the questions I typically get this time of year. So what we did is we put together a blog post and it's in the description of the show. So if you're watching this after the fact, you'll be able to see it in the show description about common lawn pests, common bugs, how to identify them, and then uh, so options for taking care of them. So I'll link that here in the live stream now and then I'll show you guys really quick here what I am referring to. So this is our list of common lawn pests. You can see the link there, but then also let me uh, get this up on the screen and show you guys what we are working with. A lot of work went into this, a lot of work went into this. So hopefully you guys find it, it useful. 
hopefully you guys find it useful. So here we go. So this is what I'm talking about. So the link that is put in the in the in the chat is a list of common lawn pests, how to identify them, and of course we got pictures of them, which is, believe it or not was not actually easy. Talks about you know what lawn, what common lawn pests are, why they're an issue, why you don't want to deal with them, and um, talks about different types of grubs because you know there's not one type of grub. There's there's several types that turn and they can they um, they can become or um, different types of of insects whenever they. Um, Whenever they they hatch, whenever they, uh, they 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 mature, so you've got you know the white grub, you've got billbug grubs, Japanese uh, beetle larvae. So we cover those mass chafer grubs. We talk about the grub life cycle as far as how that works. Uh, the we talk about acelaprin as far as being an option for getting rid of that, which we've already spoken about. Um, and then we talk about other lawn pests like army worms. You know those those friendly friendly guys that ate up everyone's lawns about two seasons ago. Talk about those. We show you an example of what army worms in your lawn looks like, so you can know if you have them. Heaven help you if you do, because by the time you see them, it's likely too late. Uh, what chinch bugs look like, sod web worms, cut worms, bill bugs, fiery skippers, Japanese beetles, mole crickets, green bugs. You know, again, it's, it's a it's a comprehensive list. I mean, granted, it's not it's not everything, but it's it's the most common ones that we got questions about. There's a lot of work went into this. We'll continue to build it out as um, as we we get more, we can get more images and, and add more content to it. But as far as a resource that you guys can use and again share, pass it around to friends, family, um, anyone that uh, that's dealing with bugs in their lawn, they wonder what is eating my lawn, like what's going on. Uh, this is uh, something you can look at, and to make it also easier to find for you guys, if you look at the the product descriptions for any of the insecticides. If you go to say insecticide fungicide and you look at like the Miramichi Green Pest Control and you scroll down, this is not sure what's eating your lawn, our list of common pests will help you figure it out. So you got a link here in the, in the Miramichi Green Pest Control and you've got a link in each of the acelloprins. Same, same thing, right? So you can, you can get to this from there as well. So hopefully you guys find that useful. I know it's not a super like, you know, super exciting topic, but I mean, it's one of those things where if you have it in your lawn, <laughs> you, you you really care about it. If you don't have them in your lawn, you don't care, but it's it's a good resource for the community. Feel free to pass it around, share it, and uh, hope you guys get some value out of it. So a lot of work went into it and, and hopefully you guys like it. All right, so we got another super chat. Let me get down here and grab one really uh, quick from Mr. LG, of course, not to be undone. LG is here, he's in the house, he has returned. He says, I like my name in lights too, you know, evil smirk. All right, thanks so much, LG, for the super chat. I really do appreciate you. Let me get you all set up here. You know, LG, you gotta um, send me an email. You gotta um, send me an email or text me and let me know how your uh, your trip, I think you went, what was it, Bahamas? Wherever you went to, somewhere fun. You gotta let me know how it, how you uh, you got on. Obviously it was, uh, you know, you didn't, you didn't get in too much trouble. They, they let you leave the country, right? So... But yeah, you definitely gotta let me hit me up and send me pictures and let me know how you guys uh what how how the how the trip was. All right, so there you go, sir. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Thank you so much for the generous super chat. Thanks so much for the support. And because it's you and because of how needy you are, I'll, I'll even put on a little bit of Tango Bolero for you while I look for the next comment. Guys, you on the Instagram, don't feel, don't be left out. You know, just because you guys are are on my phone, you guys can ask questions too. I'll, I'll glance over here periodically and take your questions as well. All right, so next up is Mr. VMH. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. What's going on, VMH? Mr. Crabgrass, no more. And uh, Randall Lard is in the house. Says, good evening, Ron. Uh, have an amazing uh, Friday evening. Thanks, sir. Thanks for all the well wishes. I appreciate that. And uh, let's see, John Rob Will says, we sound like we have a great weekend planned, Jason. We're just coming out of a cold snap here in, in Maryland. Oliver Rhythm is in the house. He says, happy Friday, everyone. So guys, the soil test results that I just showed you, the one that we just we covered earlier in the show, these are Oliver. So the, the one that, the, he's the one that was so, so gracious to send them in and agreed to let me show him on the show tonight. So there you go, right? So as far as uh, options for getting your soil right and then by extension your grass right for the season, soil testing is the way to go. We carry them on the golf course lawn store. If it's the first time getting a soil test kit, I would get the option, I'll show you. I'm, I'm, I'm talking here, and I'm like, talking is good, but video and pictures are better. So a great option is to go with this one, the starter pack, which comes with one soil test kit and then also the probe because you know getting your cores is something you need to be able to do and this tool that you only need to buy once 
is uh, a great asset for making that easier. So get the one that comes with this and this if it's your first time. And then once you're done, only have to buy the, the, the test kits going forward. You don't need the probe anymore. So thanks again, uh, Oliver. Thank you for agreeing to let me um, show your test results on, on the show. Appreciate that. All right, next up is Mr. Jeffrey Lancaster. He says, I have my Celsius and certainty. How many days before and after range should I apply it? So with Celsius and certainty, you really want to apply them to a dry lawn. So the question we got about fertilizer, you know, can you apply fertilizer to a dry or wet lawn, ideal, or granular anyway, uh, 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 ideally dry. For a post-emergent herbicide like Celsius and certainty, you definitely want it to be dry. You want it to be dry. And um, the before rain doesn't matter so much. In other words, if it rained, like it's raining right now, right? It's raining right now here in Georgia. If, it, if the rain stops tonight, which it should, and if I were gonna go out and spray for weeds tomorrow morning, as long as it's dry, I can absolutely do that. So there's, so there's not really a period of time that you need to wait um, from when it finishes raining till you do your, your Celsius certainty application as long as the weeds, the, 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 the area you're, you're spraying is dry. Now, once you you uh, you spray it, you're also going to want to allow the product to dry on the lawn, so or dry on the leaf of, of the uh, the weeds you're targeting. So really, if you can get a day of dry weather, that's ideal. You know, worst case scenario, if you're able to spray it in the morning and if you're going to have rain that evening, that would be fine too, especially if you're using surfactant along with it, which you should. If you're using Celsius Uncertainty for best results, you really want to be using surfactant. Uh, along with those products, it really helps um, maximize the the results you get from your herbicide apps. But if you get a, you know, again a you know a good four hour stretch of dry weather, um, you're you're good to go. Really, the thing that when it comes to to post emergent herbicides that you want to be more mindful of is more around mowing. So the the idea behind a product like Celsius and Certainty is that they work best when there's plenty of leaf, right? Plenty of foliar, plenty of skin for them to, to be applied to. So there's so there's more area for um, uptake to happen um, into the, the, the weed that we're targeting. So ideally, if you look at most post-emergent herbicides, they'll say no mowing two days before and before application and no mowing for two days after application. So no no the mowing no uh, mowing two days before again to allow there to be adequate leaf and then no mowing uh, till two days after is to um, post application is to allow adequate time for the herbicide to be absorbed for it to get down into the system and begin killing the plant. So mowing there's more restrictions on or there's more guidance ar around getting the best results from these products. When it comes to the lawn being wet, really you just want it to be dry when you spray it and for there not to be rain for at least four hours, ideally not till the next day. So hope that helps, Jeffrey. Great question. And if you are going to be spraying Celsius Uncertainty, be sure to use surfactant with it. This is very important for getting the best result, for getting the best result. Next up is Mr. Robert Rainey. He says, what's going on? Happy Friday, everyone. So guys, I haven't forgotten about the, the, the new re-rollers tool they're going to be talking of, that we're going to be releasing here soon. Um, that you know they are able allowed me to give a sneak peek on. That's the problem with whenever I go by and I see Lee and he's out there doing something cool. The first question I was asked is, "Hey man, you mind if I take my camera out? You mind if I just take a quick picture or a video of that?" And uh, you know, once, and once I had the footage, the next question is, "Hey, you don't, you don't mind if I show it on the live stream, do you?" So sometimes it's yes, most times it's yes, sometimes it's no, sometimes it's not ready. But uh, tonight he was very generous. He said, "Yeah, you can you can feel free to show this. They're not going to be able to get it for a couple more weeks, but you can show it to them." And uh, for a certain audience, it's going to be a godsend. So definitely stick around. We'll be showing that here soon. Robert, thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. And you're right, man. It's it's cold. It got cold here over the uh, this past week, man. At night, it's, uh, it's gotten in the 30s, which is not great. Not great. You can see what it did to my lawn. My lawn was greening up really nicely and looking great. And now you can see the green has kind of shrunk away a little bit. There's still some out there but it's definitely fallen back a little bit from all this cold weather. But fair or not, no, uh, you know, no worries. Mother Nature has to, have, uh, has to have her say, and we'll be out there mowing and having fun before you know it, before you, you know it. All right, next up, we have a question here from the Instagram. It's from Sitter Jason. He says, hey, Ron, I plan on using Country Club 1604, so not the Humic Max line, uh, but it's not Humic Max. What would you use to make up for the loss of humic acid? Great question. So what I would say is in, instead of, um, since you're not gonna be able, be able to put any humic um, acid down directly or a part of your granular fertilizer um, product, what I would say is you could do Essential G. So 
I can, I mean, if you're over here on YouTube, I, I show you, but I'll show the guys on YouTube because they're here. If you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, you can go with, and go to the Miramichi Green section, I would go with Essential G. So this is a great biosimilant. There's a bit of Humate uh, in this. Reclaimed coffee grounds, lots of lots of good stuff from that from a from a granular perspective. So as far as a granular replacement um, for humic acid, that's that's going to help improve the microbial activity in the soil to help you know be a great biostimulant in granular form. Essential G is what I would go with. Again, in addition to to humate, you get some silicon biochar um, compost, reclaimed coffee grounds. So that is what I would say if granular is your jam. If you're talking about a liquid option, it's tough to beat the carbon kit. So the Carbon Kit is a, a, an offering that we put together with Miramichi Green. It consists of three products. So you have um, the Release Zero Carbon Kit, so it's Release Zero, NutriKelp, which is a kelp product, and then Biospectrum, which is a microbial uh, food for your soil. So those three um, put together are, are an excellent um, option, but again, that's a liquid. So I didn't, I'm not sure if you were asking about a liquid, but if, that's, if you're good with that, if you're good with spraying liquids, I would say get the Carbon Kit. If you're good with going the granular route, than Essential G. That is is what I would say. And good good uh, good luck. L let me know how the uh, the 1604 works for you. Even though it's not a Humic Max product, I'm sure it's going to perform well. I've used everything from um, Love It and Turf Proscape line, which is their their fertilizer that has a prill that's a little bit more like this size. It's not quite this big, but I mean a prill that's a larger prill like that to their Humic Max which is this guy, which is 150 SGN, smaller. And then now recently we've got, we got the, the champagne, champagne fertilizer in their country club line, which is uh, this, right? This is like an 80 SGN greens grade fertilizer. So this stuff is literally like uh, almost like powder that you're putting down. So as far as uptake, getting past the grass, less chance of burning, getting, you know, getting into the soil where fertilizer needs to get to work, uh, this, the, either of these are really tough to beat. They're both excellent, excellent options. Uh, there's nothing wrong with um, with a larger prill fertilizer as well, but I mean, as far as, um, especially whenever you have a, a lawn that is um, that's that's real mode and it gets tends to get a little bit thicker, a little more dense. This can get can get caught on top and not get past the grass. Whereas a product like the Humic Max 150 SGN prill and then definitely the uh, the Country Club, the 80 SGN. Either one of these are gonna go are gonna go right past that canopy, get down into the to the soil where they can. Uh, make the um, make the soil do what it do, right? Make it help the help help um, improve improve your soil and by extension your grass. It really depends on what kind of problem you're trying to solve. So yeah, to answer your question, essential G and the carbon kit is what I would go with. Um, essential G if you want a granular, and then for liquids the carbon kit. So hope that helps. You can get that on the golf course lawn store under the Miramichi Green section. Great stuff. All right, next up, next up we have. Let me see, I'm seeing where I left off. We got um, Travis, already passed him up. Um, we have Shelby Amos in the house. He says, I hit the lawn with the Celsius and certainty last Tuesday, seeing some wheat starting to struggle, but how long until it really quick kicks in? This time of year, Shelby, give it, give it a good two weeks. Give it two weeks and what you're gonna start seeing is um, for the first like week, you're not gonna see a whole lot. But really, at the end of two weeks, going between week two and three, you're going to start seeing the weeds yellowing, and then it will really accelerate as they die off. It's it's kind of the same thing when with with um with certainty against uh, sedges. With sedges, it works a bit faster, but the same thing when you first spray it the first day or two, you're not going to really see a whole lot. By day four, day five, it'll see some yellowing, and then it really begins to accelerate. So the so the curve is or or how how it kills the weed is not linear. It's not like you spray it and it's gonna get a little bit darker or a little bit lighter the next day and the day after that a little bit lighter. It literally begins, you see nothing, 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 and then it really ramps up and takes off and um, and the weed dies. Much like how fusillate and glyphosate work against Bermuda, same kind of thing. You spray like Bermuda with, with fusillate and glyphosate, that combination, um, it, for the first two days, first couple of days, you're not gonna see a whole lot. But then by, by and it depends on the time of year and temperature, but typically about a week in, you're gonna see the Bermuda begin to yellow and then really accelerate and die off and get burnt to a crisp and, and, and die. So this time of year with the temperatures cooler, it's gonna be a bit slower to work, but as long as you apply it properly with at the correct rates and you use surfactant and use surfactant, you're gonna get a good result, you know, so. Again, that's the if I say the negative, the one, the one negative of Celsius uncertainty is that because they work over a broader temperature range, when it's cooler, they tend to work slower. 
the upside is you literally buy these two herbicides. If you have warm season grass, if you have cool season grass, don't buy this. If you have warm season grass, you buy these two herbicides, astrofactin, and you can use them pretty much throughout the entire growing season. You can do it when, like this time of year, you can use them during the summer, you can use them during the fall. You know, there are other herbicides you can use that, um, that will work faster this time of year, but they have temperature restrictions. You know, once you get above eight into the 80s, 80, mid 80s, you really gotta be careful with them because they'll, they'll damage your grass. Whereas Celsius Uncertainty will not do that, which is why I, I like them so much and I recommend them because it's just, it gives a lot more leeway, right? As far as um, fudge factor and, you know, you getting a good result with, with all minimizing lamp damage to your lawn, that's why I really am a huge fan of these for, um, for warm season, for warm season turf, so. Hope that helps, Shelby. Give it a few weeks, and uh, you should start seeing the weeds begin to really yellow up and, and die off as more time goes by. We got a Wise190 in the, in the stream from Instagram saying, Happy Friday, Ron. Going to be a frigid this weekend. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be nippy out there. It is going to be nippy. But then once that passes, we should be better. Should be better, right? That's the hope anyway, right? Well, I'm ready. We're, we're, in, we're into March. We, it's just cold weather nonsense, right? But at least we don't have what Luis has. We're, we don't have to deal with snow here in Georgia, which is fingers crossed for that. All right, next up is Derek Douglas. He says, where's the new mower? A uh, new mower, are you talking about, look for me? I, I don't have a new mower. I don't, I've got, I'm up to my ears in mowers. I'm not getting any more mowers. As far as the real roller's new mower, you're gonna have to talk to Lee about that. I'm not, I, you know, I, I, I'm not privy to, like as far as things that I can talk about, that's one of the things I can't talk about. Like reach out to real rollers. Don't tell them I sent you because he'll sit. He'll probably, you know, probably like throw punch me and say, "Why, why are you tell all these people to call me? I'm not ready to talk about it yet." But uh, as far as the mower, that you know, as far as what mowers are going to be offering, talk to Lee at Real Rollers uh, for to get an answer for that one. All right, next up is Henry Jones. He says Henry Jones Photography he says, "Hey Ron, what's going on, Henry? Thank you for coming to hang out uh, in the live stream. I appreciate you, Henry Jones Photography. Your last, your first name's Henry, so I mean, you got to be a good guy, right?" Gotta be, gotta be a nice guy. Then we got real rollers in the house. Speaking of real rollers, says Rockin' Green, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. I am, man. I got a you know, little green, the, the, the vintage stripe action t-shirt. Gotta do that. Absolutely gotta do that. And then next up, uh, we got uh, No Name saying, also, I placed an order for a small thing of Celsius this afternoon and already received the tracking. Thanks, Ron. Yep, that, that's that's what we aim for, um, a no name. Really, for some products, not all products are that way, but for some of the products, or some of the herbicide products that ship um, here locally at our local warehouse here, um, those we are typically able to get out same day if you if you get your order in before two o'clock in the afternoon. If you get your order in before two o'clock, normally, not always, normally we're able to get them out the same day. What he's talking about is, so Celsius comes in the 10 ounce, right? You guys know this is good for up to two acres, depending on application rate. But then for some of you, you say, it's too much. I just need something to do some spot spraying. In which case, you, not, you now have Celsius available in this nice single use application. Nothing to measure, nothing to worry about. You literally take one of these guys and at the rate that I recommend you use it, that I like to use, I would take one of these and mix it with two gallons of water, and then you can use it for for spraying um, for spraying your lawn. That that two gallons of water will cover two thousand square feet. So one of these and two gallons of water, two thousand square feet. Um, if you're in the middle of summer, right, and you're you're treating like spurge, something that's pretty easy to kill, and you're using Celsius. In that case, you could get by with one of these and four gallons of water, but that's when temps are a little bit higher. Um, this time of year, I would lean more towards one packet with two gallons of water and some surfactant, and some surfactant, and that will cover 2,000 square feet. So it's a great option for those just want to do some spot spraying. And uh, if, you, if you got plenty of this in stock at the Golf World Salon store, so feel free to check it out in the weed killer section if you have a need for them. Uh, yeah, but yeah, no name. Let me know once it gets to you. Let me know if you have any uh, any any questions or comments or anything like that. There's videos and a lot of description, a lot of good notes in the description. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. But I think you're going to be good to go. I think you will be just fine, just fine. All right. Next up, we have um, OK Lawn Guy he says, "How long is the stream? It depends, man. Here lately, the one last week was." four hours and like just just under five hours and the one before that was five hours so it was they typically are not that long normally I like to keep them around the three hour mark depend you know but it depends on how many questions you guys have it depends on how much questions you guys have and how much uh, jibber jabbering I do so I'm trying to speed up because I know you guys want to get your questions answered and don't want to have to wait around all day to for that to happen so I I'm trying to go a bit faster through the questions but typically anywhere between three hours until whenever 
Again, last couple of weeks have, have been a lot longer, have been up to five hours. So there you go. All right, next up is Shelby Amos. He says, I'm gonna get a solar print soon from you. Can I spray my trees with it as well as my lawn? Evergreens, tropical banana plants, canine lilies, they always get bugs all over them. Yeah, so what I would say is this, for, for a celeprin, on the label there is caution about spraying it around fruit trees, um, particularly around um, like fruit bearing nut trees. So you're, wanna, gonna, you're, you're going to wanna avoid that. You're gonna wanna keep it away from the drip line of the tree. So um, so to answer your question, no, I would not, I would not do that. I would not spray it. On um, on fruit bearing trees that you uh, that you that you care about. So the evergreens would be fine. The bananas I wouldn't. The canine lily, the canna lilies, that sounds like a, de a decorative plant. Like that one I would not be concerned about. But the tropical bananas, like anything you're going to eat, I would I would I would give it. Um, I would say I would not spray it um, on on those. The the, the sim similar thing applies to the Miramichi Green Pest Control. Um, um, while this is a non toxic product. They don't recommend spraying it on thing on on on, uh, on produce you're going to eat because of the oils that are in it, right? That's that's the main thing. Not that it's you know toxic, obviously, because non toxic product, but you don't want to be spraying like your apples or, or again things you're going to be eating with oils and, and that type of thing. So um, for non for non fruit bearing plants, for non like it's just the other things like his evergreens and the and the canna lilies, um, you can you can knock yourself out, but um, but a celeprin I would keep it away from 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 uh, from from products that you're planning to um, to to eat. Look at the label. There's some there's um there's some guidance around that as far as like uh, fruit bearing uh, fruit bearing trees. I hope that helps, Shelby. Uh, let me know if you need uh, anything else. It's a good question. Next up is uh, next up is Mr. Vahid Navi. He says, Dear Ron. How to lower my height of cut from three inches to one and a half inches. I just want to know the process and how long after can I fertilize my lawn for that recovery. I have cool season along Kentucky bluegrass. So you're at three inches and you want to go down to an inch and a half. And I want to know the process. So it depends. There's a couple of ways you can do it. If you want to maintain, if you want the color to stay nice, if you want to lose a bunch of color uh, as part of this process or, or stress the turf, you can take it down in phases. You can take you know, you can take um, a third off, and then a couple of days later, take another third off. In other words, you can you can you can mow the lawn shorter, faster than it is um, than it's recovering. Another, you see what I'm saying? So, like, if you there's a, there's a couple trains of thought, but if you're trying to maintain color and not not unduly stress the lawn, you could go from two in, from three inches to um, to two inches. Go from three to two, and then from two to inch and three quarters or inch and a half. And yeah, so you really, you could do that in, you could do that in two or three sessions. You could do it in two or three sessions if you're trying to step it down uh, gradually. Try to step it down gradually. If you had Bermuda and you wanted to go from three inches to an inch and a half, I would just say, just take it down. You could, if you don't mind the loss in color, you can just do that. But if you're, you know, if you're, you're rye grass and you want it to, or you're, sorry, your KBG and you want it to look nice and not, not unduly stress the turf, take it, step it down in um, in phases, step it down in phases is what I would say of uh, Vahid. And he says, uh, can I do a scalp and dethatch in early spring? Can you scalp? Yes, can you dethatch? Sure, if your lawn needs it. So I'm a fan of turf raking Vahid more than dethatching. So, you know, de when I think of dethatching, again, you guys a lot of times say dethatching, but you really mean, you really mean turf raking or scarifying. Let me see if I can find what a dethatcher looks like here. Let me get out like, uh, there's, let me go to Alice's website here and I'm gonna find a Sterling and look at their dethatching cartridge. Okay, so when you when you say dethatching, this is what I think about. If you look at that, you've got this solid blade with hooks on it and that's very aggressive. As far as like, this this taking out, you know, thatch and potentially doing damage to your turf, to your turf in the process, like this is a very aggressive way of removing thatch from your lawn. So if you have a lawn that's been neglected for a number of years and you've got a lot of thatch buildup, then maybe this tool is necessary. But really, I am a bigger fan of doing multiple sessions of this, of scarifying. You can tell this is a lot more gentle. Um, you know, you could you could start high and just slowly work your way down. And it is going to take more sessions of turf raking or scarifying to clean out the thatch. But this is a lot more gentle on your turf. I mean, if you if if you take the scarifier or if you take the sorry, you take the dethatcher, and you set that a little bit too low, or you know, you're going to rip. You're going to take out thatch, but you're also gonna, you're going to take out a lot of grass along with it. So this I would really only reserve for lawns that 
you know, it's, it's, it's a special use case. In other words, I would not do this every year. If you have a lawn that you just moved into that was, that's been neglected for a number of years and you want to give it a, you know, you want to, to clean it out, I could see doing this one time and then switching from that to the, um, to the scarifier. Like, this is what um this is what I would use. In other words, I don't even own a dethatcher. I've got uh, I've got a verticutter, I've got a ver verticutter, and I've got uh, the scarifier. That's what I that's what I own. And multiple rounds of 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 turf raking slash scar scarification. Um, it will, will you'll be surprised at how good a job that can do cleaning out a lot of debris from your lawn. So. That's, those are my thoughts on it. Yes, you can do it in the early spring. I would lean more towards the turf raking slash scarifying though over dethatching, unless your lawn's in the kind of shape where you, where you need it. But it certainly would not be an every year type of thing. Next up is Real Rollers. They're in the house, they're giving you guys an update. It says, we did a scalp and, and set the, uh, the, I guess, got the thatch early. Uh, definitely slowed down the green up because it stresses the lawn by dethatching, yep. Um, we scalped and dethatched at our turf park and it slowed the green up, I think, because it stressed the lawn um, a bit. Yeah, and that's that's true, um, Lee. In your case, also, remember, he went very aggressive. Like, I, if I look, do I have a picture, still a video of it? So this is the Real Rollers turf park. I think this is it, yeah. So this was from a couple of weeks ago. And if you look, like, yes, he did dethatch and did, he did scalp, but as far as scalping, I mean, he took it down to the dirt. You can see that there's a lot of soil showing there. That's on the um, El Toro Zoysia, and over here on the Xeon plot, there's a, you know, he, he set the mower very, very low. So you can see he got, got down, got down into the meat. You know what I mean? So yes, that, if you go that aggressive, it is going to stress the turf some. But then if you do something like this, which is what he did on the Bermuda, where the left side was not touched yet, the right side was not touched yet, and the middle had a scalp that was not quite as aggressive, you can get a nice green up, you can clean out a lot of debris, a lot of, a lot of thatch out of your lawn, and not uh, you know not unduly stress the turf. So it really just depends on what you're like, what you're trying to accomplish, and you know if you're fine with uh, with the the lawn taking a little bit longer to come out of um, out of dormancy. So for me, turf raking is a, a less aggressive way to um, to to accomplish what dethatching aims to do. So hope that helps, sir. Great question. And on the top of word, or at the top of the hour, so we can show off the new toy from Real Rollers. So, um, so I was chatting with Lee, and he made the mistake of showing me something he was working on. This is pr this is primarily for True Cut. It's, it's a it's a for True Cut owners. If you got a True Cut, and if you've ever had to adjust the clutch on your True Cut, the clutch tension, or you've ever tried to set your um, your your tolerance between the reel and the bed knife, then you've got this tool that they've, uh, they've introduced. I'll show you here really quick. This is the Real Rollers, I think he's calling it the Spanch, right? So it is a spanner and a wrench. If you look here on the right side of your screen, the lower right hand corner, you see that the top part of this is the tool that you need for adjusting your tolerance, your, your, your for moving the the reel back or forth on your on your true cut. It's for, it's for, for adjusting the, the reel to bed knife tolerance. And then the lower side is a traditional uh, wrench, open end box wrench. But you'll notice whenever you have to do a, a clutch adjustment on, on a true cut, you have to hold that that inner nut, that inner nut that I have the arrow pointing to. And the the most of the wrenches that you're going to find at the big box stores, they're going to be too thick. They're not going to they're not going to be able to get just on that inner wrench and not not bump into the outer one that you need to rotate to be able to adjust your um to to to, to do to do to do the adjustment. So what they've come up with, what uh, Lee at Real Rollers have come up with is this tool that accomplishes both goals. So if you have a true cut, you can do your adjustment for your reel and bed knife uh, clearance, and you can use the uh, the box and uh, a side of it for doing your clutch adjustment. So they're gonna call it the Spanch. It's, uh, again, the, the name comes from, it's a combination of a spanner and a wrench, so it's hence the name Spanch. And from what I understand, it's going to be, what, what do you tell me, Lee, as far as price on this? I think you told me it's gonna be 20, let me look here, it's gonna be $22.99. So $22.99, and you're going to be able to order it on April 1st. So April Fool's Day, uh, you're going to be able to, it should be available for order. The Real Roller Spanch, again, uh, for true cut um, devices, true cut mowers, you've got a, oh, a bot, uh, the, the, for doing your adjustment for the reel and bed knife, and then also for doing your clutch adjustment. So it's a really cool tool, kind of a, a all-in-one, solves a problem, 
and uh, definitely check it out. And again, I'm sure that Real Rollers is gonna do announcements on their Instagram and whatnot, but you guys heard it here first. You guys are the first ones to hear it. No one else heard it first. And the folks on the live stream, right? So it's a good reason to tune in. You never know what I am going to uh, be able to talk about, right? So it's not always gonna be in the show description or or in the um, or even in the title of the video. So we just gotta tune in to see what, what kind of cool stuff, um, what kind of cool stuff I'm able to show you guys. So if you got a true cut mower, it is worth picking one up. I will grab one myself once they become available. And again, $22.99, April 1st, that's where you're gonna be able to pick it up. All right, next up, we got Wise90 says, happy Friday, Ron, gonna be frigid this weekend. It is, it is, it's gonna be a cold weekend, but then after that, hopefully we're gonna be in better shape, right? Should be in better shape after that, that's the that's goal. Next up, we got uh, Devin in the house, Demir91, he says, what's up, Ron? Looking forward to some good turf talk. In the next few weeks, let's plan a Friday so I can join your live. Okay, listen guys, you guys heard it first. It is it is March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Devin has committed to it. He said the next couple of weeks. So yeah, man, I'll, I'll hit you up on the gram and we will figure out a time, talking points, all that fun stuff. Would love to hear what you've been up to, and so you can you know you can drop some um, some cool some good knowledge on us as far as uh, as far as that goes. Da absolutely, would love to have you on the live stream. Um, I will reach out to you uh, this weekend after the show, and we'll um, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. All right, next up is Jay Will. Um, we have a super chat here. I'm going to get to that real quick from Jay Will. He says, "Any tips for centipede grass uh, down here in Florida for pre-emergent and fertilizer?" I just power raked uh, last week. So as far as pre-emergent, uh, prodiamine should be just fine for that. There shouldn't be an issue with that. As far as fertilizer, I don't know what the nitrogen requirements are for centipede grass, but the same, but here's the thing guys, and I, I, I put this in, I think I put in the description of all the fertilizers because I've been getting that question quite a bit too. Literally all these fertilizers, all of them, so everything you see here, Humic Max, the complete, the stress, so the granulars and the liquids, so like 901C, Bloomplex, the Greens Plus, Nutrisolve, Turfplex when we get it back in stock. Like all of these are safe for warm and cool season grass and centipede grass. You can use them on all grass types. The only thing you need to be uh, mindful of is application rate. Um, for Bermuda, Bermuda is a little bit more nitrogen hungry, so you can go a bit heavier on the rate. But the rate that I use when I apply these fertilizers is well below the... Um, the 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 conve what conventional wisdom says you need to use on Bermuda. Like most people will say, a pound of nitrogen once per month whenever the lawn is actively growing. I don't get near that. I, I'm I'm closer to the 0.7 uh, pounds of nitrogen on my lawn between a combination of granular and liquid. So if you were to were to use any of these, any of the the granulars, the rates that we have quoted in within the description. So you take like Humic Max, the rate that we have that we recommend here for this guy. Um, the suggested application rate, which is, is going to have you putting down half a pound of nitrogen um, over a thousand square feet. So even for your centipede lawn, this is going to be, that rate's going to be just fine. So both for Humic Max and for the other products, there's um, there's a, there's two options that, that, um, that Lebanon supplies. There's one for a 0.9 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. I don't use that rate. And on the right side here is the half a pound of nitrogen rate, which is the rate that I, I use for Humic Max and is also the rate that I recommend for these guys, for the complete and also for the stress. Same thing on this one, you look at the label, you've got a rate for 0 0.9 pounds of nitrogen, just under a pound, and then a rate for half a pound of nitrogen. So it um, just depends on what centipede grass calls for. You know what, we can probably look it up really quick. Uh, how much nitrogen does centipede grass need? Uh, uh, uh. Let's see, centipede uh, grass, there we go. Grass need, perfect, we'll ask the Google. Google says, so not very much, one to two pounds of, of nitrogen per year. So quite a bit less than Bermuda, about half, about half the requirements of Bermuda. So that half a pound per month, maybe even a little bit less than that, will be just fine for centipede. So, so there you go. So a little bit less than what, um, or half, literally half of what Bermuda calls for. So hope that helps, uh, Will. So um, for pre-emergent, prodiamine should work well for that. And then for fertilizer, any of the ones that we offer on the Golf Course Lawn Store, both the, the granulars and liquids will be good to go. It's really post-emergent herbicides. You gotta be careful when it comes to centipede grass. So you gotta be just more careful when it comes to post-emergent, pre-emergent and fertilizer, um, not so much. You're, you're, you're pretty much good to go. 
All right, so first of all, let me get a super chat here really quick, and then I will jump back into a, a comment here. So we've got Londat Official. What's going on, Londat Official? From Instagram saying, my man, what's up? What's going on, sir? Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you taking some time out of your Friday to come hang out in the show. I appreciate you as always. And then from Cedric G, dropping the big super, super chat. chat received. He says, I raised you, LG. It's Friday night and I just got paid. <laughs> I just got paid. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat, uh, Cedric. That is very, very generous. And let me just copy and just paste LG out here because I'm sure he's going to come back knowing him. And that way I don't have to go and find his sunshine emoji because he's he's got to be special like that. So Cedric G. And, and there we go, Cedric. Your name in lights, whatever that means uh, to you. <laughs> that means to you. Thank you so much for, the, uh, for all the love and support, sir. Really do appreciate the generous super chat. Thank you so, so much. And we'll see if LG decides to answer. You know, you know how he is. He, does, he hates losing. So we'll... We shall see. We shall see. All right, next up is Alexander Lee. He says, uh, just got my new to me True Cut C27. Once service, I'll be ready again for the pain. Nice, we gotta clap it up. Definitely, that's awesome. Congrats on that, Alex. Some new equipment, actually, you know what? Because you're my neighbor, we're gonna double clap it. Because we can. Congrats on the uh, the new equipment and UC27. Very, very cool, which is nice because true cuts are harder and harder to come by, man. I mean, ever since the, the, the company, I think they sold a company last year or whatever. And uh, ever since then, they've been, been pretty tough to come by. I mean, you can reach out to Lee at Real Rollers and ask him, but I believe it's, you know, as far as getting them, it's been, uh, it's been a bit of a challenge. So it's a good thing that you found one, uh, Alex. Next up is Oliver Rittem. He says, Ron, thank you for the soil test analysis. When is the best time to apply the products? Excellent question. So as far as when you should be fertilizing your lawn in the spring, when it's, you know, when the green fuzz is over the entire lawn, so when it's, you know, 60% green to where throughout the lawn it's, it's, largely, it's largely green um, or you're seeing green throughout, that is when I would introduce fertilizer. So for example, if we look at the Real Rollers Turf Park, like I would not be opposed to putting fertilizer down on that. I would not have a problem with fertilizing that at all. If you have, if your lawn looks looks like that, I would not be opposed to um, to introducing introducing some uh, some fertilizer. What I would say is for your first one, it, it depends. Again, it depends on what your soil test results say. But I am a fan, at least for your first app of the season, going with a with a, a, a slightly higher um, potash, a higher potassium fert. Um, and then you can transition to whatever whatever else you want to run. But I mean, really, once your lawn is green, once your lawn is greening up, it looks like what I just showed you there as an example. That's when you can begin feeding it. That's when you can begin fertilizing. So around here, especially given the cold weather we've been having lately, it's likely going to be end of this month, the first part of April, before you're doing granular fertilizer. You know, what I mean, some of you guys have already done it. Um, you know, I know some people that are closer to the, to the Gulf Coast have already done their granular fert. And now we get this cold snap and, you know, you know, it is what it is. But if you have not done it as yet, I would say give it a couple more weeks. Go ahead and get your products, get them all, have them all set to go. You know, go get on that, get on that David life where you're sitting there just ready, raring to go. You're loaded for bear. And then once we have, you know, the consistently warmer temperatures and the lawn is greening up, you can go out and uh, and do your fertilizer application. The only thing that I would do, you could do this time of year that I'm going to be doing this weekend is spraying liquids, right? So I'll be I'll be spraying the the carbon kit this weekend, like the release zero carbon kit, just a little little something for the lawn. Um, I'll, I'll be doing that. But as far as granulars, I like to wait until the lawn is, has woken up a bit more. Next up is Mr. Steve Jackson. He says, and David just got his divorce papers, LOL, oh, LOL, ready for the spring, the spring up and dominate the neighborhood. So yeah, so you making fun of David, you're saying David because of this, he's got his divorce papers? Not really, my man is just stocking up. I mean, and that's that's probably not gonna be it for the season. I mean, he's got liquids, he's probably okay, but as far as essential G, he'll probably be getting more of that and the same thing for his granular. He'll be getting more, you know, more granular fertilizer as well too, so. I wouldn't say that, that's not divorce papers, man. I mean, he didn't bring like a Porsche home. You know, that that could be divorce papers. It all depends, you gotta balance it, you know what I mean? If you go to Porsche, then she gets to go to Tiffany's, you know, or whatever her thing is. You gotta make sure you're, you're balancing it. It's, it's the problem, the problem arises when you're bringing home, you know, a bunch of, when you're on that Dwayne life, you know, Dwayne, um, Dwayne Long Care life, when you're, on, when you're on that life, we got like a bunch of different mowers and you know, you're not, you're not balancing it, then we have, we have issues. So as long as you are, you know, it's even, you're balancing it out, tends to be uh, tends to be okay. 
tends to work out just fine. I would not call that, uh, that uh, uh, this is not gonna result in divorce papers. I don't, I don't think that is, uh, that's worthy of divorce papers. The man is just prepared. Besides, you know, I'm sure even uh, his wife likely enjoys a nice looking lawn. She likes the compliments, loves being, you know, the neighbors saying, oh, your lawn looks so nice, it's so awesome. How does it, how does it do that? And this, that, and the other. So Dave is doing his work to make sure that happens, right? The lawn's not gonna cut itself, not gonna fertilize itself. All right, next up is Michael Carroll. He says, hi, Ron. Happy St. Paddy's Day from Martha's Vineyard. I just sent you my MySol test results. It recommended the Country Club 12024. Would you also um, recommend any liquid and essential G? Yeah, so I got your soil test results literally before the show came, started, uh, Michael. I already emailed you back, but it, it was in a PDF, and the software that I'm using uh, gets angry if I try and share PDFs. It has to be images, and I get a chance to format it nicely. But yes, uh, the, I, I agree with what the, the MySol recommendations, like they were spot on as far, what they rec as, far as what they, they are telling you to apply. The 12024 for the um, for your granular is a great option. And then as far as liquids, you could supplement that with Nutrizolve. So his results, um, so as far as I can show you here on the show. So if we go to the lawn fertilizers, the 12024, which is what it recommended. So this guy, this doing all the heavy lifting. And then as far as your liquids go, you could supplement that with Nutrizolve to fill in if I remember correctly, like your boron and your boron, copper, and zinc were low, I believe, and the granular granular does not have any of those micronutrients, whereas Nutrizolve does. So Nutrizolve along with the twelve zero twenty four, and you're going to be good to go. As far as essential G, the answer to that is always yes. P pretty much, if the question is should I apply essential G, here are the re here are the, the scenarios where you should not apply it. If the ground is frozen or there's snow on the ground, so some of you guys will try and be technical, be like, well, it's not really frozen, there's just snow on it. The snow's gonna melt, so I can apply it. So if there's snow on the ground or the ground's frozen, you should not apply Essential G. But that's true for any granular product. You shouldn't be applying granulars to frozen soil or, or snow-covered soil. Outside of that, you can apply it. You can literally apply Essential G year-round depending on where in the country uh, you are. So if I lived in Georgia, like in, for me in Georgia, we have um, relatively mild winters. That's what I've been doing. I apply Essential G regularly. Every month, some goes down on my lawn. If you lived in Florida, it would be year round as as well too. And if you're up north, then likely it would be this time of year through November, November time frame, depending on whenever it gets cold and ground freezes and it starts to snow, in which case you would cease any granular applications. So yes, the, the 12 zero twenty four is a good good option. Nutrizolve to help sweeten the deal and then Essential G every month as your budget allows for it. I apply it every month and that's that's what I would recommend for you. It's a great product. So it's like it, literally like making an investment in your soil. It's great stuff. Next up is Kevin D. Jones. He says here, he says, at Lee of Rerollers, um, how have the True Cuts been holding up with the new manufacturer and champion engines? Uh, Lee's not on, so I'm guessing he's gonna respond to you. Uh, actually, here we said, he just replies. It's been tough getting inventory, but the True Cuts we sold last year have been well, no complaints to my knowledge. So there you go. But yeah, if you guys wanna have a sidebar with Lee, you got him here in the, in the live stream. So feel free to, to bug him and say, hey, you know, what parts, inventory, ask him about the uh, the spanch, the spanner, the spanner wrench. <laughs> It's a cool name, Spanch, and uh, yeah. So he's here. Feel free. I think he'll stick around for a while and um, and and do what you can against. Do what you can to, to help him with that. All right, you got uh, Lawn Dad official. He's. I got a question about how to treat Poanua in fescue. Mm. Um. So to prevent it, to well, if it's if it's, I'm trying to think for for a post emergent, like tenacity will help suppress it. Tenacity will help suppress it as far as if it's not there yet. If it's um, if it's on the um, on the if it's already growing in your lawn, that's a that's a good question. I mean, there's there's a product that they that they were that Devin was testing out. I think on golf courses called Poa Cure that is supposed to be like the bee's knees, you know, the like the alpha and omega of taking care of Poa in cool season turf. But I be, I don't believe that is available for residential lawns as yet. I don't believe so. If, you, if for anything other than Poa um, lawn data official then um, I, what I would say is tenacity. I mean, a three-way will work, but um, also, do I have some here? I do not, I don't think I have any on my, on my thing. Tenacity and um, and sedge hammer. So sedge hammer for sedges in cool season turf, and then tenacity 
as your um, as your post emergent for 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 cool season for cool season lawns. It's, Tennessee is a good is a good product. I mean, there's there's lots of different. It depends on what you're targeting, obviously, but there's tons of different products you can use for um, for post emergent um, and in cool season cool season lawn. Again, a three way can work. It just depends on what you're what you're targeting. But Tennessee and Sedgehammer are also are also good as well. Um, let me see. So the Bermuda lawn scientist saying image. No, I would not use image on cool season, cool season lawns. It's I know on on rye. I believe the label says not to use it on on rye grass. I believe all cool season lawns you should not be using image. It's more of a it's more of a, a warm season uh, post emergent herbicide. Check the check the label on that. Double check me on that. But I'm I'm pretty certain that's correct for image. You don't want to put that on rye grass or um, or any. Really, any cool season grass. That's really that's really more for us. That's more for us for the Bermuda with the zoysia. And that's not for uh, is that is not for you guys. So um, thanks for the question, Lawn Dad. Official, yeah. Send them to the uh, the the weed control section on the golf course lawn store because what we do have there is a there's a filter and you're not going to see this because you're not on you're not on the live stream on YouTube. But if you go to you want to know what you can use on your on cool season and warm season grass. If you go to the shop and you go to Weed Killer and you use the um, warm season filter, um, which I can find it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I know it's here. Warm season grass. You click on that. It's going to show you all the warm season products. And then if you have cool season grass, you can click on the cool season filter right here and it'll show you all the cool season products. So there you go. That will help you know what you, what's good to apply or what, you, what what is safe to apply on your particular grass type, assuming, of course, that you use the correct uh, application rates. So use the filters on the on the left. We have for for cool season grass, warm season grass, post emergent herbicides, pre emergent. Got uh, got all the different categories that I can think of as far as uh, questions that I've gotten on that in that space. So uh, go to the store and uh, and and check that out. If there's something that's missing that you think it should be there, let me know and I will do my best to add it. All right, next up, next up is James Slay, James Sale, James Sale. He says, killing the Bermuda is going to take warm soils and several applications. Yeah, so it's, you want temps to be warmer for sure. But I'll tell you, James, uh, last year I tested a, a combination. So 41% glyphosate on a product called Eraser. And that combined with Fusilade 2 was mwah, against Bermuda. It was awesome, awesome results. I mean, it, again, like first week or so, first few days, you don't really see a whole lot, but it killed the Bermuda that was in my mulch beds and it stayed dead. So a lot of times you'll use like say glyphosate by itself and it'll knock the Bermuda back and then, you know, it'll it'll knock it back and then some will, will, will still come back. This combination, Fusilade and glyphosate, I applied it one time and I mean, you guys that have watched my YouTube story, I can't show you my phone, but have watched the, my YouTube stories, uh, you know, throughout the season last year and even over the, the, the winter month, I've shown you guys how um, that area has has progressed and that single application of Fusilade 2 mixed with glyphosate did, a, did an absolute number on Bermuda. So you can get rid of Bermuda in a single app, uh, but to your point, um, if you're using, depending on what you're using, if you're using just, uh, just glyphosate, it might take a couple of rounds to get rid of it. So thanks for chiming in. I appreciate the uh, the feedback. Next up is Shelby Amos. He says, at some point, the crowd wants to see an uh, an encore after warm season of you overseeding with rye Kentucky bluegrass and create a series on it. Thoughts? Don't ban me now, Ron. Hang on, where's, where's my ban button? I gotta, you know, I, I told you there's a couple of things that'll get you banned and like that, one of those things. I must mess with you. No, I, I, as far as doing that, I'm I'm, I am closer to doing it than not doing it this year. Here's the, here's the problem. Every time I I really start thinking about it and, and mustering up the courage to consider doing an overseed this fall, you know, I get online, I see, you know, one, I, I, I see the lawns where it doesn't go well. And then you see the horror stories that people run into um, from not getting rid of it properly. And that this, the, the problems you have with Bermuda not coming out of dormancy well, stunning the Bermuda, slowing down that green up. But I guess it's worth doing at least once, right? It's worth trying at least one time. Famous last words. It's worth trying at least one time. So that's, I'm, I'm thinking about it. It would be fun as far as content during the winter. It's gonna mean that I'm gonna have to get out there and mow during when it's cold out, which I'm not a, not thrilled about that. But it'd be cool. It'd be cool to do, right? To throw down some, uh, it, it's more than likely gonna be ryegrass. I'm not gonna do Kentucky bluegrass. If it's, if anything, it's gonna be, it's gonna be ryegrass if I, um, if I do the overseed. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We shall see. I got my pre emergent down really early this year. So by August, September timeframe, I should be good to go to be able to get a, um, 
a ryegrass application, then not, the, the thing that's gonna happen now is then I'm gonna be dealing with POA, right? Because if I oversee with ryegrass, I can't use, if I oversee it, I can't use spectacle. So that's gonna be a fun challenge. It's gonna be fun controlling weeds or keeping weeds out of my lawn um, with uh, once, it's, once it's cool season. Could be a fun challenge, we'll see. There's still plenty of time to decide. Still plenty of time to decide. All right, next up, let me see if there's any other comments here um, from the Instagram. You guys are having a good a good sidebar and uh, talking about as Planus Oxystrobin. Cool, man, yeah, Londad official, knock yourself out. Looks like you, you got it, you're doing your thing. Have fun, knock yourself out. All right, um, so hopefully that helps, Shelby. I will, I will take it under heavy consideration. I am more leaning towards doing it than not doing it. So how's that? It's not a promise, but it's something I'm, I'm seriously considering. Next up is uh, LG. He says, LG celebrates 14 months of membership. Hi there, thank you so much, LG. And LG has also dropped a super chat. So he has seen Cedric's uh, super chat and he has raised it by $1 and one cent. Not to be petty, not that we're being petty at all or anything like that, but uh, but yeah. Thank you so much, LG, for the super chat. Let me go. Super chat received. He says, bring it, you got paid, but maybe I kind of sort of robbed my grandma while she was watching. Uh, reruns of Lawrence Welk. Uh, she's been working longer than both of us, bruh. All right. So there we go. Um, so LG, your name in lights for whatever that means to you. I'm sure uh, Lee is kicking back and getting, getting a good laugh out of this or having a good time. But thank you so much for the super chat, sir. Let me find your name here. Find out where you are. And there we go. And it is done. Thank you so much for the super chat, sir. Again, your name in lights for whatever that means to you, which apparently is a whole lot, right? So thank you for the super chat. I really do appreciate all of the love and support. All the love and support. All right, so let me speed up here and uh, so we can get through the, maybe try and keep the show to three hours tonight. We'll try that, all right? All right, next up is um, Mr. Tom V, Tom V. He says, hey y'all, what granular spreader, fertilizer spreadings do folks here recommend? Don't want to spend $300, uh, but thinking close to the $200 range for something decent can push this around 15,000 square feet. Okay, Tom, so here's the thing. I will give you my recommendation for a granular, granular fertilizer spreader. I'm gonna tell you, I am biased because I, I got one of these and I have not looked back. I like it so much that I had one and then I bought a second one. And what I'm talking about is the Earthway, the Earthway 2050P. Now, it's a great spreader, comes largely, comes assembled, you literally have to like fold the handles out, like tighten the wing nuts, put a little bit of Loctite on the wing nuts and you're good to go. But now let me show you what I am referring to, why I like this guy so much. This is worth bringing it up on the screen if I can find the link. All right, so there we go. Got it right here. And here we go. All right, so if we go over to the Amazon, you will see the Earthway 2050P. Now here's the thing, you said $200, but can we, I mean, well, you don't wanna spend 300, but can we, can I, can I get like 35 bucks more, stretch it a little bit? If so, this is what I would go with. This is what I have. I like this for a couple of reasons. One, you've got the air filled tires, which make it a lot more comfortable to use. It rides along the uh, the, the the surface a lot better. Um, it's it's a very well built built spreader. I mean, I had my first one for. Let me see. When did I get the new one? I got it last year. Either last year or the year before. I did all runs together. I, I had it for at least three years. At least th at least three years, and I bought another one of these. It's got a good eighty pound um, hopper. So as far as being able to put you know your an entire bag of fertilizer in there or essential G or whatever you're spreading you're good to go. But here is the reason why I like the spreader so much, right? It's a great spreader, but the biggest reason why I'm a huge fan of it is whenever you go over here and you look at lawn fertilizer, right? Take for example, like Humic Max. When you look at Lebanon's label on this product, you will see spreader settings for the Lebanon Turf um, spreader, the Anderson spreader, the Earthway Rotary. So this, this is your spreader calibrations for Humic Max, Gandhi, Lely, um, Pench Malls, a bunch of other ones, Spiker, Vicon. You do not see Scott's on there, right? So as far as being a great prosumer spreader, um, 
it's I, I'm a fan of the Earthway because you because um like for Syngenta's products you will you'll find a, a spreader setting for the Earthway, whereas you will not for the Scots. Now because I know a lot of you guys have Scots on the store, we have also taken the liberty of adding spreader settings for the Scott spreaders, right? So you're covered. You don't have to worry about that. I mean it's not on the bag, but if you go to the store, the the descriptions, you will find settings for Scott's um spreaders for all the products we carry. So for the fertilizers, for the fungicides, insecticides, all that. Um, but but I, I'm showing you this just to say that once you start stepping into the professional level products, right? Like you're gonna find, you're gonna find that a lot of the spreaders that you, or not a lot, most of the spreaders that you find at like Home Depot or any of the big big box stores, they are not gonna be on the um, on the bags for those for those products. Whereas, you know, if you get like an Earthway, it's a good prosumer type spreader. You know what I mean? It's not like something that a guy that's out um, running, doing a bunch of lawns every day wouldn't necessarily use. You probably want a Lesco for that, something a little heavier duty. But for something that you're you're not going to wear out, that um, that that and that does a great job. That you're going to find settings for it on pretty much all the products you're going to want to use. It's a it's a great option. The only thing that you that will ever break on this spreader that I have come across is, and I can't show you here because it's not, I don't know if they've got, they don't have a close-up of it. Um, yeah, I can, I can kind of show you this. So if you look here on the right, if you look at the tires, there's a cotter pin. There's a cotter pin that goes through the axle and into like through the tire and through the axle. Like that is like a wear item. So once every 18 months, once a year, you just call it, once every 18 months, you can just replace that. So just you can unbend it, take it out and throw a new one in. If it breaks, you'll know because the, the, the spreader will become really easy to push and um, it's not gonna throw out any product. But that's the only, that's really the only thing you ever really have to replace. So get yourself a, you know, a handful of cotter pins. They don't cost anything. And, you know, once a year, if you want, you can get out there and you can, you can replace that. I mean, I just wait till mine breaks and then I replace it. So that's the, that's really the only thing. Other than that, the, like the gearbox has been bulletproof. The, the, all the, you know, the, 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 the spreader setting, the, um, the knob has been, been great. I mean, it's just overall, it's been a very good spreader. So that is what I would go with. You want my opinion on a good spreader for spreading grander products. So can you, can you tell I like Earthways? That's what I would go with, the 2050P, 2050P. Okay, next up is Jason Harrison. He says, if you're invested in the Ryobi 18 volt line, there's a half gallon fogger that works great with the Miramichi Green Pest Control. Yeah, that's a good point, Jason. So the Miramichi Green Pest Control, you can apply it with a sprayer, like a backpack sprayer, like the Art of Mastery sprayer or Ryobi or whatever you happen to have. Um, but you, but as far as getting the lot, the greater application rate and the longer, the better coverage, the, you really want to use a fogger if at all possible. So if you're doing like shrubs or along the sides of your house or gutters or patio furniture, or anything like that, like you, this product really shines when you use it with a fogger. And again, you can use a backpack sprayer too. If I were going to use a backpack sprayer, what I would use is the, uh, the foliar tip. So let me get over here. I would use this guy like this one, the same one you use for spraying liquid uh, liquid fertilizers because this is a, it's, it's a finer droplet. It's gonna dry faster and then you can re-enter the area. That's that's another nice thing about this. Whereas some of the, you know, the, the more synthetic ones like by, like compared to like by Fenthrin and, and just other synthetic um, insecticides, uh, literally with this, you can spray it and once it dries, you can re-enter the area. That's the, the only thing you gotta wait for. And, and the only reason we really need to wait is so you don't get like the oils and get the stuff on your clothing and whatnot. But you can spray patio furniture. If you guys are in Florida, and um, like a lot of the people have Florida and they have pools. So you guys will have like an indoor, like your, your, your pool will be outside, but you have like this, this netting that you guys build to keep like bugs away. You can spray that netting as well in that slide. Um, I didn't show you guys that, but in that, um, that presentation that Miramichi shared with me, they talked about that as far as the residual effects you get when you spray like netting with it, like how, how well it works. It works to both repel and kill bugs that it's designed to target. So as far as like for, your lawn parties and just keeping bugs away from your home, the annoying ones, it's hard to beat uh, the pest control. And to Jason's point, it really um, works, really shines whenever you use a fogger with it. But if you got a sprayer, just make sure you use a fine droplet tip and you're, uh, you're good to go. It will work just fine. All right, next up is Mr. Cedric G. He says, Bigger on, just checking in this rainy Friday evening. Turf's up, furt down, stripe action forever. And I smashed the like button. Thank you so much, Cedric. Really do appreciate all the love and support. Guys, if you guys are in the show and, and you're enjoying the live stream, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button ever so gently, it costs absolutely nothing. It's a free way to support the channel. 
sends good vibes to the YouTube algorithm to tell more folks to come out here and hang out with us lawn crazies. And uh, it, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would do that. So also gives me a chance to take a sip of my lemonade and um, and sweet tea. I'm so used to saying lemonade, but it's really, it's uh, Arnold Palmer. I've been drinking lemonade forever. I'm, I'm just used to saying that. And while I look for the next comment. Oh. All right. Uh, so next up is Shelby Amos. He says, can the Miramichi pest control be applied in my backpack sprayer with say the carbon kit or any fertilizer and nutrients? So you could, but I mean, if it depends on the use case, it depends on what you're gonna do with it. So if you're spraying, let's say you have like white flies all throughout your lawn, you have mosquitoes all throughout your lawn and you're spraying your lawn with it, then yes, I would not be opposed to doing that. But if you're spraying like patio furniture or you know, or your patio or the sides of the house, I wouldn't spray the carbon kit or fertilizer or anything like that because it's, just, it's a waste. Like that stuff's designed to go in the soil. So if you're making an application where you're strictly spraying just the, like your lawn, just your lawn, and you want to put some of the um, the pest control in the tank and you're just, again, you're spraying the lawn, I, that would be just fine. There would be uh, there'd be no issues with that. As far as application rates, you can, um, you can go, it goes from four ounces per gallon up to four, up to eight ounces per gallon. So just depending on where you are, you can start, you know, you can start at the four ounce and then ramp up. Or if you're dealing with an, uh, like an, an infestation, you can start at eight ounces and, you know, you get even, even greater effectiveness. So, but yes, uh, yes, uh, Shelby, you know, asterisk, caveat, if you are spraying your lawn, do not put the, do not mix the carbon kit with it and go spray patio furniture. I mean, you know that, I know you know that, but I, just, I have to say it. So if you're only spraying your lawn, there's no reason, there, there'd be no no issue with doing that, but I would just limit it to spraying um, plants, spraying your spraying your lawn. It's a good point, good question. This, and again, that's another big benefit of liquids in the sense that you can, you can mix and match a bunch of different products and you can spray them all at once. Uh, Doug350Z says, can you mix a celeprin and the Miramichi Green Pest Control? I've never done that. I've never mixed the uh, I've never mixed a celeprin with the um with the pest control. I've never done that one. I, I'm trying to think of why you could or couldn't. I can't see a reason why you couldn't. I've just never done it. You know what? It'd be cool to try out. You know, we'll we can um I'll talk to Miramichi about it. I, I don't I can't see a reason why it would not work. Um and because I still have to do my celeprin app this year. I can, uh, we can do that because what you would do, I guess, what problem would you solve by doing that? What's how, what problem would you solve by mixing the pest control along with the celebrant? So the pest control has control, has, um, uh, you know, um, it controls mosquitoes, white flies. So a lot of above ground insects like chinch bugs, those, those, those types of guys. So if you have that in your lawn, that's what, what it would take care of. And then a celebrant is more for your turf caterpillars, grubs, and you know, the, the bugs that eat your, uh, eat your grass. So there is an argument to say, I could see an argument for, for, for mixing both of them together. I've just never done it. So uh, yeah, because that's not something to do mine this year. We'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll have a chat with Marimichi to make sure that they don't foresee any issues. And if not, why not? I still got to do my cell app and uh, I'll, we'll film it and we can see the results. I think it'll be just fine. Should work out just fine. Should work out just fine. I'm trying to think of as far as application. Yeah. As far as application race. Yeah. That, that shouldn't be a problem at all. The one negative, the one negative of doing that though, Doug 350Z, is that whereas when you use a fogger, it covers up to 7,500 square feet because it goes a lot further. When you use a when you use a backpack sprayer, it's around 1,500 square feet. So there is that, but I, that's fine. I can do the math and and um, just make sure that I am I'm mixing it at a rate for a thousand square feet and be good to go. Yeah, make, be a cool experiment. Why not? All right, next up is Andrew Phillips. He says, hi, Ron, checking in from Texas. Soil temps went down and cooler temps for several more days. Not complaining. Just putting down liquid bio stems now as the lawn is not quite ready. That's a great plan. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Uh, Andrew, you know, wait on your granulars. Wait until the lawn is, you know, look, how, wait until your lawn looks how the, the real rollers turf park looks. That it's largely greening up and then you can introduce your granular fertilizer. But if you want to get out there and spray, you know, your, your carbon kit, your liquid bio stimulants, no problem with that at all. No issues with that at all. Let's see if we have any questions here from Instagram. Nothing, uh, nothing else, nothing else. All right, looks good. Looks good to go. Looks good to go. Yep, all right, nothing, nothing, nothing else from there. All right, next up we have Juan Enriquez. He says, hey, let me get you up on the screen here. If it works, uh, it says, hey, when can I start putting down fertilizer in Gwinnett County? So your weather is just like mine, uh, Juan. 
I would say um, start doing your granular fertilizer April 1st. So the beginning of next month is when you can do your granular because we, we got a, a cool, a, a cold weather snap here that has slowed down the green up. I imagine that by the first week of April, you'll be good to go to start fertilizing your lawn. So go ahead and, you know, the, what one thing you can do between now and then is get your soil test, get your soil test, get your results so you know what kind of fertilizer to is, is the best fit for your particular soil. And then you get that ordered, have it all set to go. And then when April 1st hits, which I think is a weekend, is April 1st a weekend? It happens to be a Saturday, almost like that was planned, right? It happens to be a Saturday. You can be out there and dropping your granular fertilizer to start the season. So, uh, so yeah, give it a couple more weeks because of the, the recent cold weather that we've been having. Next up is G Free. He says, hey, Ron, and hashtag Stripe Action Gang. Happy Friday. Thanks for coming to hang out, uh, G Free. I appreciate you. And uh, we, have a good, we have a good one here. A good question here from the Bermuda Lawn Scientist. Can I core aerate my, while my Bermuda is still in dormancy? I have done it before. A Bermuda lawn scientist, but I'll tell you, there's really, from to me anyway, there's not a ton of upside. Like if you want to wait until, if you want to wait really until April, if you want to aerate before your first fertilizer application, so the lawn is beginning to green up and you want to aerate then, you can. I have aerated as late as um, into the summer and I've aerated as early as early March, right? So like even before like now, like the first week of March, I've done it, I've done both both ends of the spectrum. Nothing bad happened from aerating early, but the lawn just looked like like a porcupine and had been rolling around on it for a lot longer because it wasn't the, the lawn wasn't even out of dormancy as yet. So there's not unless you're going to go out and um, you're about to start fertilizing or doing a lot of granular inputs. I would just wait. You know, I mean, essential G. I mean, you don't have to aerate before you apply that. I would say that if you're if you are, um, I'm guessing you have Bermuda based on where you are. And you said you're 30% greened up. Yeah, so you're 30% greened up. Give it a bit more time. You know, if you want to wait until the first week of April when you do your first granular fertilizer application and you want to time your aeration along with that, that wouldn't be a problem at all. Again, there's no there's no negative really or no issue, no negative that I've encountered really for doing it earlier other than appearance, but there's also not a lot of benefit either. So that's why I would say wait until you're about to do your fertilization to uh, to get your aeration done. A lot of people will wait until May time frame, May, June to do any kind of aeration in their lawn. I'm, I tend to do mine earlier in the season, but uh, not so early as early March, whenever the lawn is dormant. So hope that helps. Great question. I'm sure others had it. And if you need anything else, uh, let me know. Next up is Eric Leon. Eric Leon. He says, Hey Ron, now that you're team Allen, I am, listen, I am not team Allen. I am team real, real mower. Real mower, real I mean, team, real rollers, team, real mowers. I am team all things real mowing, and really, I'm team all all great looking turf. Even if you cut it with a rotary mower, if it looks good, I'm good with it. I don't care. You got a good rotor, you got a rotary mower. As long as you're cutting it, cutting your grass often, and making it look nice, I'm down with it. He says, but now that you're team Allet, have you begun collecting your glass? Clip, uh, have you been begun collecting your grass clippings? Cannot speak tonight for some reason. Yes. So starting, when did I get the C27? Last summer. Last summer. Since then, I have been collecting my grass clippings. I do love the way the lawn looks due to that. The thing, the negative that I don't like about collecting my, my grass clippings is every week you got to get rid of them, right? Because I don't have a, anywhere to like generate, to create like a compost pile or anything on my lawn or in, on the property. So I have to get rid of them. So that's the one negative to it. He says, I know that they are fanatical about it. You are correct. You know, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Roland gave me the full speech about, you know, don't, you know, don't keep, don't throw clippings in the lawn all the time. And finally, he says, I just got the Sterling 51 today. Got to clap it up for that. Congrats on the new mower. I filled up the bin with four scarifying passes. Yeah, and you're just getting started. You're not going to be, you're not even done yet. You'll be surprised the more you do it, the more is going to come out. And eventually it gets to the point where you'll be able to turf rake the entire lawn. Like I can turf rake my entire back lawn and I won't even fill up, I won't even get to like a third of the, the catcher, the grass catcher. So there's really not a lot of thatch in my lawn. And some of the benefits I saw from that, one is apparent, it looks awesome. Like the stripes are insane. There's that. But also as far as uh, disease problems, right? So like last year, in, traditionally in the summer, I um, you know I may have like some spots of a little bit, of, a little bit of large patch may may show up here and there. I had none of that last year, and I attribute it to the fact that you know there that spongy layer that can hold on to a lot of water was gone on my lawn once I started 
using the uh, the C27. I'm sorry, it was gone, but it was it was it was under good management. There wasn't excessive thatch. We'll just put it that way. And I had no no issues with that. So the the color was better. The stripes were better. There was no disease issues. And um, the the only negative is that you have to dispose of the clippings. So you have to find a, you have to find a way to be able to do that. But outside of that, there's not really any. Um, there's a, the upsides outweigh the negatives, is guess what I'm trying to say. Congrats on the mower, you're really gonna like it. Uh, definitely keep me posted, man. What, uh, if you're still here, Eric, what cartridges did you get? So I know you got the Scarifier, it sounds like. Um, what else did you get? You got the, obviously a reel, but did you get um, Verticutter? Did you spring for the Verticutter as well? That would be the one to get as well. That If I had to pick, if I had to say the two cartridges you wanna get when you buy a Sterling are the Turf Rake and a Verticutter. Those, those two are the ones that you, should want to go with. All right, next up is Mazama Blue. He says, happy Friday. Happy uh, St. Patrick's Day, Ron. Um, regarding Vashon's question on pest treatments, any effect on uh, soil beneficial bacteria? Um, no, not none that I'm aware of, Mazama. It's not like, um, so like Acelaprin and also the, um, like the Miramichi Green Pest Control, as far as, um, it's not like fungicide. Like we're applying a fungicide to you, your soil is really hard on the microbial activity in um, in your soil. Hence why we sell this biospectrum, right? To help restore that. Um, but um, but yeah, as far as the insecticides, as, it, it depends on which insecticide you're using, but as far as the Celeprin and the Miramichi Green Pest Control, um, no, none none that I'm aware of. Again, it's nothing like the nothing like using a fungicide on your lawn. It did not, the effects won't be anything anything like that. All right, next up is uh, Real Rollers. He says, LG, you stud. Ron and I were talking about you today at the shop. You are Mr. Consistent. You are. He, he is, man. He is that guy. He is, LG is that guy. LG is that guy. All right, uh, let's see here. Next up, uh, LG is saying, Real Rollers, uh, glad to see you. I was a topic of conversation uh, at the shop. And then we got, ooh, we got John Perry in the in the live stream tonight. Loncology, what's going on, John? He says, uh, tuned in to listen on my way to the airport. Your tech skills blow my mind. Quality show, my friend. Uh, I appreciate that, man. It's taken a long time to get here. If you want to see how it used to look, go back to the live stream, uh, the from 20, we're going to year three, 2020, I don't know, the years run together. It was 2020, I think whatever it started, 2020 I think was when, I, was when I started doing this and it looked absolutely horrible. Um, now it's now it looks less horrible and I just keep trying to make it better and better. I got some ideas for some other things that I'd like to do to spruce things up a bit more, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how things things go. Like, 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 like most things in life, um, you know, you want you want to do a whole lot of stuff, but there's also time and you know budget as far as you know deciding whether it's it's worth all the um, all the work that would go into it. So we'll see. But I appreciate the kind words. I appreciate you coming chiming in on the uh, on the live stream. And uh, thanks, man. I really really do appreciate that. You know, John, I think you have. I'm not sure if you're still here. You have one of those. Um, what is it? The what's the, the really expensive the push the push mower the Hudson. What's it called? Hudson Star. You have one of those. At some point, I got to get your opinion on it. Because people ask me about it all the time, saying, oh, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. What do you, what's your thoughts on the you know, the Hudson Star? I've never even seen one personally. I think you have some content on it, but I'd like to know, now that you've had it for a while, what your thoughts are on uh, on that mower. I have to like ping you on Instagram or, or on, on, sorry, on, uh, on Facebook and, and get your thoughts on the matter. Because I believe you have one of them. I think you do. Appreciate it, man. All right, next up is Dalvin Larry. He says, hey Ron, I rec received all my products. Thanks for the for the help. Five stars for the Golf Course Lawn Store and Mary Michi Green. Yeah, no worries, man. Yeah, so what Dalvin was talking about is we, we shipped some products to him and you know FedEx and um, or the, 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 the shippers sometimes decide they're gonna send stuff to Antarctica, South America, over to Asia, back to South America before they, they get things to where they're supposed to go. And of course, I, it, it really irritates me that when that happens because I don't like it when my stuff doesn't show up when it's supposed to show up. But it all got sorted out. It eventually got to him, and I'm glad that you're good to go. So, no worries at all, Dalvin. Happy you're all squared away. As always, if you need anything, let me know. Next up is uh, Jean uh, Jeanine Marie. She says, "Thank you for sharing all your knowledge. I'm in Zone Five A. I'll be putting in a new lawn this spring. Nice, nice. That sounds like sounds like a fun project. Now, are you doing sod or seed or what are we, what are we doing here? Like, what's the uh, what's the plan for?" the new lawn uh, this this season, Janine. That uh, sounds like a fun a fun project, fun project. Uh, let's see here. So the Bermuda's Lawn Scientist is, is a comment. He says, how aggressive can I use a Scarifier cartridge on the Sterling 51 while dormant? Also, 
uh, have the verticutter and a 10 blade reel. Yeah, so as far as how aggressive, I, the most aggressive that I set mine up is two mil, two millimeters above the surface. So when this time of year, when the lawn is dormant, you don't even need to get that aggressive. You could set it at like four mil, six mil above the surface. Again, you don't want the, the, the spring loaded fingers getting down into the soil. And just, just do that while it's dormant. And then once the lawn is greened up, if you wanna go, you're gonna drop it down by a little bit, you can, you can do that. So start at like six mil and then just slowly work your way down. That's what I would, uh, I would recommend um, the Remedial Lawn Scientist. That would be my thoughts on the matter. No, no, there's no need. It's not like scalping. I guess is what I'm trying to say. You don't need to get, you don't need to go really aggressive and try and get it all done at once because you're not going to be able to get it all done at once. You could set, you could set a turf rate to where it is literally, you know, going, uh, you know, it's touching the dirt and you're still not going to get all the debris out on, on a single pass. So it's better to set it higher. It's less trauma. It's less um, stress on the turf. And just by doing it a little bit and often, you're going to, you're going to slowly reduce the amount of thatch to, to manageable levels in your lawn and get all the benefits um, of, 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 of turf raking. So don't, don't take a, something that's a good thing and make it bad by going too aggressive with it. So that would be my thoughts on the matter. All right, next up is Mike D. Mike D. He says, um, I have 2.419 and my neighbor's yard has common Bermuda. Wow, that's not going to be fun. Neighbor's grass is encroaching into my yard. How do I win the battle so I can keep my Tifway 419? A physical barrier? There's not a whole lot you can do, Mike. Um, I wish I had better news for you, but um, to my knowledge, and it may have changed, but as, as to the extent of my knowledge, there is not a selective herbicide that will kill common Bermuda, but not kill the hybrid. And really, when I say a barrier, not just um, like pavers, like you're gonna need to go really like eight inches, eight inches beneath the surface. Like you're gonna have to put like, a, if you could take like a, like a, I don't know, like an eight inch barrier that's, that's above the soil and then like go, extends to eight inches beneath the soil, that's gonna be, that's gonna do a lot for slowing down it encroaching in. But uh, it's, it, a physical barrier is really gonna be your best bet for, for managing it. I mean, even by doing that, I don't know that you're gonna be able to keep it completely out, but, um, but yeah, that's that's a tough one, man. It's just not um, that there's not really an easy way to get rid of common Bermuda in hybrid Bermuda. And how did that happen? How do you have 419? Your neighbor has common. Your your home is built like I guess uh, several years apart, or 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 what? That's um that's that's weird. It's weird that the, that the that the builder would do would do common in one and then 419 in the lot right next to it. That's um interesting. But yeah, a physical barrier is going to be your best bet. And uh, yeah, I wish I had a better answer for you, but there's just not, to my knowledge, there's not really a selective um, herbicide that will get rid of one and not damage the other. He says, Ron, my break isn't long enough to stick around, but I want to say hi and leave a question for me to watch in the replay. Well, there you go. You left a question and you got an answer as well. Good stuff. All right, next up is Mr. Robert Wallace. Mr. Clemson is in the house. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Just want to let you know I introduced one of my neighbors to Primo last year, and he said he's definitely going to use it this year. That's what I always say, man. You know, the problem with Primo, it's one of those things. Primo Max, what he's talking about is, is this uh, plant growth regulator, which we're not too far off on this, or mm, six weeks out or thereabouts before we can start doing Primo. And the best way I can talk, I could describe it is there's life before Primo Max and there's life after Primo Max. Like once you start using growth regulator on your lawn, you are going to wonder why you waited so long. And the thing is, it's not, you know, especially for anyone that's watching the show, it's not really a big deal to do it because most of the people on here are out spraying your lawns at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. And you can just toss a little bit of Primo in the tank with your liquid fertilizer that you're putting down or buy some that you're putting down. And away, to, and away you go. You know, I mean, it's not, it's literally like no more effort um, because it's a liquid. You can spray it along with everything else. And there's there's tons of benefits. Uh, you know, if you're interested in finding out why Primo is awesome and why I'm such a big fan of like growth regulator in general, if you look at our blogs, you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store and then go to blog, you will see this article from a couple of weeks ago, which talks about how plant growth regulation can make your lawn thicker and greener. It talks about what PGRs are, the benefits of using PGR, video on PGR, like one of the many videos I have on PGR, when you should apply PGR, talks about Primo Max, talks about the active ingredient, 
And then it gives you a, a text that tells you how to apply it, what kind of spray tips to use, um, whether or not you should use marker dye, things you can mix along with it, a cool hack to get, help you get the best out of using Growth Regulator, and then how to avoid tip burn, right? So this is it's, this literally will take you five minutes to read, and it's, it's packed full of a lot of a lot of knowledge that'll help you get a great result when, with spraying uh, Plant Growth Regulator on your lawn. A lot of people are intimidated by it. It's really not hard to use, and again, I, I wrote an article that is like, I wrote an article that I would want to read that, because I don't like, kind of like my content, other than live stream, of course, like my, my, my normal YouTube content, I don't want content to be any longer than it needs to be, and I don't want blog posts or articles to be any longer than they need to be. They need to be long enough to answer the question, but not any longer. So, uh, you know, everything that's in here is valuable. Feel free to check it out if you want something to read that, uh, that will answer, you know, everything you need to know about getting a great result with growth regulators in your lawn. And for those of you guys in the chat, I will post that in there. So, Check that out and uh, feel free, Robert, to share that with your neighbor if he just wants to read up and wants to learn more about PGR and why it is awesome. Sounds like he's already he's already a believer, though. Sounds like you've already done a good job in uh, indoctrinating him into the religion of the plant growth regulator. All right, uh, JB21 says, big box store pre-emergent. I don't know. I'm sure Scott's has a product. I forget what it was, what was the, the pre-emergent that Scott's... Um, that Scott's he puts in their their stuff. Um, I don't. Know, I mean, any of the any of the pre. Just look look at the label. The problems with a lot of the big box stores is um, products or the 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 their pre emergences. They're often um, bagged as weed and feed products. So when you look at the label, look for active ingredients like prodiamine or dithiapyr. Prodiamine, dithiapyr, and it, I'm drawing a blank on what the one, Scott's uses it in all their, I forget the name of the, of the, of the one that they, they like to use. There's another one. Um, but look for that. I have not used any of the, um, any of the big box store, like I've not used it the Scott's, Scott's pre emergent like their, whatever their pre emergent is, I forget what the name of it is, but I've never used that on my lawn to know how well it works. Probably works fine as long as you apply it properly. Uh, I typically use dithiapyr um, and or a dithiapyr, prodiamine, and in the fall, uh, spectacle flow, this stuff. Like as far as if you have warm season grass in the fall, this is what you want to use if your budget permits or get with a bunch of friends, split the cost of a bottle. This stuff will keep POA out of your lawn. Awesome stuff. Um, but yeah, um, just look just look at the labels. Look at the labels and see if they make mention of prodiamine, dithiapyr, or whatever the, the name of the, the pre-emergent that Scott's often uses in their products. And as long as you apply it properly, apply it the, the proper rates before the weeds show up and you water it in, you should get a decent result. All right, next up is Mazama Blue. It says, Ron, any comment on Carbon Pro-L? Used to love Carbon Pro-L. I used to use it all the time. Um, it's, a, it's a good product. I think it's, it's a great product. Um, it's a bit expensive, and the and to, to you know, fun fun fact on on um, on Carbon Pro L. The reason the the reason why the carbon kit, the reason why this, uh, I can show you really quick. The reason why this under memory tricking biosimilants has three different products in it because the goal was to do better to produce a better product than Carbon Pro L at less price. And that does more. So does more, costs less, um, and there you go. Does more, costs less. So that's that's what that's what the uh, the the carbon kit is. So release zero NutriCalc and the BioSpectrum. So I, I would say that if you have Carbon Pro, you already got some. Use it up. It's a, I mean it's a good product. I use it on my lawn for one one season, maybe two seasons. I think a couple of seasons. Um, and it was a good product. I, I I can't say I can't say anything negative about it. Uh, the, the thing I would, the thing I'd say though, is that it doesn't, it doesn't make sense when there's the carbon kit. You know what I mean? Re I, release zero, NutriCalp, and BioSpectrum are superior to that product in in literally every way. And it, and the the five thousand square foot kit costs less than it does. So there is that. Um, but if you again, if you have it, Mazama Blue, by all means, by all means, uh, go for it. I mean, I have some viewers that have, that have reached out to me that that have ha that still have a bottle, and they said, "Hey, can I still, you know, I, I still have this? Can I use it up? And can I mix, you know, um, you know NutriCalc with it, or release zero with it, or Biospectrum with it?" I'm like, "Yeah, you got them. You can mix them together. They don't. They all play nicely together, and you can spray it. So, uh, so yeah. But I, again, I would not. Um, for me, um, the the carbon kit is is what I would use. That's that's literally whenever I spoke to Miramichi Green, we were, we were trying to come up with like. Like you know, you, like you know, you know, whenever they're like car manufacturers are saying we're gonna build, or this is the this is the car we're trying to 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 model against and be better than. That's what that's what the carbon kit was for Carbon Pro L. So better in every way and cost less. 
All right, next up is William Howard. He says, hey Ron, I pulled some plugs from my lawn in the, in the fall, but never sent them. I live in Columbus, Ohio. Should I use these that, um, hang on a second. Should I use these that are putting, that are been sitting in my bucket in my garage? Um, or should I pull new ones? I would pull new ones. I would pull new ones, why not? I would, I mean, you said you, you when, when did you do that? You said they, from last fall? Yeah, I would pull new ones. I would do that. I would, it's not gonna take you but a few minutes to go and do that. I would go and pull um, new plugs, primarily because you wanna, you know, if you're gonna do an analysis, why not do it based on how the soil is now? You know what I mean? Like you know, why like pull, you know, why use the, the, um, the, the soil from, or those plugs that have been sitting in a bucket from last year. Who knows if there's anything else that got in the bucket, if there's any other foreign material in there that can influence the results. I would pull new plugs. Pull new plugs, send them out, uh, which is what, that's definitely what I would do. I wouldn't use one that's been sitting in a bucket for, um, for four, five, almost six months now. All right, next up is Todd Hickey. He says, do you use a grease gun on each use of your Toro Greensmaster? Any advice on how to do this? Greensville, North Carolina. I do not do it on every after every run. I do it once a month. Once a month, I will hit. So I'll tell you, there is a fitting, and I don't know the actual name, but there's a there's like a gearbox or um or probably, it's not really gears, probably not gears in there. So the the way the the rear drum is propelled, there is a set of pulleys that come from the engine and that go to this axle that's along the back. Right on that, there is a grease fitting there. So I hit that grease fitting. I hit the grease the grease fitting. Um, that is for the, um, the, the, the roller. I hit the ones that are, there's two bearings on each side of that axle that drives the pulleys that drive the drum. I get those there on, um, there's two, there's one on each side of the rollers that I get. And I, I want to say there's also one on the gearbox, the one that the little uh, lever that you use to, dis to disable and, and enable the reel. I, I believe there's one on there too. Don't quote me on that one. I think there's one on there too. But the other ones are the ones that I, I, I commonly do. So two on the roller, uh, each side of the roller, two on the ends of the axle, one on the, um, like that, that, um, that gear, that pulley that's on the back that's connected to that axle that comes from the engine. And I do that once a month. And because remember, even though we think that we mow a lot, which for the normal person, we do mow a lot. But compared to what a golf course does, we really don't mow a lot. So once a month is going to be just fine. You don't you don't need to do it after every single run, uh, Todd. You know you shouldn't do it after every run. Should be just should be good to go. Even with me doing it monthly, whenever I um I you know um connect the the, the grease gun up and I and I, I run to the Zerg fitting and I, I give it a couple of pumps, like the grease that comes out is still clean. It looks it looks pretty much like the grease that went into it. So I'm probably overdoing it by doing it monthly, but it doesn't hurt. I would not do it ever after every one is what I'm trying to say. Every after every mow is not necessary. That's uh that is too much. It's not not you don't need to do it that often. All right, next up, I don't think even golf courses do that often. I don't believe they they grease theirs every um after every single use. I don't believe so. All right, next up is Cedric G. Nope, we already did that one. We got Grasshopper Lawn Care. He says, uh, good evening, Ron. What's going on, Grasshopper Lawn Care? Hopefully you are doing well, sir. Appreciate you coming to hang out in the live stream. And then next up is James Perry. He says, what do you think about Thatch Buster? Um, I don't know what that is. What is Thatch Buster? It's, it's probably a liquid product that is supposed to get rid of thatch. Uh, let me see here. What is Thatch Buster? Let's look at it. Um, I have never, I've never used it, so I don't know. It says it's concentrated lawn thatch degrader. Uh, it um, reduces the need for mechanical aeration and power raking. I've never tested it myself to know. I will tell you this, that most most products, I'll say this much, most products that are liquid that say they replace mechanical, like mechanical cultural practices are overselling what they do. I'll, I'll say that much. So what I would say is if I were gonna use like something like this, which I guess a, 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 the difference would be using like the carbon kit, like using Release Zero or NutriCalp, you know, anything that helps stimulate microbial activity to help break down thatch, which is essentially what this product does. Um, I would use it in addition to core aeration, in addition to turf raking, like that That would be fine. But to say that, to take a lawn that is, that is you know, heavily thatched, I'm not gonna turf rake it, I'm just gonna put down a liquid on it, and that it's going to produce a result that is in any way similar to what you're gonna get from getting out there with a turf rake, I I just, I don't see it. I don't see, I don't, okay, so, and if I don't see it, I don't see it within um, the same time frame anyway. Literally, if you get out there and you're, you got nothing to do, within a weekend, you can have the turf, you can have the thatch levels in your lawn 
um, really good. You can you can reduce them quite a bit. That's not going to happen with a with a liquid product. So kind of like the the liquid core aeration product, the liquid you know fats removal products. I think they're fine to use a lot as a as a supplement, but I would not use them in in place of. You know what I mean? So like a liquid is not going to replace core aeration. Like you know when you physically are moving cores from the soil, like literally opening up that void is going to help reduce compaction. It's going to allow air, water, nutrients to get down in the soil. A, a liquid product is not really going to is not really going to do that. You, you, I'll put it this way: if if it were possible for a liquid to produce the same results as um, mechanical core aeration, golf courses would do it, right? But they still aerate their greens, they still aerate the course, they they they, they still use those means to relieve compaction in greens and other parts of the course. So there's there's something to the mechanical means, and I find like the liquid products. Are, are a great supplement. So again, the 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 carbon kit in many ways is going to be is going to perform and do a lot of the same things that that product will do from a standpoint of of, of stimulating microbial activity, which helps to break down thatch. Um, but it is not, in my opinion, it is not a replacement for mechanical core aeration or turf raking. So, hope that helps. My thoughts on it. I mean, you guys are free to or feel free to, to to disagree with me, but I um you know it, look at what the professional turf industry does. If they're not doing it, then that, you know, because they're looking for ways to save money, because it'd be a lot, I'll put it this way, it would be a lot cheaper for them to just spray a liquid that produces the same results as core aeration, to not have to go out there and like, you know, make a big mess of the greens and then have to get out there and, and sweep up all the cores and get rid of them. Like if they could do that, they absolutely would, because spraying is much less effort than um, than core aeration or turf raking. So that that kind of lets you know that there's something to be said from from doing, from mechanical, the mechanical work. You know what I mean? All right, uh, and you says Stash Buster with preventive azoxystrobin. I don't know if if they mix nicely together. I mean, the way to test it would be to do a jar test. If you if you take azoxystrobin, you mix it with um, this product, and they you know they don't gel or any kind. There's not any kind of weird interactions. And as long as you mix them properly, so the rate that you are mixing that you are um, putting in the tank for azoxystrobin, um, like you're putting the correct amount of fast buster for the same amount of coverage. In other words, let's say you need to make the math easy. This is not correct, but let's say you need one ounce of azoxystrobin to cover 4,000 square feet, right? You would make sure that you, um, with four gallons of water, you would then take whatever the correct rate is for 4,000 square feet of the fast buster and add that to the tank, assuming that they play nicely together. See what I mean? So I, I've never mixed, I don't, I've never, you know, I don't own the product, I've never used it, so I can't tell you for sure if that would work. Um, but if it passes a jar test, you should be good to go. So that's, again, that's that's a big benefit of liquids, right? You can tend to mix and match and, uh, you know, just save time from doing multiple things at the, um, multiple things at once. So there is that. All right, next up is James Perry. He says, running the Sterling 51 this season, going to be boss on the Tiffway 419. Boss, he says. I believe it, I, I get it. I like the Sterling, man. It's uh, I only had one for four and a half, five hours, and it was a cool mower. I I, I enjoyed it. The build quality was nice. It was solid, and uh, yeah, it you know that that restored my faith. I mean that that let me realize there's something onto this about this electric thing. Because first I was thinking, yeah, electric, you know, the battery's gonna run dead, and then the power's not gonna be good, and nah, 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 nah. and I got a taste of that, and I was like, yeah, this isn't bad. I mean, the, the Sterling would not work for my lawn because it's not. The, the run time isn't enough for a lawn my size, but then when I got the one I have now, the the C27, oh, I love I, I love that more. I mean, not like love in a creepy way, but it's I I definitely have like you know how some people like love cars, love boats, love airplanes. Like they have like a like a, a, a slightly unhealthy attraction to a mechanical piece of equipment. That's me in the C27. That's me with the Greens Master too, and the True Cut. I don't like my screen trimmer the same way, but the mowers, the mowers have a special place uh, in my heart, you know, and I can't, I can't say I love one of them more than the other, but you know, they're all, they're all special, kind of like your kids, right? You all love certain things about them and you hate certain things about, or dislike or strongly dislike things about, about them as well too, right? They all got their, their benefits. All right. And he says, thank you for your content. You're very, very welcome. And you got the green haze going on. Cool. I like it. Sounds good. All right. We got Willie Robinson up next. He says, my name is Willie Robinson and I'm out of Columbia, South Carolina. On my Bermuda, I did a scalp. I like that. I had a fast green up. Sounds good. Now with the cold nights, my grass is looking dormant again. I'm reading it like probably how he's, he's saying it. Um, will my Bermuda be okay? It will be just fine, Willie. There's nothing to worry about. My lawn is doing the exact same thing. It turned, it was getting green. I was feeling awesome, getting ready to party, thinking, hey man, granular could go down this month. We're almost there. And Mother Nature said, mm -mm, not yet. 
So uh, so yeah, it's gonna be just fine. Bermuda's not gonna, it'll, it'll be fine. It, it turned green because it was warmer. It, it's getting, it's, we were having some cold temperatures now, it, which is knocking back the green a little bit, stunning the growth a little bit, but don't worry. It's gonna be absolutely fine. There's nothing to worry about on your lawn. It will, um, it will recover. It will recover just, uh, just fine. Just, just fine. Nothing to worry about. All right. Next up is Ben. Uh, Bennett Cruz says Bennett Cruz just became a member. Thank you so much, uh, Bennett. I really appreciate the support. Thank you for joining the uh, the channel. It's another way to support the channel. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. And then next up is uh, Bamaga Studios says best way to deal with fire ants and how to treat bites. Okay, so the second one you need to ask your physician. I don't know how to treat ant bites. I'm not sure on that one. I imagine some kind of an ointment, but I don't know for sure. As far as dealing with fire ants, the product that I learned about in 2018, so almost five years at this point, yeah, 2018, 2018, 2018, and I've been using it ever since and absolutely love is, do I have it here? I think I got bottles here, is this stuff. Is, let me go over here, is Advion Fire Ant Bait. This stuff is the bee's knees for fire ants in your lawn. Literally, the, as far it's a granule, I'm not, I can't really, it's not, this was not open, so I can't show you, but it's, um, I, I've got a video from last year or the year before on fire ants, and um, it talks about different options for getting rid of it, but I, I, I particularly uh, mention uh, Advion. I am a huge fan of, of this product. It's really easy to apply. It has a, like a, a, a shaker type, um, opening on one of it, you got one for a spoon, you have one for a shaker. And literally, you can walk around your lawn and just squeeze the, the bottle. It's it's such that it's, um, the, the plastic is thin enough that when you squeeze it, it kind of blows out a puff of the uh, of the granules. And um, in this video, which I'm about to link here in the live stream, you'll see how I use it. I will do, um, I will do a pass all up around the perimeter of my lawn. That's the that's the big thing to prevent them from even wanting to come in. And then if there's an area where you have like an ant hill, you're gonna want to um, not necessarily hit the ant hill directly, but but like use like use this around it. Like so, spray it around it. And I show an example of that in this video. So watch this video. It's only 13 minutes and 19 seconds in keeping uh, keeping in lockstep with me not making videos any longer than they have to be. And I think you will find it to be very useful. It's a great product. Like I have not, um, I've not moved away from this once I found out about it. This is, this is what you want to use for fire ants. And it, you can use it on, before I get the question, you can use it on cool season grass, warm season grass, all grass types, you're good to go. So fire ant video is here. And then as far as um, Advion, Advion fire ant bait, there we go. And as far as adding on fire ant bait, there's a link. If you want a link to where you can get it, you can grab it here. So add the on bait. Um, and I will at you. So at Bam the Mango Studios. What kind of what kind of studios do you do? Video or or audio? What kind of what kind of studios do you have? All right, and there's the where you can pick it up. So between that, between the video on um the video will show you how I like to use it, how I like to apply it to get good results, and then the link will show you where to, where to get it. So hope that helps. That is the product that I would use for fire ants. As far as bites, I don't know. I imagine some kind of an ointment. Check, ask your physician. Um, but if you use Advion, you shouldn't have fire ants. So you won't have to deal with bites. So there is that. Next, oh, and I'll say I'll say this, and I do cover it in the video, um, Bamaga. You don't want to, um, you want the lawn to be dry. That's the one thing. You you want the lawn to be dry, and there should not be any rain in the forecast for for two days um, after application. That's that's the one thing. And I say that in the video, but I'll just you want just the cliff notes. That's important to to know. All right. Next up is uh, Grasshoppers GA. He says, um, Willie Robinson, mine too. Sad. It'll be okay though. I don't know if I can say the same about my azaleas. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. I am no good as far as asking questions about azaleas. And I know the masters have them. They look really nice, but I don't have any plants like that in my or flowers like that in my lawn. So I can't help you on that one. All right. Next up is Gary Kellett Jr. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. I can only grab an hour and a half of the show before my wife drags me out tonight for St. Patrick's Day. Man, go hang out with your wife. It'll be fun. It'll be cool. Go do that. The show will be here. I mean, you can always watch it on the replay tomorrow. So yeah, I mean, if only I could find my AirPods. Nah, don't do that. Don't do that. You don't want, I mean, if she wants to go out with you for St. Patrick's Day, if you're listening to me on the show while you're out with her, she's not going to like that. She can get mad. So just, just uh, you know, go out, have fun with wifey. 
don't drink too much, and you can always watch the replay later. I appreciate the gestures. I appreciate all the love and support. All right, Bennett Cruz is up next. He says, uh, I have 3,000 square foot yard and I have applied one application of Dimension on it. Dimension being the brand name for Dithiapair. My goal is to plug with Bermuda. Do I need to apply another application of Dimension or Nuke with Roundup? Lee, we need a beer. Okay, so a lot going on in that comment. Uh, no, so you, so you already did your pre-emergent and you're going to plug the lawn with with Bermuda. No, I don't. I, you shouldn't need another application. You should be okay. You shouldn't need to do another another pre-emergent. I mean, I don't know when you did it, but if you if it was like last month, if it was like a spring application, you should be good to go. As, assuming you applied it at the correct rates, you watered it in. You shouldn't have to do another application right after your right after your Bermuda plugs go in. And as far as Roundup, I would not use Roundup on any grass that you care about, full stop. So I'm not a fan of using Roundup on lawns. Even if the lawn is air quotes dormant, I'm not a fan of doing that because if you don't necessarily know that it's fully dormant. There could be some that's that's not. And it's just the only benefit, in my opinion, the only, the only bonus or benefit to Roundup is that it's cheap, it's inexpensive. But as far as, um, as far as using that on on your lawn, I just I just really really wouldn't recommend it. Now, now can are there ways to, to use it if you dilute it properly? Are there ways to use Roundup on dormant grass and not damage it? Yes, but most people are, are not going to mix it properly at those diluted rates and spray it in such a way that they're not going to damage their grass, which is why I don't even bother recommend doing it. So, uh, long short full stop. Don't don't use Roundup on your lawn um, unless you want to damage your grass. You know, so I just wouldn't do that. All right, next up is Jim Grayard. Jim, I must have missed a follow-up question or initial question from you. You said, uh, where is it here? Jim Grayard, he says, um, yeah, he says, you mentioned SGN or something like that. Yeah, so when I talk about SGN, SGN stands for size guide number. So I can show you where that comes from. It's on, if you look at any of the Lebanon Furniture uh, Turf bags. I think that'll be on here, I believe. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'll, unfortunately, though, I can't I can't zoom in close enough to be able to show you, or can I? Yeah, I can. There we go. Cool. Yeah. So if we go over to the golf course lawn store and you go to the fertilizer section and you pick your vintage of choice, we'll say Humic Max, and you look at the label, on here, you will see at the top, upper right-hand side, you'll see it, uh, a, a label, a designation that says size guide number SGN 150. So what does that mean? SGN or size guide or, or, or the size guide number is a measurement of the prill size in fertilizer. So it might apply to other granular products too, but typically you see it when being mentioned with fertilizer. So if you let's show you really quick here, Jim, let me get my, my props up here. So if you look at your most traditional fertilizer that you will find at your big box stores and even in other you know other online retailers, most for, for most commonly used fertilizer that you'll see on lawns has a size guide number or an SGN of around 200 to 10. Some go as high as like 250, so it's so, so much larger, but most of them is around 210, 200, 200 range. That looks a lot, I don't get any fertilizer in my drink. That goes a lot, looks a lot like this, all right? So that's like, a, that's like an SGN, 210 type fertilizer. Now you take Humic Max, which is a fertilizer that's designed for tees, um, fairways. So it's designed for for tighter cut turf, right? Or so so when you have when you have a lawn that, that's real mode and the turf gets more dense, you need a smaller prill to get past the grass, to get past the grass that's that's, that's really dense and get down to the soil where it can begin working. So to, as a comparison, this is a size guide an SGN of two two ten, right? This is Humic Max, which is 150. So you can see the difference here. This is much bigger, the little marbles, and this is much finer, right? So you can see the difference between these two, between a 210 and a 150. So again, 210, 150. Taking it up another level, we'll put this aside. So this is a 210, greens, fairways, golf course lawns fertilizers, or golf course lawns, of course. And then we have greens grade fertilizer, green grade um, size guide number, or pro. This is an SGN 80. So if you look at this, this is uh, the, the country club line. So this is like the, um, I'll show you that here, which was that is, go over. So the, the 14714, so this guy, 
This guy, as well as the Stress 12024, these are both SGN 80 fertilizers. These are both greens grade fertilizers. So whereas this, whereas like uh, this fertilizer, like, you know, an SGN 210 is a great fertilizer for most, for most lawns. If you're not real mowing, or um, if you have like a, lawn, a grass type that you grow taller, like St. Augustine or fescue, or even and any kind of grasses, but if you're growing taller, this can work okay, right? But as soon as you start getting cutting heights lower, that is where these guys come in. You know, this is where the, the finer, the smaller prills um, to all the way to greens height, because you can see with greens, greens are very dense, very tight. So you need a prill that will get past that very dense turf and get in the soil because fertilizer sitting on top of the grass does nothing other than burn your grass. It needs to get past the grass into the soil where it can begin, where the microbes can eat it and they can get transformed into uh, a form that's available for uptake by the plant. So um, as far as you know, what I'm a fan of, obviously, Humic Max is my is my fave. I love Humic Max. This is what I primarily use on my lawn. And then the greens grade, like the 12024, this one is what I'll be starting out the season with. So these are great options for all grass types. All lawns will benefit from these. Um, the, the, the downside to an SGN 150 or an SGN 80 fertilizer is that they tend to be more expensive because making a prill that small is not inexpensive. You know, it's really cool, but magic is not cheap. So there you go. So hope that helps, Jim. And if you uh, need anything else, have any other questions, uh, let me know. All right, next up is Mike D. He says, Ron, hey, thanks for stocking Bloomplex. I got an order of that along with Primo. Good, glad you got some. I did also add Hydrotain to my order. Any tips on or info on that? I don't remember seeing any video of you talking about it. Yeah, so I do, I don't have a dedicated video on Hydrotain. I have a video that talks about watering your lawn and then towards the end, I mention Hydrotain. So depending on which one you got, if you got the granular Hydrotain, that one's the easy mode. So with that one, literally you can apply it and then water it in. As long as it gets water within three days of you applying the granular, you're gonna be just fine. When it comes to the liquid, the application is a little bit more particular. So you can either apply it early in the morning when there's dew on the lawn because hydrotain, hydrotain needs to get in the soil to work, right? So if you apply it to dry grass, that's not ideal because it's not gonna, I mean, it, it'll, the grass is gonna take some of it up. So really you want the grass, the lawn to be wet, like dew, or you literally just water it, run an irrigation cycle. You want to apply the hydrotain, and then once you're done, like immediately after you're done, you want to water it in. You want to you want to run an irrigation cycle. So a couple of options for that are, uh, let me see if I can show you here. So there's a hose end sprayer, and traditionally I'm not usually a huge fan of hose end sprayers, but for hydrotain or for soil moisture managers, they are pretty cool. So with one of these guys, what you could do is you could get like uh, you can get hydrotain, like say with the the, the hose the quart. And let's say you're putting this down at like 10 o'clock in the morning when the dew's already gone, right? You could turn, you could connect this to your hose and turn off the hydrotain flow and just use it to water the lawn, like water a section you're about to treat. So get the entire area wet and then spray the hydrotain over it and then you're good to go and move on to the next one, right? So, so spray, so get the lawn, make sure the lawn is wet, spray the hydrotain, water it in, and then you can move on to the next section. That, that's the only... I don't want to say gotcha, but that's the only um, thing you really got to pay attention to as far as getting a good result with this product. The the soil it needs to be watered in. Uh, it needs to be watered in after application. Like right after application, you got to water it in. Do not water it and allow it to dry on the grass because it needs to be in the soil in order for it to work. So, I mean, ideally, if you could, you could apply it. I mean, you look kind of crazy doing it, but you could apply it like right before it's about to start raining. You could put it down and then let, let the rain really wash it in. That's an option too, or run an irrigation cycle. Again, if the granular, the granular is a bit more forgiving in the sense that you can, you know, you got a couple of days after application for it to get watered in. So that's that's the only thing. It's not hard. You just have to, just gotta make sure the grass is wet and you apply it and then you water it in after once you're done. So for those reasons, and because I don't want to have to run a, a, a specific irrigation cycle just for hydrotain, I tend to use the granular. So hope that helps. If you have any other questions, let me know. And congrats on getting Primo, man. You're going to love what that stuff does to your lawn. Love it. You're going to love plant with regulator. It's great stuff. All right. Uh, uh, Big Jack 79 is up next. He says, ideal temperature to put down Carbon Pro G as long as the ground's not frozen. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can you can put it down, you can apply it when it's in the 50s, you can apply it when it's in the 90s. It doesn't, doesn't you know, you know 50, 50 degrees to 90 degrees, there, there you go, or, or higher. There's not really a soil, there's not really a temperature 
um, you know, restriction around it really. It's not gonna, you could take a, you could take a, like a, a, a bag of, of carbon pro G or essential G and dump it in one area of your grass and it's not gonna burn. I mean, you could probably suffocate it if you left it there long enough, but it's not going to burn your lawn like fertilizer or anything like that. You can, you can apply it over a broad range of temperatures. The big restriction I would say is just don't apply it to a lawn that is frozen, to soil that's frozen. That applies again to any granular product. All right. Next up is Tim Borsky. Tim Borsky, he says, I use the Agrifab. It's a tank. Once it dies, they may grab the earthway. Yeah, man, if you got the Agrifab and it's working well for you, you know, keep rolling with it. I mean, the, the, the nice thing about the earthway is the convenience of whenever you go out and you buy like a bag of headway or you buy, you know, a bag of a, of, of cell, a cell print or whatever, right? Or you buy a bag of Humic Max. You don't have to go back to the store. I mean, I, I love when you guys go back to the store, but you don't have to go back to the store just to go look up the spreader settings, right? So they're on the bag. You can say, oh, I have an Earthway. It's like a setting of nine for half a pound. So you go there, dial it in, and away you go. So that convenience is nice. You're not having to look at like spreader conversion charts and that kind of thing. Uh, if that doesn't bother you, then you don't really, then you can use any spreader you want. And, and really, I, I'm making a big deal of it, but really looking up the, doing the spreader conversion thing is really a one-time type thing. You know, if you, you could, you could technically take like an Earthway, find a spreader conversion chart, do the conversion for a Scott spreader and just make some notes as far as what goes, what, what, you know, what uh, setting for what product, stick it on your, on a, you know, on a sticky note on your, in your garage, and then you're good to go. But if you don't want to do any of all of that, just get an Earthway. Plus, it's a nice spreader. It, it just rides nice, and just overall, it's just a really well-built piece of equipment. So, hence why I like it so much. All right, Shauna53 is here from Instagram. She says, hey, Ryan, I'm late, but I'm here. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. I got the Miramichi Green Pest Control today. We had bad storms in Texas last night, and the soil is pretty wet. Is that okay to apply still? Yeah, so if you, are you talking about, like, applying it tomorrow when it's not... Um, when it's not soggy, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's. There's no problem with that, Shauna. In other words, if you would walk on the lawn, then it's fine to go out and and spray the the pest control. Like if it's slippery or it's a big mess, I wouldn't go out there because you know you don't want to slip and fall. But as far as um, there being a uh, like as far as the the their, the so the the grass being damp or anything like that, that's not that's not really that's not really an issue. I mean, I I would go out and spray it whenever it's safe to do so. That's that's what I would tell you. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that helps and I appreciate the support. I'm glad that you got the product made to you uh, safely. So good stuff. Need anything else? Uh, let me know. Uh, Casey Baker is up next. He says, just had two oak trees removed out of my front Bermuda yard. I know the sod I have is a type of hybrid Bermuda. Do you recommend I use a pro plugger or buy some hybrid Bermuda sod to lay down instead? If you have the patience, Casey, I would strongly recommend going with the pro the, pl the pro plugger route. Peter Piker picked a peck of pickled peppers. It's a tongue twister. Go the pro plugger route. It's easier. It, you, that way, you will you are guaranteed that what that what grows in will match your existing grass. I personally have had Tiffway nineteen installed in an area where my tree, where, where a tree was removed, kind of like what, you're, what happened with you, you had some trees that were taken out, and I had Tif, Tifway 419 and um, put in, and it didn't match my existing Tifway 419. So if I had to do it all over again, I would have plugged that area instead of introducing, um, you know, another introducing sod, because again, there's just no guarantee that, is, that it's gonna match. And it's not just me, it's not an isolated thing. I had my neighbor, the one that that turned me on to True Cuts, like many, many moons ago. His house, when his house was built in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, whatever it was. Um, ooh, I gotta get a super chat from Ben. Uh, uh, they only put the sod down like twenty feet away from the back of the house, I believe, and then he sodded afterward. The following year, he put sod in that was also Tiffway four nineteen, and even though they're both Tiffway four nineteen, it's now been two thousand eight. So what is that? Fifteen years later, thereabouts. If you go out and you look, you can still see, you can look and you can see the color difference between the saw that was installed afterwards and the saw that was installed when the, the lawn was put in. So I say all that to say, if you have the patience, Pro Plugger is the best way to go if you want to ensure that your lawn matches. All right, next up, we got a super chat. Let me get down here and get that. Ben, I apologize. I, I just saw it on my other screen here. Thank you so much for the super chat. Super chat received. This is hopefully... The uh, term, they increase again, green is sad. Oh, the temperatures. Hopefully the temperatures increase again. Uh, the, the green is sad. It'll bounce back, man. It'll, you know, it'll get warm here in a minute. Don't you, 
let your heart not be troubled. It will warm back up and you'll be out there mowing. You'll be, man, why can't it be cooler? The grass is growing too fast. It'll be one thing. We're never happy, right? We are never happy. All right, let's see. Next up we have, we have, um, let's see, TMOV. Nope, we got uh, um, X Dizma says, how well does Carbon Pro G work? Yeah, it works great. It's a good product. I mean, uh, it's it's a product that Miramichi, that Lesco asked Miramichi Green to make. So the same people that make Essential G make Karma Pro G. It's an excellent product. I used it on my lawn for a number of years until Essential G came out. Essential G is like Carbon Pro G 2.0. It is a newer formulation. It has more ingredients in it, hence why I like to use that. And um, But yeah, it works well. And the way to think about Carbon Pro G and Essential G are, it's like, it make, it's like making an investment in your soil. You're, in, you're putting in a lot of good, rich organic material. You're putting in biochar, which helps maximize your, your nutrient uptakes. So whenever you apply fertilizer, like less of the fertilizer leaches out of the soil or becomes unavailable for the grass to be able to use because the biochar holds onto some of it, making it available for the grass, which is, which is a good thing. Um, but it's one of those things you apply it and you do it you do it regularly over over a period of time and it's going to lower your watering requirements. It's going to you're able to use less fertilizer. Part of the reason why I'm able to get by with using lower nitrogen inputs into my soil but still have a lawn that looks great is due to the biosimilant program that I use. Right, I use the carbon kit and I also use Essential G, formerly Carbon Pro G. So yeah, it's a, I'm there's really no negative to it. I mean it's a great. It's a great product. I am um, I'm a huge fan of granular biosimilants, Carbon Pro G before and now uh, Essential G. So hope that helps. Next up is Bermuda DIY guy or guy DIY. He says, uh, "Hey Ron, what's going on? Not too much, man. I'm hanging in here. You know, it's St. Patty's Day. Wearing my sharp action shirt, chatting with you fine people." He says, "I got my soil test results recently, and I saw I'm wildly excessive on phosphorus. Not great." Is it possible to reduce it, or is it as simple as don't apply any more P? It is possible to reduce it, but you can't reduce it in like in um, in isolation. So like if you take out if you if you start bagging, one thing you can do right is you can start bagging your clippings, um, and that's going to slowly again slowly slowly reduce the phosphorus levels in that, that go back into your soil. But you're also going to reduce the levels of everything else that goes back in your soil. It's not just the phosphorus. You're going to reduce and your, your other macros and your micros. The the way I would approach it is the second, your, your second comment, which is simply don't avoid fertilizers, avoid products that are going to increase your phosphorus levels. So just use like a 1608 or, you know, a, whatever, a, a number, zero number. So a, a fertilizer that contains nitrogen, that contains potassium, but that does not contain phosphorus. That is uh, is what I would do. Because again, it's not, not that I'm aware of anyway, there's not a way to easily reduce phosphorus levels in um, in isolation. So hope that helps Bermuda DIY guy. Just use a, like again, something like Humic Max or the Stress 12024 or any, you know, any fertilizer that doesn't contain phosphorus. That's a, a good fit for your soil. Two Trill is up. He says, happy Friday, Ron and Stripe Action Gang. Yeah. Georgia is playing with my, <laughs> I guess, really, like I said, Georgia's playing with my emotions, man. I started to see green to the point that I was itching to throw down some fur, and then comes a cold front. I'm not sure if he's saying it like that. I'm not sure what he sounds like, but that's that's how internally that's how I was talking to myself whenever it got cold and the green started going away. We're all there. We're all there to Trillo. You know, we're all going to be accountability partners in this. We're going to get through this, man. I mean, I realized that the cold weather came in and has knocked the green back a little, but it's fair not. Bermuda is not going to be not going to be counted out. You know, it's going to get warm here soon. We're going to be out, out there mowing soon. So do not, uh, do not you uh, worry about it too much. It's gonna be just fine. It's gonna be just, just fine. All right. Um, Charles Westmoreland is giving his thoughts. He's chiming in on the Carbon Pro G. He says, Exodisma, I use it monthly and it works great for my cool season turf in Northern Virginia, 25 miles south of Washington, DC. So there you go. You have someone that, that uses Carbon Pro G and likes the results that they get from it. And yep, it'll work in Alabama too. No problems at all. No problems at all. All right, Justin Judkins is up next. He says, I've already applied one split app of Prodiamine. Would you recommend the second app taking it to add to the max annual rate and using something like Dithiopair in the fall or still use Prodiamine in the fall? Yeah, so it's a good question. Um, if you have the option to use something other than Prodiamine in the fall, that is what I would lean towards. I mean, I would use, if your budget permits, or if you can find a couple of buddies to go in on the bottle of it, I would recommend 
what kind of grass do you have? Do you say, okay, if you have warm season grass, if you have Bermuda, then I would say spectacle, spectacle, no, wrong, wrong camera, spectacle flow. This is what I would use on your warm season turf in the fall. This is what, is what I would go with. Uh, it, it's, you know, here's the thing. I don't do split applications. I do, I do a single app um, at the higher end, like closer to the, to the, the annual limit in the spring. And then I use a different pre-emergent in the fall. You could do, you know, you could do, I mean, you could do it in thirds. You could do like a split app, another application in the spring, leave enough for your fall application, and then use say Prodiamine, Princep, and Amazoquins. So you could use like another a pre-emergent along with Prodiamine to help um, to help with controlling POA, and then use some uh, Amazoquin, a little post-emergent. You could you could do that if you wanted, um, but I would just use Spectacle. I really would. If you can find like you're some people, some friends in your neighborhood that will spit a bottle with you, that's the route that I would go. So if it were me, I, I'll answer the question is if what how I would do it based on what I do is I would use my my annual limit in the springtime, whether that's over a split app or over one app. That's fine, just, but I would do it in the springtime. And then in the fall, I would use a different pre-emergent. There's so many out there that, you know, the the only benefit really of doing the whole split app thing and saving some of your allocation for the fall is that you don't have to buy another product. That's that's the, the benefit of doing that. But as far as control, in particular, if you're dealing with POA, with POANUA, um, you know, prodiamine by itself is not great for that. It's going to do a good job. It'll do better than not having pre-emergent down, but it's not, it's not awesome for, uh, for, for POA, especially since you're going to be applying it at, you know, at a lower rate because you use some of your allocation in the, the springtime. You know what I mean? So for all those reasons, do, I would use your, your limit, your annual limit in the spring and then use something, use a different pre-emergent in the fall. So hope that helps Justin. Uh, Charles Westmoreland says, I would think it would help. Um, it'll be, your soul will be healthy. So you're talking about um, the bi the biostimulants. Yep, I agree. And then uh, Jim Grayard says, what is SNG or SGN that you mentioned? I just explained that. So I, I guess your comment from, from earlier, Jim, hopefully that makes sense for you. SGN or size guide number is a measure of prill size. It's a measure of the the size of the, the pebbles, the prills in fertilizer. Typically, a smaller prill, the, the tighter the turf, the, so the turf that's mowed at shorter heights, like greens, fairways, tee boxes, golf course lawns, benefit from use from a smaller prill because it gets past that really tight turf and into the soil where it can work. If you have uh, St. Augustine, fescue, or a grass that grows taller, that doesn't grow quite as dense, you can get by with using like a larger SGN fertilizer, like a 210 SGN fert, because it's just, it's not as, not as dense, not as tight. But even those first, even those grass, or even those grasses that grow tall will still benefit, will still do well with um, again, a, a cumic max or, or any of the greens grade fertilizers. Because it's, it's again, it's, it's, if you think about it, it's just physics, right? If you have a, if you have a, a canopy, uh, you know, grass that's woven together, it's really tight, like, like this is going to have a harder time passing through a tightly woven canopy than this. And of the three, this one is going to be the best, right? So it's just, um, it's just a matter of, it depends on what, on what kind of grass you have um, and what, uh, you know, what, between which of those you, you will, you will go with. The, again, the, and the negative of that, the smaller pearl size fertilizers tend to be a bit more expensive. Again, for the same reason, like I said earlier, because magic is not cheap. Next up is Car is Bermuda Guy DIY. He says, does Carbon Pro G need to be applied during the warmer months similar to Milo to work effectively? No, it can be applied year round, literally year round. Whenever the soil temps get warmer, you're just naturally gonna have more microbial activity then, but you can literally apply it year round if you live in a, a part of the country where the ground doesn't freeze. So it's not like, uh, it's not a fertilizer. It's not a fertilizer. You don't need it to get broken down by microbes and to make, to make the, it available for the grass to uh, to use it. It's not. It's it's different. It's a, it's largely organic material and biochar. Next up is Scott R. He says if you don't do the ryegrass, if you don't do the ryegrass, a small 500 square foot test plot with maybe 365 SS or HGTC to to blue to make blue muta. See how it does over a few seasons would be a good research project. Yeah. I, so here's the thing. I'm not a fan. I know there's a lot of people that do this whole blue muta thing. I'm not a fan of it, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, when, if you have to spray post-emergent herbicides, let's say you do blue meter, right? And then you get to be May timeframe, and for whatever reason, you got weeds in your lawn. 
Like you have to, your, your selection of herbicides that you can use that are safe for Bermuda and that are safe for, that are safe for um, um, Kentucky bluegrass and are effective against the weeds you're trying to target, that list gets a lot smaller. Herbicides aside, if you decide you're going to use Primo Max, and let's just face it, if it's me, I'm using Primo Max, right? The rate, the application rate for Primo Max for Kentucky bluegrass is quite a bit higher than the application rate is for Bermuda. So which rate do you use? Do you use the rate for Bermuda to where you're under applying for the, the, the KBG, so you're not going to get as great regulation for KBG, or do you use the, the rate for KBG, which is going to cause, likely is going to, could cause some tip burn or some yellowing to the Bermuda. You know what I mean? So in many ways, you're just... In my opinion, again, there's people, I mean, your lawn, people can lawn, your lawn, you can do whatever you want with it. For me, mixing, I can see mixing cool season grass and warm season grass when the warm season grass is dormant. So kind of like if you're overseeding with, with um, rye grass in the fall, because you want your lawn to be green, like during the fall and winter months, totally makes sense. I get it. Um, but as far as a way of, of running your lawn from season to season, it's just, it you're just creating a lot more work. And I, and I don't necessarily see... Um, what the upside is. Like Bermuda can look amazing if you take care of it. If you if you mow it properly with the right equipment and you feed it properly, Bermuda can look awesome. It can look really, really good. You know, I mean, if, if anything, I'll put it this way. If I could get away with doing any grass, if I were going to do a blend of, um, like a blended of like a Bermuda grass and another and a cool season grass, if I were going to do that, I'm not. But if I were going to do that and I were going to run that like many seasons, it would be ryegrass because the benefit to me is that ryegrass just stripes, like ryegrass stripe action is, is off the charts. It stripes really nice. Like Bermuda's decent, ryegrass stripe action is like, it's fire. Um, but you really can't do that because ryegrass doesn't, like it doesn't do well um, with a lot of heat and a lot of direct sunlight like, like a Bermuda does. So for me, Scott, I mean, I get it, but I just, I, I'm not... Um, I'm I'm not a fan, and because I've literally like last week I got a I got an email. I think I may have said this. I may have said this on last week's live stream too. I got um, uh, an email from a viewer that did blue muta, did exactly what that is, what you're talking about, and his lawn is covered, got tons of poa in it, and he's like, so what what can I do to get rid of this? What can I you know I don't want to injure either grass. What can I use? And I'm like, there's not there's not a whole lot. I mean, get out there and I mean wait till summertime for it to die. Um, but you know, you can't use certainty because it's going to injure the Kentucky bluegrass. You can't use options for cool, for cool season grass because it'll injure the Bermuda. So for those reasons, I'm just not, those and others, I'm, I personally am not a fan of it. Again, I know there's people that do it and they like it and different strokes for different folks. I'm not, um, I am, I'm personally not a fan of, um, of blue muta. I mean, if I, over, over the winter months, if you're going to do it, that'd be okay, but not as a means of maintaining your lawn that way for multiple seasons for the reasons that I that I mentioned. All right, next up is, let's see here. Charles Westmoreland, he says, Carbon Pro, you can apply it any time as long as your soil is not frozen or snow covered. I use it year round. So there you go. I agree. I agree with that, Charles. Um, next up is Higgy Pop. He says, happy Friday. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks, Higgy. You see, I'm wearing my green, wearing my Stripe Action green shirt, of course. And then we got Dwayne's World Party Time. Excellent. He's up next. He says, hey, Ron, before overseeding Bermuda with perennial ryegrass, I had a couple areas of my lawn that never did well because of the shade. When spraying out the perennial ryegrass, should I still spray these areas versus keeping the rye? Um, okay, so when you say did not do well, do you mean that the Bermuda doesn't grow there at all? Or, or just gets really thin? I mean, I, it's... Dwayne, it's, it's kind of hard to answer without pictures, man. So if you have an area of your lawn that Bermuda normally doesn't grow because there's too much shade, which that sounds about right for Bermuda, um, but the rye grass is doing well there and, um, yeah, and you want to leave it, then, you know, it, now that would be a cool experiment because you're not you're not really fighting with the Bermuda because it doesn't grow in that, that section of the lawn. And if, it, if the rye grass becomes a problem, you can always spray it out in May or June if you need to. So, yeah, I would try that. If you have a shaded area of your lawn that's not doing well, and you want, and the ryegrass is love and life there, and you want to see how it does in just that area, then sure. I would get rid of it in all the other parts of the lawn, though, wherever the Bermuda tends to thrive and do well. I would not try and mix the two of them, um, you know, throughout the throughout the season, because I can't, there's, there's, there's the guy, there's a guy every year that does that. He oversees his Bermuda lawn with ryegrass and doesn't get rid of it. And like by June, it looks, looks, does not look good. It's like the Bermuda looks, doesn't look great. And the ryegrass is looking like, just please let me die. And it won't die because it, it just looks, it looks all shriveled up. You ever see how ryegrass looks whenever it gets um, really hot? Like the, like the, the leaves kind of um, like, they, like they, like they curl in and just becomes, uh, it looks like a, like, 
like little sticks all throughout the lawn. This doesn't look good, right? So if you have a Bermuda lawn and you overseed with ryegrass in the fall and you want your Bermuda lawn to do well and look good during the time when Bermuda tends to thrive, I would get rid of the ryegrass. I would spray it out. But in your case here where you have just this one little shaded spot where Bermuda doesn't grow anyway, then sure, why not? Leave it. Leave it and see how it does. All right, Eric says, absolutely, Ron. I got the Scarifier, Verticutter, and the 10 blade reel. Look at you, man. Look at you. You, you went all out. I like it. I dig it. All right, uh, next up, uh, KBG King says, would you please elaborate on the benefits of, if, if any, to collecting clippings on Real Cut KBG? Some other YouTubers are, a. let me see. Um, some other YouTubers are insisting clippings are always to return to the lawn. So some have said, no, all clippings must return to the lawn at all times, otherwise you're wrong. And the answer, the best answer, like most answers in life is it depends, it depends on what your goals are. So if you, the benefits to um, to bagging your clippings, right? Benefits of bagging your clippings are largely appearance, are largely appearance related. If you um, if you're someone that lets your lawn get away, like you don't mow it regularly, you can like and you're cutting like big chunks of grass off at a time. It, over time, it can cause a thatch problem. It can cause thatch buildup. But traditionally, if you're out there real mowing your lawn every couple of days, the clippings that come off are so small that as far as them creating a, a meaningful amount of thatch in a in a season is not is not really a thing, right? Not really a, a problem. So it's really more an appearance thing. So if you bag your clippings, the lawn, the color of the lawn is going to look better. It's going to like the green is going to look. It's going to be more vibrant because you don't have like yellow, like the dead grass clippings competing with it um, for appearance. As far as whenever you're walking on the lawn, right? If you walk on the lawn, then you walk in the house, the likelihood of you tracking um, grass clippings into the house are reduced because you don't have a bunch of dead grass all over the lawn. There is that. Um, so those are the benefits. It's appearance. It's, uh, the appearance looks better. Um, you know, you're not spreading clippings all over the place. So there's that. The benefits to returning your clippings to the lawn or mulching is that it is healthier. It is like you are you are basically getting natural fertilizer, right? So you go out and you apply a, a fertilizer to your lawn. Um, you know, some of that fertilizer is in the leaf, it's in, it's in the plant tissue. And whenever you cut that off and you just allow it to fall back in the lawn, it breaks down and it's like getting natural fertilizers. Some, some will say that if you mulch your lawn over the entire season, it's the equivalent of doing a fertilizer application. So there are benefits to mulching from a standpoint of just, just preserving nutrients you're putting in the soil and just, um, it's just like there, there, there are benefits to doing it that way. Um, as of last year, when I, start, when I started bagging my clippings, I really like the way the lawn looks, and because I'm, you know, I, I just really like the way the lawn looks. Uh, that's what I have. That's what I've gone to. Also, I did not have. Um, I'm someone that prior to last year, I mulched my clippings. I just, I, I didn't for the most part outside of scalping in the spring, and then maybe a, a, a cleanup scalp in in the middle of the season. I for the most part mulched all my clippings, and not every year, but more often than not, I would have some mild disease problem in my lawn. Just, just some some maybe a little large patch here and there in my lawn. I would I would have that. Last year, after like one catching all my clippings and um, turf raking to manage to, to to manage the thatch levels, I didn't have any disease problems in my lawn. I'm also looking at it this year so far. And I don't have, so far, knock on wood, I, I'm not seeing any signs of spring dead patch yet, their spring dead spot yet. We'll see, hopefully, right? So, you know, we'll see over the course of the season. One season isn't necessarily enough to, to be conclusive, but I will say that by, by reducing the thatch levels in your lawn, in my case, what I'm seeing on my lawn, you know, the, the thing that I'm seeing that's different is I've not had the disease problems in the summer that I have had in years past. So it's really up to you, you know, both people are right. If you want to mulch your clippings, there's tons of good reasons to do that. If you want to bag your clippings, there's reasons to do that. If you're trying to get the most out of your fertilizer and return as much nutrient to the soil as much, as much as possible, you would mulch. If you are trying to re minimize how much thatch, even though it's small, that, that builds up in your lawn over time, and you want the best looking lawn, then you would bag your clippings. You would, you would take them off. So there you go. Hope that helps. I'm sure you know both sides. Someone will disagree with me on it, but I try to cover both sides of that uh, of that argument. And yes, what I'm going to be doing, I am going to be catching my clippings because I really like the results I got from doing that last year, and the benefits for me outweigh the negatives. Next up is Gerald Jennings. He says I successfully killed some Bermuda grass mixed with zoysia last fall. Okay, good. We interesting to use what to use what you did use to do that. 
Um, now I need to purchase Emerald Zoysia for sod to fill in. Okay, so you use like glyphosate or something probably, right? Something not something uh, non-selective. Only need a pallet or less. Need help finding such a small amount. I don't know where you're, where in the country you are, Gerald. Uh, just, I mean, just call around in your area for, you know, Emerald Zoysia sod and see, and see what, um, you know, what, 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 what they have available. You might be able to buy a small amount to be able to fix those areas. Pl I mean, th now plugging Zoysia, now that's really an exercise in patience. But again, like I told the other viewer that asked this question earlier, if you want to ensure, be absolutely sure that what goes into your lawn matches, plugging it is the best way to go. So in other words, just because you have emerald zoysia that's in your lawn now, and you go get an emerald zoysia from somewhere else, doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna they're gonna match up and look, you know, they're, they're gonna blend perfectly. The way to ensure they blend perfectly is those areas where you killed off the Bermuda is to take plugs from your existing lawn and transfer them in there. So, but that, with zoysia, that's gonna take a long time to fill in because zoysia grows really slow. Uh, and as far as finding it, just use the Google and just look for, you know, Zoysia, Zoysia sod in my area. Zoysia sod, your zip code, Zoysia sod, you know, near me. And it should return businesses that sell um, some emerald, so emerald Zoysia, your grass type. Hope that helps. All right, so we have another super chat, I think, that I saw popped in here. Let me get down here and grab it really quick from Ben Raham. Again, thank you so much, Ben. He just went from green up to cold and proud again. It will perk back up, hopefully. It will perk, come on guys, you guys listen. I mean, I know I know that we're a vain bunch when it comes to our lawns, but just not, you guys are, with all the gloom and doom, like, I don't know, it'll probably never come back. It started turning green and now it's going brown again. And I'm just, it's done, I may as well just quit. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be absolutely fine. Don't worry about it, it's gonna, I mean, I, I'm with you guys. I am not happy that the lawn is not as green as it was last week, but hey, it is what it is. It's going, it's going to green up a month from now. We will forget that this even happened. You know, we'll all be laughing about, oh, you remember we were worried about our lawns not ever greening up again after that cold snap? Don't even worry about it. Fair or not, let not your heart be troubled. Your lawn will bounce back just fine. Don't sweat it. All right, next is, um, a pendimethalin. There, thank you, thank you, Charles. He says this ingredient in Scots is pendimethalin. Thank you. I, I, I can, when you say it now, I can, I can, I, can uh, I remember it. Thank you so much. Yep. So that's the pre-emergent that's in Scots products. All right. Next up is Rusty's Creations. He says, "Hey, Ron, jumping out for a thumbs up. I did have a question about biospection and fungicide. Does one cancel out the other if both are applied at the same time of day? Also, are you putting out biospection twice a month?" No, they don't cancel each other out. So I did talk to Ramichi about this and they said you can, you could mix biospectrum with your fungicide, but really it'd be better to do your do your fungicide app separately and then like the following day come back with with biospectrum. Like it's, you know, you want mixing them together. It's not gonna like fungicide is not going to completely negate all the benefits and the effects of biospectrum, but it is you are working against yourself. So that answers question one. They don't cancel each other out, but I would not mix them together. And then also you're putting out your biospectrum twice a month. Yes, I am. You can you can spray biospectrum literally anytime you're spraying liquids on your lawn. If you're spraying pre-emergent, if you're spraying insecticide, if you're spraying fun, not, not fungicide, spraying insecticide, if you're spraying herbicides, if you're spraying liquid fertilizer, you can use it. The only thing I would not spray it with are the thing, the, the question you asked, which is fungicides. You can spray it with any, with any um any liquid product that you're that, that you're that you're putting on your lawn, you can you can do um, you can add biospectrum along with it. There's no problem with that, and I do it twice a month. Yeah, I do it whenever I do the carbon kit. Um, so I just I just mix them all up and I go out and I spray it at the same time. All right, Rusty says just ordered the eight ounce earlier this week. Love the content in store. You're doing it right for us DIYers. Mm hmm. I appreciate that, uh, Rusty. So that's a good point. I didn't mention that. I didn't talk about the new product. So. With Biospectrum, before it was only, before we do that, before Biospectrum was only available in this size, which is a 17 ounce that treats like four to five acres, which for most of you guys, this is way too much. Like you're not gonna use all this in any reasonable amount of time, right? It'll be like multiple seasons. So the mad scientist at Miramichi Green says, hmm, we can do something about that. We can make it easier for people to get a smaller amount. They get more than they get in a carbon kit, but less than in the 17 ounce, so now, if you go to the golf course lawn store and then go to shop and then go to Miramichi Green Biosimilance and go to Biospectrum, which is right there. You will now see there's the 17 ounce, which is the one that we that we traditionally came out with. And then now there's an eight ounce option. 
which is eight ounces. It's less of it, right? So you can save a little bit of money. Um, you can get more. So if you're someone that wants to apply it every, you know, every couple of weeks or whenever you're spraying any other liquids on your lawn, out save fungicide, then you can get the eight ounce. It's, it's a little bit less. Again, you can save some money and you've got, um, you got more than the, the pills that come, the pills that come in the, uh, in the carbon kit, right? So there is that. So you get a 17 ounce and eight ounce. So you got options, you got options. So um, yeah, good job, um, Rusty. Again, thanks for the um, for the kind words. I really do appreciate all the love and support. Dwayne's World, party time, excellent. He says, hey Ron, ordered up some Turf Plex and Nutrizolve last season. It was my first go with these products and I can't imagine not using them going forward. Awesome, love to hear that, Dwayne. Sorry, currently we're out, of, we're out of Turfplex, Moore's inbound, and uh, yeah, feel free to, to get stock up whenever you decide you're gonna go forward with it. Just whenever it comes back in stock and so you have enough for the for the season. So yeah, I'm glad that you got great results with it. Guys, one other thing, if you were joining the live stream late, there is a new product offering from Real Rollers. If you have a true cut mower, you have a true cut mower and you're someone that ever needs to adjust the reel to bed knife tolerance, or you need to adjust the tension of the clutch. There's this tool they're coming out with that will be available for purchase on April 1st. It's gonna be $22.99, it's called the Spanch. It is a spanner and a wrench, hence the name Spanch. <laughs> it's an awesome name. So the, the upper part up here, the with the two dots, that if you have a true cut, you know what that's for, that is for adjusting the reel to bed knife tolerance. And the lower end, the, the, the bottom is a open-ended box wrench that is thin so it can get to, you see where the arrow's pointing? You can get to that nut there that and, and use that, that you have to, that you have to um, hold in place to be able to adjust the, uh, the clutch tension on a true cut. So it's uh, a combination tool that for true cut owners and uh, Lee from Real Rollers made that available. It's gonna be available for sale, for purchase on April 1st at $22.99 is what he told me is what it's gonna go for, so. For those of you guys that were not around at the top of the eight o'clock hour, I wanted to talk about that again to uh, to let you know about the new offering, the new thing that uh, that Real Rose is coming out with. All right, next up is Archie Amos. He says, would you discuss the shelf life of the carbon kit products, i.e. kelp, turfplex, et cetera? Huh, um, so I have never gone more than a, more than a season and a half. So in other words, I have some products that's left over from last year, a little bit of that's left over from last year that I am going to use this year. But even the, in the prior year, it was the same thing. Like when I was getting towards the end of the season, I um, I had a little bit left, and I started out the season with that, and I used it up, and it still worked great for me. There was no there were no issues as long as it's, the bottle is kept sealed. Obviously, it's kept sealed and cool cool and dry area, there's no um, there's no problem with that. If you're using the biospectrum, if you have like this guy, make sure that it's sealed properly. So over, so what I would do in the off season is when you're, whenever the season ends is you have the biospectrum and it does have, um, this bag is resealable, but if you want to be you know extra cautious, you can take this bag and put it inside of like a heavy duty Ziploc bag and then seal that. And that's gonna keep it dry, keep moisture away from it. That's what you can do. But um, but yeah, for Archie, as far as um, my personal experience, I've never gone more than a season and change, a season and and, and a you know, month or two without um, without using up the product. So I, I imagine the shelf life is, I, 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 the answer to your question is, I've used it up before like shelf life ever became an issue. So, um, so yeah, I will tell you, and a good, that's a good great question because you guys remember many years ago, there's a product that I used to talk about called Brandt Supreme Green, which was a liquid fertilizer that I absolutely loved. It was a great product, had a lot of iron in it. It was a, it was a really good fertilizer. That product, while it's um, while it was good, if you, I left it in my garage over the course of a winter, and um, the next year, like it, um, it formed. Uh, I think it's probably because of the cold weather. It created like chunks. Like it got, um, like I guess I don't know if it froze or it got super cold, where it got like crystallized. And even when it warmed up, it made like these little these little chunks that were in there that I, you know, they, the product was pretty much was pretty much unusable. Um, the following season. I have not experienced that with any of the Miramichi Green products. I've not experienced it with Primo. I've not experienced it with like the Surfact. I mean, that's the only product I can think of that 
I, but from one season to the next, at the end of the next season, at the beginning of the next season, it was not usable. Everything else, uh, all the other liquids, I've not had any, any, had any bad experiences with them, Archie. Again, keep them in a cool, dry um, area. Ideally, somewhere where they're not going to freeze, that would be good. Um, and you should be just fine. You should be just fine. Like I have a, I have a, 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 um, a bag of Biospectrum that I've used for two seasons. So, so yeah, yeah, no, um, you should be just fine. No worries at all there. All right, next up, let me see here. I got a question from Instagram. Uh, no, just talking about his reno renovation. Okay, so it's not for me. All right, next up is Jason Sewell. He's up next. He says, happy Friday, Ron and crew. A little late joining tonight. Just completed first ever real mower. First ever mow on my lawn. Bring on the, the neighborhood nomination. Man, we got to clap it up. It's not new equipment. But that's pretty awesome, man. It's a new, uh, it's 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 a it's a new thing. You, your first real mo today. That's pretty sweet. How was it? Was it scary? Fun? Did it go as well as you thought it was going to go? And, uh, and here's the thing: the first time you mow, especially when you transition from rotary to real, don't take the way the lawn looks on that first mow and say, eh, "I don't know if this is really for me." The lawn doesn't look that great. The more you do it, the better it's going to look. After by week two, it really should be looking solid. It should be looking really nice. I mean, the cut's going to look good, but as far as the lawn beginning to thicken up and just look nice like a real mode lawn after the second week you really it really begins to come into its own so like most things the more you mow the better it's going to look just keep the mower sharp and uh and have fun enjoy it enjoy it justin says i think my question got skipped earlier if it did i apologize he says first year manual real mowing at three quarters of an inch how much of a benefit will I see using PGR versus not? You'll see you will there's still a lot of benefit to it um would I be okay with it yes or is it definitely worth investing in? Yes. I mean, a bottle of Primo is, that's not Primo, that's a Celebrin. A bottle of Primo, this is like 40, right at 40 bucks, like 42, $43, I think is what it goes for on the store. This will treat, for Bermuda, will treat 16,000 square feet. So if you had a 4,000 square foot lawn, that is four applications. So you could use, depending on the size of your lawn, you could use one of these for the season, right? You get away with that. And yes, at three quarters of an inch, you would see benefits to using PGR. Like my lawn is going to be maintained at three quarters of an inch, and I absolutely, I'm going to use growth regulator on it. The the benefits of it are, again, I'll, I'll send you that blog post here once I get done um, yapping away here. But the benefits are like less mowing, the turf gets hardier, There's um, the, the color gets better when you use uh, growth regulator. And um, at three quarters of an inch, if you, like right now, wouldn't matter so much, but when you get into like, um, like, late June, like June time frame, July time frame, when it's really hot and there's plenty of sunlight and Bermuda's really starting to take off, that is where this shines as far as taking, you know, like making it to where you're, um, you're not having to be out there and mow more often than, you know, once every, every a couple, every few days. So if you don't use the growth regulator, even at three quarters of an inch, at some part of the year, you're gonna have to be out there every other day. You can still go out and mow every other day, even with, with growth regulator, but what you're gonna find is what's gonna come off is gonna be very little. The clippings are gonna be are gonna be reduced by by a lot. So I say all that to say yes. If you're gonna be manual push real mowing your lawn, I absolutely would use Primo on it. At three quarters of an inch, you're gonna still see a lot of benefit. That is the height that my lawn is gonna be maintained at. So hope that helps. All right, we have another super chat here from Ben. Rayham, he says, uh, let's see here. Super chat. He says, I hope everyone's grass is green, especially LG. Love seeing some goodness. Awesome. Thanks for that. Um, again, Ben, I appreciate the uh, the super chat. All right. Next up, we have Fernando uh, Funes. He says, hey, Ron, what sand can I use for top dressing? Any suggestions? I've been looking for silica sand, but not having any luck yet. Yeah. So you can use I'm a fan of using a more coarse sand for top dressing. So masonry sand or river sand is what I would use. If you get on Google and you search in your area, top dressing sand in your zip code of your city or top dressing your, your area, your city or top dressing service, your area, your city, the services that do it, they might also sell you some sand. They might also deliver some sand to you. you can, it's, it's worth checking out. If you live in, I'm not sure where you are, but if you live in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, or Tennessee, you can use the Superside Leveling Mix, which is, as far as like a leveling material, is my my favorite. It's a really good product. Unfortunately, you just can't get it in a lot of places. So if you live not one of those states and you can't get it, unfortunately. Um, 
But yeah, in your area, just look around. Look, just just do some research and find out who sells top dressing material in your area. What you could also do is call your local golf course, one of the local golf courses, and ask them, hey, you guys, are, they're getting their sand from somewhere. Ask them where they're getting their sand from. They'll also should be able to point you in the direction of where they're getting their, um, you know, the, the material that they use for top dressing the greens and, and, and that kind of thing. And the sand they use is going to be a coarse, is going to be a coarser sand and will likely not have a lot of debris in it because they don't, they can't have that on the greens. So that's another question. If you, another option, if you, um, if Google doesn't turn anything up, call a, go, a local golf course and ask them for, you know, any suggestions of where to get it. All right, uh, next up is, let me see here. Next up is Sean Scott. And actually, you know what? I didn't give you a link for that. So if you are in one of the states I mentioned, so Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, or Alabama, uh, the top dressing mix I was telling you about from Super Sod, and this, this code will save you a little bit of money, is this right here, this guy. It will save, I think they're running a, a promo now. So it's like an additional, like it's already on sale and it will save like an additional $5 off of what you're already, like what you're already, the, the existing sale. So um, so at Fernando, assuming you live in Georgia in one of the states, um, let's see. So super sod, uh, top dressing. There you go. Or level mix is the correct name. And actually I'll, sh I'll show it to you. Uh, there we go. There we go. So it looks... The, the material I'm talking about looks like, it looks like this. It comes in a big yellow bag. They make a couple different options. They have like a, a pure compost product, but there's also this. So like, see that discount code that popped up, that $10, you get, you get, you'll get even a little bit more off of that by using the code that I just posted in chat. But in here, you can see the leveling mix. This is 70% USGA sand, so quartz sand, clean, clean material, and 30% of their soiled cube compost, and that is what it looks like. As you can see, that there's no debris, no twigs, no trash, no nothing in that. It's really, it literally, as far as like a top dressing or a lawn leveling material, this is the best stuff that I've used. So if you live in, if you live in one of the states that I mentioned, you can get it. That is what I would go with. Next up is Sean Scott. Sean Scott, he says... Good evening, Ron. You may have covered this before, but what is the best way to get rid of wild onion slash, gar slash garlic? I have a fine blade fescue and I live in Virginia. All right, so if you had warm season grass, I would tell you Celsius. Um, for cool season grass, I don't know. Um, you could check, I could, we could check the label for, for tenacity really quick and, and see, or maybe a three-way. I, I don't know what will do, what will safely remove um, uh, onion in in uh in fescue i don't know the answer to that one so so there you go the beginning of the live stream when i say sometimes i know the answer sometimes i do not here's an here's a situation where i don't know the answer because i don't have cool season grass let me look i'll look at the tenacity label here really quick and if it's not on this one then i'm going to send you to um do some research or, or I'll, I'll i'll do some research and i'll find it i'll find out for you and get an answer yeah so it doesn't like tenacity takes care of that um so yeah i don't I'll try one other product. We can look at um, the uh, Triad. Triad, which I believe is safer fescue. So Triad Select. Let's see if that will do it. And let's see if onion is on the label. And it is, it is, yay, yay for that. And you have, you said fescue grass, right? Uh, let me make sure here that it's uh that you're good to go on fescue yep yep so you're good to go so yeah what you could use is this so for the wild onion on your fescue you can um go to the golf course lawn store go to the shop and the weed killer section and then you're going to see this guy which is a three-way broadleaf triad on the label um i just i just literally looked at the label for it and um wild onion is on there and it is uh, safe for, for fescue grass. So just make sure you read the, the rates through the label and apply it you know, according to the label and you should get, a, uh, should get a good result. That's a good one. So I didn't know the answer. Now we get, now I know. We got cool season grass, use, uh, use Triad. Hope that helps, Sean. If you need anything else, let me know. All right, Sandria tees up next. He says, do you have to do a soil test before applying prodiamine? No, you don't have to. Or can it be used on any grass? Yes. I'm trying to think if there's a grass type that prodiamine is not labeled for use on and none come to mind. Doesn't mean there's not, but I don't know of any within the US or any grass that any of the common grass types that I'm aware of that you can't where you can't use uh, prodiamine. 
The rates vary between them, but I don't know of a grass type that it's not labeled for use for. It's not like, say like Spectacle Flow, right? Which is really for warm season grass. You can't use that on cool season grass. So Prodiamine is not that way in that you can use it on pretty much uh, any, any grass type. Go Lawn Lady, what's going on? I see you there in the in, here on the Instagram. Thanks for coming in to say hi, I appreciate you as always. Thanks for coming to hang out. Uh, let's see, and then uh, Offroad NV from Instagram has a question, show sure, this camera. It says, if you aerate from someone that does many lawns, would you clean the machine before using on your lawn? Something to think about. Yes, yes, I would, yes you would. You would and you, I wouldn't and you should do that. In my video from last year on lawn aeration, we actually cover that in the video. That it's a, um, you know, because the thing is, you don't know where that, that aerator has been. It's uh, most rental places, most of them do a decent job of cleaning up the equipment before it goes back out again. But you don't, you don't know. They may not necessarily have, um, they may have done a great job. Uh, and so even when you bring it home, if you're doing it yourself, I would clean it. I would, I would like use a hose. If you want to take some like, like bleach and dilute some bleach and spray the tines down with that and then rinse it off, that would be fine too. But this video from last year on aeration uh, talks about, there's a section that talks about that. Um, that and yes, to answer your question, Alfred Envy, if you if you're bringing any kind of equipment into your lawn, I would clean it prior to bringing in your in, prior to, to to putting it on your lawn because you don't you don't want to bring any disease or anything else from some other lawn into your turf. So it's a great question, good comment, good 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 comment, good good comment. All right, uh, next up, uh, KT Patriot says, I know regularly guys that do 220, uh, 200 uh, growing degree days. When doing split apps of PGR, do you change that to 100 degree days or just reapply? What I do, KT Patriots, is I take the monthly rate for Primo, so for Bermuda, uh, for hybrid Bermuda, that is 0.25 up to 0.4, just under 0.4, and I cut that in half and I spray half of it in, on the first and I spray half of it on the 15th. So let's say you have hybrid Bermuda and you're gonna spray at like the closer to point it's like 0.38 if you're going to be precise. We'll say 0 0.40, close enough, right? And you're going to spray at the 0.40 rate, which is the rate for the entire month. What you could do is you could spray 0 0.20 with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet on the first, and then spray another 0 0.20 or just a little bit less than a 0 0.20 with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet on the 15th of the month. That is what I do, and I get a great result. The lawn never comes out of regulation from by doing that, even in the uh, the heat of summer when it's trying to grow more aggressively. So. I don't track growing degree days. Nothing wrong with doing that, but I just haven't seen the need to, to do it. Just, you know, a split app. Uh, I take the monthly rate and I, and I apply it every couple of weeks. I take, I take the monthly rate and I, <laughs> I take the monthly rate and I cut it in half and I apply half the monthly rate every two weeks and I get a good result from doing that. So hope that helps. It's Audacity says, if you do two full apps of pre-emergent, which two do you use and why? If I could only use two pre-emergents on my lawn, I would use, okay, I'm gonna talk about three, but, I'm, but I'll, I'll answer your question. I would use either Prodiamine or Dithiapir in the spring, and I would use Spectacle Flow in the fall. The reason why is Prodiamine and Dithiapir do not negatively impact green up like Spectacle can. Um, and they are effective against crab, it's effective against crabgrass, against spurge, against a lot of the weeds that we get in warm season grass, warm season turf. So that's, there's that. It, it does what it needs to do and doesn't negatively affect the, the, the lawn coming out of dormancy. I would use spectacle flow in the fall because the lawn's going dormant anyway. And it, in my opinion, is the best pre-emergent for keeping POA out of your lawn. Again, you can look at you can look at my back lawn. This is was taken. This video was taken literally right before the live stream, and there is not any poannua anywhere in my lawn. Not in the front lawn. Not in the back lawn. The only areas that have any poa that are even near nearby the lawn are where my lawn meets my neighbor's lawn, like that little area of demarcation. That's where a little bit of you'll see some little poa popping in there. But actually, in my lawn, there's nothing. There's no poa. So for that reason, I like Spectacle Flow in the fall. And then one of the other two, like I said, Prodiamine or Dithiapir in the springtime. Uh, again, and, and really the only negative to spectacle is that it's expensive, but it works really well. And like I was saying earlier, magic's not cheap. 
All right, Tom G is saying, yeah, Rye isn't the best in the shade either. Yeah, yes, you're right about that, Tom. And you know, I guess for, for Dwayne, it's more of an experiment. He knows his Bermuda doesn't do well in the shade at all. So he wants to see if the Rye does a little bit better. He might find out that neither of them worked well in that, that spot, that the Rye should arguably do better than Bermuda will, because Bermuda needs all the sunlight. Whereas Rye, Fescue, they do a bit better with a little bit, little bit less sunlight than, uh, than Bermuda. All right, next up is Worm. He says, I fired True Green in 2020 after 20 plus years. All I've done is spread Scott's Halts, crabgrass, and grassy weed preventer in the spring and fall. I haven't had any Poanya outbreaks, nor any broadleaf weeds. Nice, as long as you're getting a good result with it. So you, you took on your own, um, you took on your own, your own uh, lawn care program, and you, you're, you're obviously getting a good result. No weeds in your lawn during the spring and summer and you are, um, and nothing over the winter either. So good stuff. Yeah, so keep keep it up. All right, next up is Tom G. He says, plant zoysia if you have shade. Yeah, but even, you think, Tom, I, I agree with you on that. Zoysia is definitely better than Bermuda in the shade, but even zoysia needs sunlight. And the problem with that is that if you, if the Bermuda, if the zoysia begins spreading, it could start encroaching into the Bermuda. You know what I mean? So how do you keep them, how do you keep them separate? You know, if you, if you're going to, if you're gonna warden off the zoysia and have it in its own little spot and keep it there, then that's okay. But I don't know about mixing Bermuda and zoysia in the same lawn where they can touch each other. I think you're gonna you're gonna find out that it's gonna start um, that one's gonna start overtaking uh, over start taking the other. All right, next up is Jimmy Miller. He says, "Good evening, Ron. Late to the party, but I made it. Great, awesome, Jimmy. Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you coming to hang out in the live stream. Um, let's see." And then Worm is saying he's got Bermuda still brown and Decula, some green coming on, nice. And uh, let's see here, um, oh, Scott R is, is up next. I think Scott, I believe Scott works in the turf industry. I'm pretty sure, I believe you work on a golf course. I think, I think from last year or, or years past, I remember that. He said, ryegrass is, is aleopathic with Bermuda, meaning if you don't spray it out and let nature run its course, the ryegrass puts out chemicals to inhibit the Bermuda growth as a means of survival. I, I've seen that firsthand. I've seen that firsthand. Uh, I didn't know, I didn't know that it was aleopathic with Bermuda, uh, Scott. So appreciate you, um, appreciate you sharing that. So again, I learned something new uh, every day, but I will tell you that if you don't, if you leave rye to run its course in a Bermuda grass lawn, it will, the Bermuda will look sickly and the rye grass will look like, like garbage too. So it's just, you gotta get rid of it. So cool, man. Thanks for sharing that, Scott. I really do appreciate that. That's a good, I learned something new today. Good stuff. All right, Dan the man is here. Dan the man, he says, Daniel here. Uh, I finally got home early enough to catch the show live. Thank you for all you do. Kudos to you, Ron, for all you do. You're a huge asset to the community. I really appreciate all the kind words. Glad you got home to be able to check out some of the show. I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much for all of the support. All right, uh, Jimmy Miller says, what do you think of Swordman reel mowers? Um, I've only used a Swordman one time for any kind of heavy use on my lawn, I used it to do some dethatching, which is another reason why I tell you like dethatching. I'm not a huge fan of doing it because it's really aggressive and hard on your hard on your lawn. And it was it was okay. I don't think a swordman would work on my lawn because at the, by the time I was done, so I started on the back lawn. By the time I was done on the front lawn, uh, the belt like there's a belt on the left side, a dry belt on the left side of the mower, like it started slipping a little bit. Um, again, I have a large lawn and I was dethatching with it, right? So that's a, that's a pretty aggressive, um, a pretty aggressive practice as far as being like hard or like more load on the machine. So that's maybe not the best test, but the belt did start slipping after like one dethatch of the back lawn and the front lawn. I mean, I, I so I can't really speak too much much more than that because that's that was my experience with it and it was like a limited experience. If I had the the choice of buying. Um, a Swordman or buying an Allet, I would, and if I were the market for an interchangeable chargers mower, I would lean towards the Allet because I believe the, the build quality is better between the two of them. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all, that's all I can really say about that. I mean, I don't, I, I use a Swordman one time, like any kind of heavy use one time, and it, you know, towards the end, it was it was crying uncle. It was crying uncle, it was like, no more, no mas. And the uh, the outlet just is, is built built a little bit better, but and and the price reflects that, right? So you're really kind of comparing apples and oranges because the the outlet is quite a bit more expensive than the Swordman, and for that money you get better build quality. So, so there is that. All right, next up is Henry Jones Photography. 
He says, did you already discuss the benefits of Essential G or comparison to Carbon Pro G? Actually, I have a video on that very topic um, uh, on Henry Jones Photography, and I'll post it in the chat right now. It's about a, a, a comparison between Essential G and Carbon Pro G. Long story short, Carbon Pro G and Essential G are both excellent products. They're both made by Miramichi Green, Mir Carbon Pro G being um, essentially a white label product that, car that, uh, that Miramichi Green makes for Site One slash Lesco. Um, uh, Carbon Pro G is, uh, it's, it is biochar and compost. Those are the two ingredients in it. Those are the two primary ingredients. Compost, biochar. That's what you get when you get Carbon Pro G. Essential G is compost, biochar, reclaimed coffee grounds, humate, and silicon. Um, so you have, you have more ingredients in it. You can think of Essential G as like the successor. It's like Carbon Pro G 2.0. It's like the new, the new kid on the block. Again, they're both great products. You get great results. They're both, both will improve your soil quality. I switched to Essential G two years ago at this point, and I haven't, and I haven't looked back. So, so there, uh, there, there is that. So they're, they're both great. If you want a more formal comparison, a more formal video, I've got a four minute video here that you can watch where I did exactly that I compared Carbon Pro G and Essential G. So ESG and CPG comparison video. There you go. So you watch that, and uh, you'll see my lot, my thoughts in a more drawn out, more drawn out form. So hope that helps. But that's in Cliff Notes. They're both great products. Essential G is the newer one and has more ingredients, does more. So I like that one better. Next up is, let me see here. Worm says he digs up a uh, wild onion. I gotcha. All right, and then next here, he says, I dig up wild onion carefully. If I see it grandly growing in my yard, you can't just pull it up. The roots have onion bulbs and will sprout new plants. I gotcha, all right, I feel, I feel you on that. And then, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. and then next he says, great, uh, talk about Poe Onion, he says, great chat, uh, live chat, Ron, you're the man. Thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. Y'all have a good evening. Take care, Worm. Uh, appreciate you coming to hang out in the live stream and sharing your thoughts on what works well in your lawn. I appreciate you. And then next up is uh, Nike Flow 23. It almost sounds like that's a shoe or something. Is, that, is there a shoe called a Nike Flow? I don't know, I don't know, maybe. It sounds like a maybe a 20, 23 version of the of a Nike shoe, maybe. Okay, Nike Flow 23 says, what's up, Ron? I appreciate you, my friend. Not too much. Waiting for it to warm up so I can get out there and have more fun on my lawn so I can get my granular fertilizer down. I, you know, it's fine. I still can go out tomorrow and I can still spray my liquid, still spray my, my carbon kit. But um, no granular fertilizer just yet. No regular mowing just yet. Such is life. Uh, Lege or L, I think I see you pronounce it. L -E -G, L -E -G is in the li is in the live stream. He says obviously everything plays an important part in grass color, but what else besides iron can really make a difference quick? So all the nutrients matter. So nitrogen, nitrogen matters. Nitrogen matters. Um, molybdenum matters. Like all like they all they all balance and play with each other. But nitrogen and iron are what you need for chlorophyll production and and for getting. Uh, a, a great looking lawn. So you need all the nutrients, pretty much everything, everything that's on, where is it? Everything that's on here, like all these, on look at the right side of this other your screen, like all those, all those nutrients that are, that are, that are labeled there, all of them are important in the right amounts to have a great looking lawn. It's not just iron, it's not just nitrogen, you need all of them in the correct amounts, correct quantities. As far as making a difference really quick, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I would encourage you to not necessarily look at it that way, right? So I would say that if you focus on creating great soil, right? So you get a soil test done and you put, you make inputs into your soil based on the soil test results. Like you're gonna have this really rich, awesome soil and you can't have, you can't help but have great looking grass as a byproduct of that. Like so great grass, like great soil produces great grass. Kind of like a good diet and regular exercise produces a six pack. If you just think, how can I get a six pack as quickly as possible? It doesn't really work that way. It doesn't really happen. But if you think if I can like eat a, a disciplined diet over an extended period of time, exercise over an extended period of time, I will get leaner and I will get a six pack, right? So it's like the like a green lawn, a healthy lawn is a byproduct of healthy soil. So I, I wouldn't, I, I would try and get away from like saying, how can I get my lawn to be super green super quickly? And, and I mean, 
what you can, what you can do is you can add, I mean, adding a, adding like a, a, an iron application can produce a slightly deeper green, but if you just want something that's like consistently looks awesome, that's consistently dark, then create great soil and your lawn is gonna look consistently great. It's gonna look consistently, you know, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna look good. You don't have to worry about like throwing product at it, getting it to be green for, you know, a week or so, and then that falls off and then you're right back where you started again. So focus on creating great soil and then awesome grass is a byproduct of doing that. Lich says, will rye make it through the summer if heavily shaded and watered well? I've never tried growing it during myself, but the rye grass that I have seen that gets direct sunlight, like Georgia direct sunlight in June is hating life. Like it is literally praying to die and it just won't die. Like it just it does not look good at all, at all, at all. So you don't, um, so I, I'm inclined to say no, if you live in Georgia, if you live up North where, you know, summers are milder and you know temperatures aren't quite so bad. Yeah, probably it likely does better. But in Georgia, ryegrass in the middle of, of uh, the summer with direct sunlight, not so much. It does not, does not do well. Does not do well. KBG King says, I have a Swordman and it's no good. My California trimmer is a way better machine. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a less expensive machine. I mean, think about it. I mean, you're, I mean, for what it costs to get an interchangeable cartridge system in a machine at that price point, like you have to make some kind of compromises. And the compromises you get are in are gonna be in build quality, right? Like the California Trimmer, True Cut, McLean, they're built like tanks. Like they're, you know, they're really heavy duty machines. You can use them hard. And for the most part, as long as you take care of them, they're gonna last you a long time. Of those, I mean, True Cuts are, was my favorite, but I mean, True Cuts are hard to come by these days. And, you know, from my, I've been hearing some people that have had them or been getting them, there's been like some you know, issues with like, you know, some quality control or whatever. So, I mean, I'm sure they'll get that sorted out. But right now I would say that like a Trimmer, a McLean, um, an Allet, um, those are all great, uh, great options or just good build quality. Cause I mean, you figure I mean, a real mower is not something you want to be replacing too often. So, you know, buy once, cry once, spend a little bit more money, buy a good machine, take care of it. It's going to serve you well. You know what I mean? There's nothing more expensive than a cheap tool. So get, 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 you know, as, as, as much as your budget will allow and get the best machine that you, that your budget will allow. And then, uh, you just get out there and mow with it and enjoy it, you know, get out there and use it. All right. Kenneth Sherrill. Kenneth Sherrill is up next. He says, hey, Ron, great show. Brother, I dethatched for the power rake and was way too aggressive. Now I have a lot of ball spots. I, I, I'm sorry to hear that, man. He says, uh, do I overdress, do I over, um, overseed, overdress when I seed? What do I apply to be most successful when I overseed? So you didn't tell me what kind of grass you have, Kenneth. If it's Bermuda, I would not overseed. I would just leave it alone. It will grow back. It's not the the grass like you didn't one you didn't kill even though the air is bare, it will it you know the Bermuda will sprout and it'll grow through the area that is now bare and the existing Bermuda that's around the area will also spread into that that location. So I would not do that. I would not do seed. And if you have like a cool season grass and you're trying to I guess I guess in the in the springtime apparently. Um, putting down grass seed with cool season lawns is a thing. So if you want to do that, and if you've done that in the past and had a good success with it, and you're going to use a grass seed that you know from experience matches your existing grass well, then sure, you could do that. But if it's if it's Bermuda, don't worry about it. Just give it time. It will grow through. No worries. And then next time, let's raise that, that power rake up. Don't get too, I mean, again, a little bit and a little bit and often, not super aggressive. It's not good. No, no need. He says, I know that's a lot. My apologies. No worries. It happens. And you said you're in Annapolis, uh, Kentucky, I guess Kentucky bluegrass is what you have. Yeah. So if you're in Indianapolis, you'd like unlikely to have Bermuda. So if you're going to seed, and again, all the caveats that I said earlier, if the grass seed you're going to use is one you've used in the past that you've had good results with that, that you know will match your existing grass, then by all means, uh, go for it. But if you're my neighbor in Georgia, next door neighbor in Georgia, I would say, don't worry about it. Just leave it. It'll grow in. You can't hurt Bermuda. All right. We got a super chat here from, um, we have Jimmy Miller, super chat from him. Super chat received. He says, Hey Ron, I sent my soil test results yesterday. Everything was low, but high calcium and pH. You, um, you recommended, uh, the 14714 and said not to worry about the calcium. What about the high pH? So you can use like a citric acid to lower the pH. Some, um, Jimmy, if I remember your soil test results, properly. I think it wasn't just, it wasn't just, um, the, uh, the nitrogen and potassium that were low. Like I, if I, if, if it's the soul test result, I, I remember, I think all your levels were low, all your nutrient levels were low. 
So if you, as you begin fertilizing the lawn regularly, right? Because your pH, if I recall, was like just 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 over seven. It was like seven point one. It was just over it. So if you want to use an elemental sulfate or like one of the Jonathan Green products that we carry on the store, so I can show you. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll show you here really quick. So on the store we have uh, these products from Jonathan Green. They are labeled for to lower soil pH and then to raise soil pH. So in your case, you're going to want the purple bag, right? Like something you could do something like this to help lower your soil's pH if you really want to go that route. But if your soil test results are the ones that I remember. Um, it's just barely outside the Goldilocks zone and all your nutrient levels are are low. So it's almost like you haven't been fertilizing the lawn. And what what I've seen, um, what I've seen from all, other soil tests, I look at a lot of soil tests, is I've seen soil tests that look like yours at the beginning of the season and they don't do anything about to, to adjust the pH, but they just start feeding the lawn. They begin, for, they begin fertilizing the lawn regularly. And I'm not sure if it's the salts that are in fertilizer or what, but the pH tends to drop a little bit, not a ton, but drops a little bit over the course of the season. So you can use a sulfate if you want. You can use um, this product, like a, like a Magical product, to, um, to help lower that as well. But again, if I remember your soil test results, it was just, it was, it was barely, just, just barely over um, the Goldilocks zone. So that's why I likely didn't give a recommendation as far as, you know, an additional product. I mean, you can buy that if you want, you can use that. But I'm, I, I try to be conscious of like your budget and really only recommend what I think is gonna give you the best bang for the buck and what you, what you absolutely need to get a good result. So if you want the Magical um, product I just showed on the screen, is something you can use as well to help bring that pH down. And uh, yeah, I think you should be good to go. If you have any other questions, just, you know, you got my email address, feel free to follow up with me and I will revisit it. I'll, I'll definitely, uh, I'll, I'll look at your question and we'll go through it again. All right, next up is uh, Jimmy Miller. He's a follow-up, he says, uh, thanks uh, Ron and KBG. I guess I got to pass on a swordman and save some more pennies for an outlet. I think you'll be happier with that. I think you'll be happier with that. I mean, the, the I mean, I'm sure there's people that have swordmans and if you guys that have swordmans, don't send me hate mail. Um, but the outlet is a very well built a piece of equipment. I mean, the, especially the one, this one back here, like, you can't see it, the Sterling, really well, it's a, for, for a smaller mower, solid piece of equipment. You can, when I, when I see that, when I, I mowed with that, and then I went to the C27, which I mean, that's because they're commercial, that's like a whole other level. Um, you can see that the commercial line, their commercial line of mowers, had um, influence in the design of this machine. You can see that. You can see where they got the the influence to to make the the uh, the Sterling. So it's if your budget will allow for it, like that is what I would get because not not only is it a great mower that cuts well, you can also get like a verticutter cartridge for it, which is awesome. You can get a turf rate. You can get uh, a dethatcher, which I don't think you're really going to need. But you can get a big thing is you can get a verticutter and you can get a turf rake, and it has a grass catcher, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you've ever turf raked a lawn or verticut a lawn and then had to go afterwards behind turf raking and verticutting and rake and pick up all the deb debris, you know that having all or most of the debris go into a grass catcher that's very convenient to empty out is a huge bonus, huge bonus. So for that reason, I would, again, look into one of those. Save your money and just, you know, you, you'll be ha you will be happier with that in the end, I believe, than, than, a, than a swordman. So next up is Think Money. It says, any suggestions for a POA pre-emergent? Tired of seeing POA every winter, early spring, and have to go over it with image post-emergent. Yeah, so if you have warm season grass, think money, What and you're like, you know, I'm tired of, of POA, I don't want to deal with any, any more than, um, than, and you have the budget for it, then I would say get Spectacle Flow. This is, as far as a pre-emergent that is going to, um, that in my opinion is, is the best, for war on warm season grass for poania for preventing it, it's really hard to beat spectacle. Uh, if you something else you can do that is not quite as expected as spectacle flow and works, I mean, not quite as good but but pretty close, is you can take prodiamine, simazine, and imazequin. So you can take prodiamine um, or barricade. You can take uh, princep which is the Simazine product, and then you can take image, which is the active ingredient imazequin. And you can mix those three together and in the fall and spray that, use that as your, your fall pre-emergent, and that is gonna do a much better job than strictly using prodiamine by itself. But if you want the best product, it then go with Spectacle Flow. That's gonna do the best job against POA in your lawn. Now, if you already have POA, what you can do to get rid of it, you can use Image, but it's super slow. A better option for POA, and I'm, I'm answering this assuming 
that you have warm season grass because you would not be using image if you didn't is to use certainty. So if you want to get rid of the Poe that you currently have, you can use this. This will get rid of it and it'll also get rid of um, sedges. So sedges, Kalinga, like all those, that'll be gone with, with this product. So um, that's, that's something else to consider as well too. So hope that helps. You got the data, just get, you know, just uh, go with spectacle or something or that, that blend I was telling you about in the fall to keep um, the Poe out of your lawn. Yeah, and then Jimmy says, yeah, everything was low. Yes, yep, yeah, so you're, you're the one that's why I remember. And that that is why I was saying, eh, I could like recommend the Jonathan Green product or um, like a sulfate. But, you know, again, I, I look at a lot of soil tests and it, yours is not uncommon to what I see for soil test results in one in Texas where the, the where you see a lot of calcium levels tend to be higher um, and where they began fertilizing with a balanced fertilizer, like a, a complete fertilizer, like the 14714 that I recommended. And when they took, they pulled another sample in the fall, the pH had dropped, by, they, it dropped a little bit. So that's why I'm saying I didn't really recommend doing anything because yours, if I remember correctly, was right on the edge, right on the, on the border. So yeah, your call if you want to get the uh, the the Magical product or not. It's, it's it's really up to you. Next up is Mike D. He says I got the out Sterling fifty one, but now I'm saving pennies for the cartridges. Well, you know, you got the hard part. Like the the those mowers are pretty hard to come by, man. So you got you got the mower, and uh, yeah, you get the cartridges uh, after the fact. Don't uh, don't you worry. And as far as cartridges, I would recommend the turf rake or with, on their side it's the stir uh, the scarifier and the verticutter. Scarifier and verticutter. That's what I would go with. Okay, Mike D has another question to follow up. He says, to add to my question earlier about the neighbor's common Bermuda taking over my Tipway 419, you are correct. Our houses is a new development and his house was built seven years prior to mine. That's what I thought. Because I mean, it, it would be absolute craziness for a builder to build two houses. And again, it could be different builders, right? But for them to build two houses right next to each other and they do two way 419 on one and they have a contractor come put common Bermuda on another one. Like I don't, you know, in like most places around here because the, the development that I live in, they're still building out areas and literally it's Tiffway all over the place. They're not, they're, they're not installing common Bermuda in any of the lots. So, um, so I figured that I figured that, that there was a, a lawn that was older or a house that was older, you know, they didn't, they didn't come in at the same time because it wouldn't make sense for them to do two different types of grass at the, um, you know, for two lawns that are right next to each other. Wouldn't make sense. He says, wait, so the three cartridges you recommend are the Scarifier, Verticutter, and Brush. Uh, the Brush would be the last one I would get. So Scarifier, Verticutter, and Brush. Yes, likely in that in that order. You'll use the Scarifier more than the Verticutter. You'll use the Brush the least out of the three of them. That one really is when you're gonna go out and, uh, you know, after you, you've um, top dress to help work the material in that's what the brush would be good for. So that one, the one you're gonna get the least use out of, that's the one I would buy absolutely last. Absolutely last, or if at all, if at all, because it's gonna spend most of the time in your garage just collecting cobwebs. All right, Richard Taylor says, hey Ron, I'm here in Southern Middle, Middle Tennessee. I've been asking questions for the last few weeks about lawn renovation. I'm going to seeds. So you're doing a renovation, you're gonna do seed. What is the best starter fertilizer? Um, so it depends. I can give you a couple of options. There is the triple 12, the one from that, that Yard Mastery makes. That's, that's, a, that's a good sort of fertilizer. I'm a fan of the, um, the complete seven, uh, the 14714 for the reason that it contains, um, in addition to being a fertilizer, right? It's also contains biosimilants. So it has kelp in it and it also has humic acids. So a little bit of kelp, a little bit of humic acid, and it's got you know, the, the macros, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So as far as being a more complete product for, you know, for a renovation, that is what I would use. But that one, or you could use that one, or you could use, I'll show you. So that guy, the complete 14714, or uh, this one, the starter fertilizer, this triple 12, either one of them, this guy, or the, um, or the 14714. But if you're asking which one I would go with, it would be this one. Because again, uh, kelp and humic acids, so, so, so uh, biostimulants. And also, another, another feather in the cap for this one is, so if you're going to, you know, if you're gonna be doing a renovation, so you're gonna, um, I, get, I imagine you're going scorch, scorched earth, you're gonna burn down the existing lawn, you're gonna get rid of it and everything, and you want a product that's going to, to get taken up a bit faster, remember the prill on this this, this, this is what you're comparing. This is the prill size of the 14714. This is the prill size of the triple 12. As far as getting into the soil, 
and just just becoming available sooner, like this is going to be faster for that. This is going to be this is going to be better in that regard. Um, the price difference is not that much. This is more expensive than the triple twelve, but in my opinion, this is a it's a better product for the reasons that I um, already spoke about. So. So I hope that helps. I mean, there is no best starter fertilizer. You can go out and get like a triple 10 if you want. You can buy, I mean, there's, they're all different. Um, they, they, there's, it, the, the, the difference that separates the, the one that's on the screen now, this from most of them is that it also contains biostimulants as well. It's not just fertilizer. It contains kelp and um, humic acid, both of which improve your soil quality, which is, which is a good thing. So for that reason, I would go with the country club, the 14714. Next up is Think Money says, just looked up Spectacle Flow. Hopefully you didn't fall out of your seat when you looked it up. It's not cheap. I mean, they are they are very proud of it. You know what I mean? They're not proud of it, but that's what you can do. You can charge, you can charge whatever you want when you have when you have the hotness, right? So uh yeah, it's not cheap, but it it does work well. So what you can do, Think Money, if you got friends or family or you know, anybody's that um what, can use some of it too, you can get the what is it? I think it's an 18. How big is this container? Is it, uh, 18 ounces, yeah. You can take this little 18 ounce container and you guys can split it. You know, what you can do is how I actually use this is I hack, I take an old Primo bottle. So, you know, Primo has a nice um, fancy measuring cup built into it. If this will focus, yep. Got a most nice measuring cup built into it. So what I actually do is I take some of this and I take an old Primo bottle and I pour some of, I pour this into here and I keep like a, a small amount of spectacle um, in a Primo bottle, obviously it's labeled that it's spectacle, and it makes it nice and easy to measure out because the application rate for this product for Bermuda is on the low end is 0.1, there we go, is 0 0.10 ounces over with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet to just to write at 0 0.2 ounces. That's the higher rate for spectacle on Bermuda. So the nice way to measure that is just to have like use this, which is why I pick up a little bit of this, pour it in there. And then this doesn't have to sit in the garage. I can keep it nice and dry and I can use it as a prop on the show so you guys can see it. And I can keep what I actually use on my lawn in a Primo container in the garage. So there's that. So I would, um, if it's just for your lawn, it's not a great, I mean, like you're, you're not gonna go through it. I mean, it takes very little of this product to, you know, to do, to do a lawn. Again, it's like point on the high end, 0 0.20 ounces over a thousand square feet. So you can do the math on how much, how long, how far 18 ounces is going to go, right? So there is that. Oh, uh, and you said, <laughs> what was the second option again? <laughs> after, after looking at the price, you're like, oh, that's too much. Uh, the second option is to use, um, to, to do a blend. So use uh, Prodiamine, Simazine and Imazequin, and I have a video on that for the fall that I'll, I'll try and find here on, on fall pre-emergent that where I, I show how I mix them. I'll show how I mix them. It's from, it's from a couple of years ago. It's from a few years back, but I'll, um, I will, I will look and see what I can find here. If you, if you get on my channel and just search for, oh, can I find it really quick? Uh, maybe, I don't know. I, I'll have to look for it and I will get it to you, Think Money. So here's what I'll do. Once I find it, I will put it in the description of this live stream video. So I'll find it after the show's over and I'll put it in the description of this video. So if you look, you'll see, I'll just call it, um, uh, you know, fall pre-emergent blend. That's what you'll see in the description uh, label that way. Once I find the video, I'll, I'll link it uh, that way. So yeah, it's a lot, lot less expensive. All right, uh, next up we have Russ. He says, happy Friday, backpack sprayer recommendations, 200-ish or less, and which size leveling rig, 36 or 48 inch wide? Okay, so 38, 200-ish or less. The only one that I have experience with is the Chapin. And, um, you know, the Chapin's a good sprayer. I've used it, I like it. There's also like, um, so like F, so Flowzone, they make, they make the, uh, Typhoon 2, which is their higher end sprayer. And I think they make another one. I think it's called the, the Cyclone or some, some, it's some other storm name. And that one is closer to the $200 price range. You know what I mean? There's, there's a lots of, there's lots of sprayers in that $200 price range. So I, I don't, the only one that I have that's near that price range is the Chapin. And it's an older design. It's an older sprayer. It's a good one, but it's an older sprayer. And you can, you likely can get something nicer than, um, than that for the, for the money, right? 
Um, so I will look at that. Go to check out Flowzone's website and see what they have that's in that price range and um, and and go from there. I can't, there's not only one I can recommend because I have direct experience with the Flowzone Typhoon 2, which is like 300 bucks, and then also the Mark Yard Mastery Sprayer, which is like 300 bucks. So like, these days are in the same price range. Um, so as far as a sprayer that I would recommend, again, it's going to be more than 200 bucks. I'll show you though. It is going to be uh, Backpack Sprayer. It's going to be this guy. The Yardmaster Backpack Sprayer, this price includes shipping, and the reason why I like it is you buy this, and it comes with everything. So you have the sprayer, and it also includes the spray, it comes with the adapter nozzle, it comes with this guy, which is what you need for using the um, the T-Jet tips. So you take that, you connect it in, you put it in the in the quick disconnect, and then you're able to use a T-Jet, a T-Jet uh, foliar tip, and a T-Jet flood jet tip, or any other tip that you, you know, your heart desires. So the nice thing about this is that it is all, it's one time, you buy this and you're done. It comes with everything you need. And at this price, while that may look like a lot, it is actually cheaper than the Flowzone Typhoon 2 um, once you buy all the, everything else you need to be able to do what this sprayer does. So by the time you buy a Flowzone and you pay for shipping, which you, this, this price includes shipping, you buy the Flowzone, you pay for shipping, and you buy the... Uh, the adapter, and you buy the spray tips, you're going to be well over this. You're going to be well over this. So the Yard Mastery Sprayer for a sprayer in that price point is the best deal, in my opinion, on the market. And the $200 price range, I, I, I don't I don't know. I, the Chapin is what I've used. In, and I think if you look at Flowzone's website, they probably have like a less expensive sprayer that's in that range. But I can't I'm not, I can't endure. I can't speak to that one because I've never used it. So if you get it and you don't and you hate it, don't blame me. I've never used it before. So uh, that's just another place where you can look as far as uh, sprayers in that price range. So hope that helps. All right, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Mike D says yard mastery starter fertilizer says it's spiked with Bionite. Is that not the same as Country Club? No. Um, the Bionite is like, um, it's like, it's solid. It's like bio, it's like a biosolid, like what, uh, Melorganite is similar. It's similar to that. It's along the same lines. It's like a biosolid like Melorganite. It is not, um, humic acid or kelp. It's not, it's, they're different. All right. Next is Will Ward. It says, Hey Ron, did the mole ever come back after you and your neighbor put a hose in the hole? No, it has not come back. It has not come back. No, there's not been any... There's not been any more moles in the lawn. Fingers crossed. There will not be any more moles in the lawn. Let's hopefully let's hope it stays that way. Hope and pray. All right. And then next up, we got Tyler Nelson. He says, hey, Ron, appreciate all the content and the Golf Course Lawn Academy. You are very, very welcome, sir. I'm glad you're getting a lot of value out of it. It's a, The Golf Course Lawn Academy is a ton of fun, man. You guys, you guys ask tons of questions. I'm glad you guys get value out of the content. And then also the Facebook group now, it's growing. You know, and there's more, you know, the, a lot of the people that have been in the Academy for a while, like you guys are getting in there and answering questions because you guys know, like you guys know what I would say. So it's it's a it's a great community where you guys are just collabing and and um, a lot of cool projects going on and just uh, it's it's a it's a fun time. So um, all you guys that have joined the Golf Course Lawn Academy, which if you guys know what I'm talking about, that here on the live stream, I we do have like all this content is obviously free, but then we do have a paid course. It's a one-time purchase that you get. Uh, there's over I think there's 22, 23 videos in there. Um, you get a, a discount on the store for certain products that only members get. Here's a product application calendar. You get access to the private Facebook group, and it's a it's just a great time. It's a good it's a it's a it's a great. Um, I I I thought that maybe a few people would, would pick it up, but it's it's really exceeded my expectations. One as far as um, the number of people that that opted to to join, and also the feedback I've been getting on it. So I'm really really happy about that, and I'm glad that you're getting value out of it, Tyler. I appreciate the uh, the support. All right, next up is Mike D. He says, does spectacle flow really slow stunt the Bermuda green up? Most of my neighbors are 50 to 70%. I'm still 40%, 40 to 30% green. When I say stunt uh, green up, I mean like using it in the springtime because people will ask and they'll say, well, why can't you use, if spectacle is so option, awesome, why not use it in the springtime too? And I, I mean, if you use it in the fall, which is when I, I applied it, like by springtime, the effects are beginning to wear off and you're, you're good to go. It doesn't affect green up in that regard, but I wouldn't necessarily, I would not use it in the springtime. I would not use it as, a, as your spring pre-emergent. I would use it for fall, for fall. So fall pre-emergent, spectacle, spring pre-emergent, use diphiopyr or prodiamine. You could use spectacle if you want to, but you're, you know, the lawn may take a little longer to green up. That's that's the only negative. So, um, and frankly, prodiamine and diphiopyr 
cost less, and for the problem they are trying, they're designed to solve, which is like crabgrass, spurge, other common broadleaves in your lawn, they do a great job. Whereas in the fall, prodiamine and dithiopyr do not do a great job by themselves on preventing poa in your lawn. Like, but they, I mean, they, they slow it down a little bit, but you're still gonna likely gonna have some poa in your lawn if you um, if you only use prodiamine. Whereas spectacle, if you use spectacle in the fall, it's gonna take care of poa. You're not gonna have a problem with it, assuming you apply it at the right rates and it. Um, and it, uh, you, you know, you pry it properly and you, you, uh, you water it in. Should be, should be just uh, fine. Just fine. All right, Mike D says, um, also I dropped the Yardmaster Triple 12 four days ago. Everything I watched on YouTube says I was a little early on my fertilizer and should have waited until everything is greened up. Did I waste the fertilizer? No, you're fine, man. I mean, if you did it, you did it four days ago. It's, here, here's the thing, you want the lawn, you want the lawn to be largely green, so 60% green or more. So, so to where it is more green than it is brown, right? So where you're past, you're past any major long, um, long-standing cold snaps. You're, but as far as you applying it four days, like four days ago, and then you figure with the next couple of weeks we're gonna be greening up here, it's gonna be fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Like if you said you had applied it like in mid-February or you know, like early, like the, the the last part of February, then I'd say, yeah, I mean, you still didn't waste it, but you're just not getting as much out of it as you um, as you could have. So I, you know, you're you're fine. Four days ago, so that would be March. Uh, what is that? March thirteenth, middle of the month. You're fine. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it. In other words, when April rolls around, I would not go into another application of fertilizer. If that's if that's where this question is going, let's just head that off. Do not don't do another one until another four weeks or so have passed. Don't that, that application is good. Don't, don't worry about it. All right, JB is up next. He says, Primo at half rate twice a month. I know you mix with a liquid fertilizer. I am doing the same, but I have humic acid. Do you recommend I spray my, my liquids separately from Primo? I do not. I think you should spray it all at the same time. Whenever I am, I'll show you guys. Whenever I am spraying Primo on my lawn, this is what it looks like. Like Primo, I, I can think, it's been the opposite way. It's been years. It's been years since I have sprayed plant growth regulator by itself. Like I just, I, I almost never do it. So whenever I'm spraying Primo, Primo's going in the tank, the carbon kit, so release 901C or release zero, NutriKelp and Biospectrum. So this, and then this, these three are going in the tank. Um, and then as well will be Nutrizolve. If I'm using 901C, if I'm not using 901C and I'm using Turfplex, it'll be Turfplex, Nutrizolve at a reduced rate, the carbon kit, with really zero and Primo. So, so to answer your questions, I it's it's always sprayed with something. I never spray Primo uh, just by itself. Not again. Not in the last three years, three four years. Not it's always it's always with something else. And if you have a humic acid product, um, yeah, and you want to spray that too, by all means, mix it up and and uh, and throw it all down. Just make sure you're using the um, the foliar tip. And as long as uh, uh, let me qualify that, as long as everything that you're mixing plays nicely together. So everything that I was just talking to you about there on the, on the store that I that I, I personally use, like all those mix nicely together, there's no weird interactions and it all sprays beautifully. So if I, the humic acid product should be fine too, but just to test it, make sure that it mixes and plays nice with your other products you're planning to go to, to, to add into the tank. If that happens, by all means go forward and throw it down all at once. There's no reason to do like Primo and then liquid fertilizer. And then, I mean, that's, that's you're like getting rid of one of the major benefits of using liquid products, right? Which is being able to combine applications. All right, next up is Edwin O. He says, happy Friday and great chat as always. Thank you, Ron, for taking time with us. Have an awesome weekend, everyone. Great, and then our final comment of the evening, it looks like our final comment, because there's nothing else on the gram, was from Richard Taylor. He says, am I correct on Arden 15 being discontinued? You are. It is no longer a thing. My plan is to plant Yukon, but I had been looking at Arden 15 also. That is what he's saying. Well, I guess you're gonna have to go with the Yukon because uh, Arden 15 is no more. It's no longer a thing, man. You can't get it anymore. It's discontinued. Well, guys, gals, everyone, I really do appreciate all the love and support. Uh, thank you for uh, watching the show and asking great questions. And to answer your question, Eric T, no, you do not have to put out Prodiamine every month in the spring, one time. Once in the spring, if you want to do split apps, twice, but that's it. And then in the fall, pre-emergence. So really, once in the spring, once in the fall is what I do. So hope that helps. Guys, for your fertilizer needs, be sure to check out the Golf Course Lawn Store. Also check out the new blog post, a new article that we launched on common lawn insects. 
Um, I bet you'll find that in the show description. It'll also be the pinned comment at the end of the live stream today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and uh, and asking awesome questions. The, the cold snap will go away soon. We'll be out there mowing and having fun. And until then, have an amazing weekend. Take care.